In 2020, portals leading to other dimensions began to appear. They appeared all over the planet. This led the whole world before something crazy starts. Most countries have sent their troops to these gates to find out more about them, but not a single person returned alive. Then hordes of monsters began to emerge from this godforsaken gate. They were so powerful and invincible that all modern weapons could do nothing against them, and they began to attack all the people who happened to be in their way. But some patrons began to choose people whom they endowed with amazing power and abilities. They were called hunters. With the hunters at the forefront, humanity began to strike back. Because of this, their abilities began to progress more and more with each kill. Patrons can grant active hunters additional strength and abilities, with the help of which they become even more powerful and as a result invincible. Among the countless number of hunters, there appeared one whose strength was immeasurable, an immortal army of soldiers and the ability to control fire. The whole world called him the Demon King. He possessed the special ability, the player. Only he could progress through hunting. But it was ruled by twelve great heroes who were equated with gods. His existence was erased from the pages of history forever and people who called themselves gods to create Eden. Hunters began to be considered a new step in evolution, and those who could not become hunters turned into slaves. Hunters began to rule the world. And in this way, 100 years have already passed. Life has changed and acquired new colors. The boy ran very fast, and it was noticeable that he was running away from someone. Sweat was already dripping from him, but he continued to run headlong. A man was sitting on the tree that the boy was running through. He asked the boy if he had finished yet. The boy replied that he had already reached his limit and he had absolutely no energy left to move on. Although he said that he wanted to change the whole world, but with such an attitude, he can hardly become a hunter. In order for patrons to notice him, you need to go beyond your capabilities. The man's name was Song Gu. The guy asked him when he was first noticed by a patron or if he was also going over his limit and moving on. Songu replied that it wasn't like that because he was supported and helped from the beginning. The boy lowered his eyebrows and it was clear on his face that he thought it was completely unfair. Songu said that life is not fair. The indicator was even that the boy was an ordinary person and he was a hunter. He offered the boy to do something else if he could not continue and did not have the strength. Songu held out his hand in front of him. He spoke a few unintelligible words and a stick appeared in his hand and threw it to the boy. Was it really the inventory of a real hunter? He was amazed every time he saw such a thing. The man said that there is nothing to be surprised about. As soon as he becomes a hunter, he will immediately understand everything. The guy smiled, and he didn't seem to really believe it. After he learned that his parents were killed by hunters, Song Nu gave him a book as a keepsake. It described a fight the hunters had started, and he wanted to fix it. Song Gu helped him get through all those years of training, but when the thought of what he was able to achieve creeps into his head, he gets the impression that he will never be able to become a hunter. But in reality, whether he will become a hunter or not, only heaven decides, so they say in Eden. The man hit the boy and said it was all a lie. He asked not to think about the bad, and he will definitely become a hunter. Song Gu assured him of this and asked if he still had the book he had given him earlier. He kept asking the boy about it. Of course, he had it and kept it in a secret place because it was a memory of his parents. It was the autobiography of a forgotten hero whose history was erased by 12 gods. Songu kept asking about her, but the boy promised never to lose her. The boy handed this book to the hunter and said that if this hero were alive now, the world would be kinder and would remain the best place in the universe. A woman watched their conversation. Who finally found them? She started using her magic against them, but Songu noticed it. Her blast wave was moving clearly towards them, but Songu pushed the boy away from him. He fell far from the explosion site under a tree. There was a huge explosion and the woman watched it. Her task was to kill them. The boy was shocked. He could not understand what was happening here. Then this woman came down to him. He was able to get a close look at her and realize that it was a hunter. But why did she appear here? She ordered him to bow before her. After these words, he immediately fell to his knees. But the thing was that his body just did what she ordered. He couldn't do anything. His body was out of control. Other hunters descended from the sky. They bowed their heads before the woman. As it turned out, it was the queen of all Eden, Lady Athena. 
the boy was surprised that before him stood the ruler of Eden of the highest rank. But what did one of the twelve founding gods of Eden forget? She said he couldn't have run far and ordered the hunters to capture him and bring him to her. They understood the task, but they rose high into the sky at the same time. They only managed to get on his tail. The woman wondered who this boy was and what he had forgotten here. She didn't see a drop of magic in him. The boy understood that he now had the autobiography of the demonic king, and it is she who hides the dirty crimes of the twelve heroes which they have been hiding all along. He hoped that she would not suspect him of this and would simply let him go. She said it was just a worthless slave. After that, she turned around and walked away. He was afraid to look up because he didn't know if she had already left. But as soon as he wanted to get up, she flew to him in a second and said that she felt magical power from him, although almost no traces of it remained. His heart beat faster and his breathing became more frequent. His look was frightened and he was sweating all over. Seeing how he froze, she guessed that he might have something that could not be shown. Athena leaned over to the boy and told him to show and tell everything he knew. His body moved by itself. Now he understood what the true power of the gods was. He tried to control his limbs and ordered them not to move, but it was useless. He understood that if this book fell into her hands, then he would be dead. She could even make him talk. The boy took out a book and started talking about it. This is the story of a demonic king who was a true hero to mankind. Eden definitely didn't want the world to know his story. Athena picked up this book. The boy was scared and thought that everyone close to him would die. If something goes wrong, his entire district can be wiped off the face of the planet. This is exactly how Eden works. They forcefully take away or destroy what is in their way. He couldn't just give this book away. Tears began to appear in his eyes. Athena set this book on fire and destroyed it with her magical power. She was finally able to find her. It was a biography of a demon king. She did not know how she had appeared to such a slave, but she found it and took it away. At that moment, Songu called her and attacked her. All the land nearby was broken. Songu grabbed the book that Athena picked up. The boy burst into tears when he saw his mentor. He was saved. Song Gu said that he can't cry because he is a man. He praised him for holding up well and doing a great job of keeping the book safe with him. The boy asked who Song Gu really was. How could he stand up to one of Athena's twelve gods? He apologized and said that he did not have much time to tell him everything in detail. Song Gu didn't think he would be found so quickly. The guy kept saying the same thing all the time, that he wants to change the world. Therefore, he decided to make a bet on someone like that and gave the book back to the boy. Song Gu said that the hunters have declared themselves gods and are ruling the common people. Anyone as weak as the boy is like domestic cattle, waiting for someone stronger to deal with him. If he has the power to change the world, a power that can withstand twelve gods, then will he still want to change the world for the better? While the boy stood in thought, Athena recovered and activated her magic power. She wanted revenge. Athena was advancing and they had no time to think. Song Gu wanted the boy to answer him clearly, because he will not be able to face Athena alone. The guy replied that he agreed, and if he could get hold of such a power, he would definitely change the whole world. Song Gu was satisfied with such an answer, and he pierced the boy with his sword. But the boy did not expect such a mentor. The boy's eyes immediately became bright yellow. Sung Gu said if he meets him there to be nice to him. The boy flew into the air and did not understand what was happening around him. It seemed to split into small pieces. Then it completely disappeared. A contract was executed and patronage obtained. The guy appeared in a completely different dimension. It seemed to be assembled from tiny particles. Li Jun was getting used to the new place. He was sure that he had been pierced by a sword, but now there was not a single scratch on him. The body felt completely different than before. The power that was now felt in his body, and this voice that told him about receiving patronage. Has he become a hunter now? But he absolutely did not understand where he was now. There was an unclear area around him, as if he was on another planet. The magical power he feels emanates from his body. Was he inside the gate? He heard footsteps not far from him. But he is not ready to make new acquaintances. Therefore, he decided that he needs to quickly hide at least until the moment when he understands where he is and how he got here. When he hid, he saw a goblin, and now he was absolutely sure that he was inside the gates of the dungeon. 
Goblins are the initial and weakest monsters, but they were much more dangerous than one could imagine. That is why they are also called rookie killers. Because of their excellent sense of smell and hearing, as well as their crazy hunting style. For newcomers who appear here without any information, meeting them is tantamount to death. The boy hoped that this goblin would disappear and not notice him. But he smelled the boy and noticed him. He was forced to find a way out and somehow solve this situation. He grabbed the rock. The boy didn't understand if what he learned from Song Gu would work on him. But he had no choice now. He can only rely on the abilities he studied with the hope of becoming a hunter in the future. He threw a stone to distract the goblin and he did it well. The goblin turned away and began to look in a completely different direction. At that time, the boy grabbed his hand and cut off his head. He was surprised. The goblin flew into small pieces after his impact. The boy was shocked by his strength. He just wanted to scare him and steal the weapon. He still could not believe that he most likely became a hunter. He received a message that an angel had paid attention to him. He knew it was a demon king. While the boy was thinking, a whole horde of goblins was already heading towards him. They heard absolutely any sound. There were a lot of them, even more than expected. And the worst part was that the guy behind all these goblins was their leader, the boss of the goblin dungeon. The hero thought that this was his end. He was very sorry because he had only recently awakened as a hunter. He understood that he was no match for their leader. But the boy remembered Songu's words that a real man never despairs. And if he has the power to change the world, and which is able to resist the twelve gods, will he still want to change this world? And the boy answered then, if he can take possession of such a power, then he will definitely change this world. Then he realized that he could not die so easily here and now. He had no right to it until he changed this world. Angel paid attention to him and it was a chance that is given only once in a lifetime. The hero sped up. And with the help of his skills and anger, he began to destroy the goblins one by one. He was motivated by his promise. And couldn't let Song Gu down? There were fewer and fewer goblins. He destroyed them as if in training. He cut off the hands and heads of some. Some he divided in half. The rest simply died from weapons. And his efforts were not in vain. Memories of the teacher appeared before him again, and he moved to another dimension where there were a lot of autumn trees. And it happened because he raised his level. He remembered Song Nu saying that when he looked at this boy, he began to understand what a genius looked like. Ordinary people have limits, but if he received patronage, then he was sure that this boy would become a hunter who was second to none. Meanwhile, the hero was able to raise his level again. All the goblins were destroyed. He was able to do it. But only one remained. Their strongest leader. The boy looked at him with a pitiless look. After that, he jumped on him and struck him. But he was very powerful. And the hero just flew away from him as if from a trampoline. Even if it was a goblin, it was still a boss. In the rules, it is written that in order to defeat the goblin leader, you need to be at least an S-rank hunter. Otherwise, there was no point in even trying. The boy had just woken up and most likely had an E or F rank. I wonder if someone like him who just woke up can kill the goblin leader. He had no choice but to try to do so. He took the stick and wanted to put all his strength into his blow. He adjusted himself to concentrate all his power in one point. The spear is the weapon of the demon king and also the best weapon he has, and now he has the authority to use it. The end of the spear caught fire. The boy began to prepare for an attack and began to run away. He was maximally motivated at this moment. The hero put all his strength into this attack, and he was able to destroy the leader and raise his level again. He coped with this challenge, but now the power of his spear was reduced to zero. But as expected after the boss battle, it was all he was capable of and the boy fell powerlessly to the ground. But he was lying there alone among the corpses. Newborn knights entered this territory. The entire area was littered with goblin corpses. They did not understand who could kill them all. Even the goblin leader was dead. Then they saw this guy who was alive and still breathing. They approached him and began to look around. The hero was taken to the hospital. He was connected to various machines and given a large amount of blood because after the battle he lost a very large number. He opened his eyes and realized that he was in a hospital, and he made sure that it was not really a dream. Athena appeared out of nowhere and almost took the Demon King's autobiography from him. After being pierced by Songu's sword, he woke up inside the gate. 
and because of the leader of the goblins with whom he faced, he almost died. But he was able to survive thanks to the possession of fire, which was given to him by an angel. But after that he switched off because he received a large number of serious injuries. He thinks he was saved by the hunters who entered the gate. The nurse went to the boy's ward and said that he is now strictly forbidden to move and get out of bed. She asked if he had a headache and how he was feeling. She said hunters from the Top League Guild found him and brought him here. If it were not for them, it is not known what would have happened to the hero next. He asked, not knowing who it was. The nurse said that the boy was badly injured, so he was very lucky. He was injured in the incident that took place inside the gate. Therefore, someone from the association had to come. She asked him to rest for now. The nurse really liked him, and she wanted to tell everyone about him as soon as possible. The boy stopped the nurse before leaving the ward and asked what year it is now. She said that his memory is now recovering and most likely he has a headache now. It was now 2022. He was shocked because 2022 is 100 years before his birth. Gates began to appear in 2020. And in 2022, many hunters began to create names for themselves. It was an era of heroes. The hero remembers again. Songu said that the hunters declared themselves gods and ruled over ordinary people. Anyone as weak as him is like domestic cattle waiting to be slaughtered. He thought back to Seongu's question about the power that would allow him to save this world. In his time, where you had to be special to become a hunter, this was an era where hunters received patronage directly from patrons. And he got this opportunity. The boy began to disconnect the devices from his body with his own hands. Droppers and a device that measures pressure. The nurse warned that it is very dangerous to get up in such a state let alone go somewhere. The guy got out of bed and said he was fine. He did not have dizziness as before. He asked the nurse where the bathroom was in this hospital. She replied that the bathroom is near the entrance. He went into the bathroom and looked at himself in the mirror. He was completely different from the little boy he used to be. The hero did not believe that this body now really belonged to him. He never had such muscles, and now he was taller than 190 centimeters. But the face was very similar. However, his body and appearance seemed to belong to another person. He thought that someone had entered his bathroom. A representative from the association came to him. He introduced himself to Kim Soo and gave his business card. After what happened at the gate, the boy was saved by the guild of the higher league. He was told that the boy had certain lapses in memory. The representative asked if this was true. The boy realized that the nurse had told him about it. The representative asked to tell in more detail about what he remembered. His name, data, family. How did he even get into the gate and does he remember anything at all? After he was brought to the hospital, the association itself tried to find information about the boy, but it is clear, as they told him, that nothing could be found. No name, no family, or anything. He could not be told everything so that his information from the past would now appear. They say the memory loss could be related to what happened at the gate or waking up as a hunter. The guy said he was 23 years old and his name was... It so happened that the name of the demonic king immediately came to his mind, Lee Jun. For some reason, he mixed up his name with that of the demon king. For some reason, he thought it was the right decision. He didn't remember anything else. The representative said it was a minor problem. Then the man asked if the boy felt anything when he was inside the gate. He replied that he heard an incomprehensible voice inside the gate. He heard the words, I will be your patron, and he thought that he was dreaming of it. The man's hands became numb, and he tried to move them. He said that most likely the boy had become a hunter and asked if he knew anything about them. The hero replied that they seemed to be specially selected people. The representative stood up and said that he was very grateful that the boy was able to give him time. And after their conversation, someone else may come to him, but the association will definitely contact him again. The man bowed and said that maybe the boy would be scared by this information, but he had become someone really important to their whole world. He wished him all the best and a speedy recovery. The boy looked at the representative through the window and pondered his every word. A virtual screen appeared in front of him. His status was indicated there. It was one of the Demon King's abilities the reason why the twelve heroes tried to hold back the Demon King, and the reason why the Demon King could grow stronger faster than the rest of the heroes. Edom was so afraid of it that he erased all mention of it. The Demon King was special. 
To be precise, he was a hunter. The guy decided to check his status. He was called player. The same status as the Demon King. Although hunters needed the patron's permission to grow stronger, he could do so without any help. He was also the only one who could get stronger through hunting. If you put all the factors together, he is the Demon King. And it is he who has the status of a player in this world. And he has all these abilities that others cannot have. Meanwhile, in the hospital, the boy met a nurse in the ward. She congratulated him on receiving the status of a hunter. But he was not sure that this achievement should be congratulated. The girl was convinced of this because it was equivalent to winning the lottery. Even the lowest F-rank hunters can become so rich that an ordinary person cannot even imagine it. Even without fighting the monsters at the gate, there are many things that become available to them. He can now become a blacksmith who forges magical items with the help of mana infusion. Or he can become a bodyguard of serious people. Huge queues will form from rich people hoping to hire him. The boy knew all this very well even without the help of a nurse, thanks to the fact that those who are not chosen are completely powerless. And are these the things he should be happy about? The nurse almost forgot to deliver a gift from Kim Su, a man from the association. These are the items that were on him during the portal incident. They said that most likely he will not be able to wear them anymore, but decided to return them. Maybe he will need them. The nurse congratulated the boy on his discharge from the hospital and wished him not to get into such trouble again. The city lived and functioned to the maximum. People went about their business. The boy left the hospital and realized that this is the era of heroes, Gangnam. Before, he could not even think about the fact that he would be able to visit here. Everything looked very bright and peaceful. A representative from the association approached Lee Jun and said that he had been waiting for him for a long time. He offered the boy to go to the association with him because he thought it was a bad idea for a newborn hunter to walk around town. The man convinced Lee Jun that as soon as they registered him as a hunter, he would be given an apartment right after that. From time to time, they have people who have a similar situation. He said that he wanted to make Lee Jun happy right away because the analyzes showed that he is an S-rank hunter. There aren't many people in their country who get an S-rank right after waking up. He offered to continue on his way, and he would explain the rest after they registered Lee Jun. When they arrived at the Hunters Association, the boy immediately approached the manager. She said that people usually get F or E ranks when they wake up. Hunter ranks are in alphabetical order. The higher his rank, the more prospects open to him, and also a special relationship to him will grow. Finally, his registration was completed without any problems, and now the representative wants to show the apartments where Lee Jun will live. When the boy saw his new home, he was as surprised as possible. It was a very cozy and spacious apartment. There was everything you need for a comfortable stay. He even had a tear on his face. The man noticed how much June liked the place. The boy thanked. Today was a special day because he was able to become a hunter. And now he felt what it was like to get his own home. The representative added that he forgot to say something. There are some who really want to meet Lee Jun. His eyes lit up. He was confused as to who wanted to meet him here. He immediately began to think who it could be. There shouldn't be anyone here who knows anything about the future. The man replied that it was the head of the High League Guild that had saved him. He seems to be interested in the boy. Lee Jun can decline the request if he is uncomfortable meeting him. It was a fairly active guild that has been attracting quite a bit of attention lately. The guy thought for a while and agreed to a meeting with their head. They met. The man introduced first Lee Jun for the chairman and then the leader of the major league that saved him. But the chairman said that he wanted to introduce himself. It was Songu. He noticed that Lee Jun was a very tall guy. The boy couldn't believe that he really saw Seong Gu in front of him. This bald head that he missed so much. He asked what he was staring at. Lee Jun apologized if he offended Song Gu, but it wasn't on purpose. The boy understood that he almost made a mistake. He could not even think that he would meet his mentor so soon. He cared a lot about Lee Jun. Song Gu said that he doesn't hold a grudge against him and asked if they had met before, because he looked very familiar. Lee Jun replied that he lost all his memories after becoming a hunter, so he wasn't sure if they could have seen each other before. The boy thanked them for saving his life. Without their help, most likely he would not be standing here now in front of him. Songu was impressed by how polite a guy Lee Jun was. He liked it. A forgotten hero whom everyone thought was dead. Songu 
and so they met again. It was night, everything was dark. Lee Jun was lying in bed in his new apartment. He still could not realize that now this is really happening in his life. But what happened to his body anyway? It seems to have become a stranger. It didn't belong to him. However, when he checked all his birthmarks on the body, it was a good argument that the body was definitely his. Player status, a demon king, a hunter from another dimension. He is also a forgotten hero. But why did Lee Jun have his abilities? She was his because the sinful angel became his patron. The question then arises as to what happened to the real demon king. He didn't know anything else. Lee Jun knew that he would not get any answers to his questions. He returned to the past and received the most powerful ability that everyone dreamed of. He got real power. A force that can really change the whole world. The next day, training began at the Hunters Association. All students were sitting in the classroom. When the teacher entered the classroom, Lee Jun was asleep in his seat. He did not care at all about his position among the students. He introduced himself and said that his name was Sang Su and he would be one of those who would teach them. The students began to discuss the teacher. It was a B-rank hunter and why they decided to use one of the key members of the association to train the newbies. It turns out that among them there is a hunter on whom the association has high hopes. Li Jun saw the reaction of the class. Each of them wanted to be this chosen one. This was their chance to attract attention and get into an association or a good guild. Everyone considered himself the only one suitable for this role. Sang Su said that today there will be a seminar about hunters, after which they will be able to choose their weapons and take a combat test. He asked them not to be nervous. And he asked whether the students know how the awakening of hunters takes place. One of the boys raised his hand and said he needed to be chosen as a supernatural patron. Sang Su said that was the correct answer. Also, the strength of hunters is determined immediately after awakening. But the hunter is able to progress. He asked what methods they knew for pumping. The girl replied that it was either the closing of the gate or the need to earn the patron's attention with some achievement. It is also possible to obtain certain skills or items from additional support. Sang Su was satisfied with the student's preparation for the seminar. Then he decided to ask a more difficult question. What is the patron's goal? As he expected, there was silence in the class and no one willing to answer. All the hunters ask themselves this question, but no one knows the answer. Who are the patrons and why do they choose people, turning them into hunters? Sang Su turned his attention to Li Jun, because everyone was trying to draw attention to himself, and he just sat motionless in his place. The teacher turned to the boy and asked him to answer his question. The guy got up. Sang Su said that a free-form answer is accepted. There is no clear explanation. He just wanted to hear his opinion. Li Jun thought it was something like entertainment. Sang Su didn't understand what he meant by that and asked to answer in more detail. The guy replied that you choose a character, hunt monsters and enjoy even if he gets stronger. It's like it's all a game. Sang Su would not accept such an answer. She did not suit him at all. The Demon King allowed the patrons to see their world as nothing more than a game. And despite all the power he gained, he could not prevent death because of these guesses and comparisons. Patrons seemed to value their secrets very much. The girl chose a sword. Sang Su said it was a good choice and asked if she was ready. She replied that she was ready. She must fight a hungry goblin. It's okay. Even if she can't defeat this goblin, it will still be up to Sang Su to decide whether she passed the test or not. The girl agreed to such conditions. He added that there was no point in worrying because this goblin had been thoroughly brainwashed into not being able to kill or critically injure a human. Then it's time to start the test. The goblin was released from the cage. He was approaching the girl very quickly. She also prepared to meet him and raised her weapon. They faced each other in battle. The goblin looked convincing enough. Because he was very hungry. He hit the girl. She flew to the side and fell to the floor. Without thinking long, the goblin decided to jump on the enemy from behind. Sang Su thought that this situation was already dangerous enough. But she managed to counterattack and destroy the goblin. It turned out to tear it in half. The girl lay weak on the floor after the battle. Sang Su was surprised how they managed to win in this situation and kill the goblin. He graded her on the test and said she passed it. It's time for the last contestant. Li Jun entered the arena with his trusty spear. He had nothing but a shield and a spear. He looked very confident, but the teacher thought it was a very strange combination. Spear and shield. 
Lee Jun understood that he would only be able to attend further graduation courses if the goblin won now, and if he shows himself well here, he will receive many advantages. Sang Su then invited the boy to start the test. But unfortunately, all the goblins are finished, so the test will be held with another monster. Since the enemy changes, so do the rules. He will not need to defeat the monster to pass the test. It will only be necessary to obtain consent for its passage from the teacher. This monster has also been brainwashed and will not be able to inflict a mortal wound. And as long as the B-rank hunter is in the arena, there shouldn't be any problems. The boy thought that they would most likely release a cobalt. He was similar in strength to a goblin. Lee Jun said that he was fully prepared for the test. Sang Su was surprised by his answer at the seminar, so he asked not to disappoint him now. The test has started. The monster Lee Jun will fight in the last test is an orc. He has the strength of two grown men and unreal life energy. As you know, only hunters not lower than S rank can resist them. All students who watched the test were shocked, and they never knew that there were orcs at training battles. This became necessary after the hunter woke up immediately with B rank. He appeared out of nowhere and is now one of the strongest hunters in the world. Li Jun was the same hunter who woke up at S rank and dealt with all the goblins and their leader at the D rank gate. How a hunter can do something unreal from the very beginning of his awakening. They cannot miss such a diamond in their association. Sang Su was hoping to see what this boy was capable of. The test started and the orc started running towards Li Jun. The boy at that time activated the ability of the sinful angel and pierced the orc with a spear. He writhed in pain. His body was suffering. But it seemed that not everything was so easy. He was so dumb that he attacked relying only on his strength without any strategies. Everything happened more easily than Li Jun expected. But the spear stuck in the orc's shoulder, and the hero could not get it and felt the real power of the orc. He grabbed the spear first, and then he hit Li Jun with all his might. But it was lucky that he managed to put up a shield. Students discussed what was happening in the arena. They considered it very dangerous, and in general giving an orc for a test at the very beginning is nonsense. The instructor must stop him. The lunge was perfect. If another person had been in his place, she would surely have died from such an attack. However, his opponent is a monster that the teacher underestimated. He continued to attack the boy. Sang Su thought if he didn't intervene, things could end badly. He had even prepared his weapon. But when he already wanted to stop this fight, Li Jun completely seized the initiative. He began, thanks to his agility, to outplay the opponent and inflict more and more blows on him. He had enough shield and spear to dominate this battle. His eyes glowed with aggression. His every stroke was unique and powerful. The guy didn't miss a beat. The students did not understand who it was. He didn't look like a rookie at all. He pressed the spear to upset the orc's balance. Where did he have such instincts? He managed to defeat the orc in class. Sang Su noticed that he had used the ability. Hunters who have just awakened cannot have abilities. He didn't even cast any spells, so it was a high-ranking ability. His shield lost its power after the victory. This is the first time this has happened since the beginning of the hunter era. His level rose again. Fire mastery increased to level two. Sang Su knew they couldn't miss him. He was obliged to recruit him into the association and it did not matter how. It was amazing. The teacher announced the passing of the test. It seems that his weapon can't stand it. Mastery of fire was an amazing ability. Mastery over fire is the foundation of the Demon King's power, and he has used it since the very beginning of becoming a hunter. It could be considered not an ability, but a power, as opposed to skills that cannot be upgraded except with the support of patrons. It can also be enhanced even at the expense of the player's characteristics. But the ammunition simply cannot withstand so much unreal power. In order to use this ability, Li Jun needs equipment that is at least made of metal. The evening was approaching. It was dark outside and night was approaching. Li Jun invited Song Gu and Association Representative Kim to the housewarming party. Song Gu immediately said that he wasn't sure he should be here at all. But the boy said that this is his housewarming party, and he himself decides who to invite. They chatted a bit over dinner, at the expense of the seminar and the test that was waiting for him, and also places where they would like to go. Kim Su was appointed curator by Lee Jun. The final test of the seminar classes should be tomorrow. And as far as Kim Su knew he would pass at the gate, 
but he was sure that Lee Jun would have no problem passing this test. Song Gu decided to bring up the subject of the future and asked the boy what he decided on his offer. He didn't know what it was about, but everything inside told him not to let Lee Jun go. Kim Soo thought the atmosphere was heating up. One of the best guilds in Korea is trying to recruit him, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Lee Jun. Song Gu didn't want to pressure the boy anyway. The boy paused in their conversation. His face showed that he was hesitating. But as a result, he still refuses. Song Gu was upset. He asked about the reason for the refusal, because he himself did not understand how it is possible to refuse such a thing. He thought it was a nice enough proposition for someone who wanted to become an active hunter. He was right, but when he first returned to the past, he compared all possible scenarios for the development of the future. And in the version where he gets close to Song Gu so early, it was very dangerous. The boy replied that he did not want to join any organization yet. But if they need his help, he will gladly help solve any issue. Until that moment, he will pay for his rescue at the gate. Song Gu was happy and shook Lee Jun's hand. Kim Su did not understand at all what was happening. Is a rookie going to help one of the strongest A-rank hunters in Korea? And this A-rank hunter took this offer seriously. Kim Su hoped that one day he would begin to understand the hunters after all. Graduation testing is due today. Before starting, Sang Su wanted to say a few words about the examination process. The venue will be the gate. However, there is no reason to be nervous since Sang Su will always be nearby and will be able to protect them when the opportunity arises. He was high enough in rank to be so sure. All the students froze in place and did not make a single sound. This B-rank hunter possessed magical power that surpassed all the disciples here. They were to leave the gate after obtaining all the necessary supplies. Li Jun noticed that he entered the gate and noticed that the air was somewhat viscous. His classmates also felt it. Sang Su immediately said a few words about it, this happened because there was a very powerful magical force inside the gate. If everyone is gathered, then it's time to move. When they faced the monsters, he asked to follow his instructions. They walked a short distance from the entrance and the teacher asked everyone to stop in order to check the territory. Ahead was a bunch of goblins who had smelled them and were heading towards them. They were very hungry, so they were ready to do anything to get food. Sang Su ordered hunters number one and number three to prepare their weapons for battle. They held together and raised their weapons. They began to destroy the enemy. These two students did quite well in their task and destroyed the goblins. They demonstrated their skills in practice. The teacher called to prepare numbers 8 and 16. They very cohesively and technically killed the rest of the goblins. It was their first full fight. He then called upon the hunter Lee Jun. He jumped out very sharply. The students who were nearby did not even notice this. He attacked the rest of the goblins even without his special abilities. They seemed to him just a warm-up. He cut them in half one by one. Even a teacher could envy his skills. The students along with Sang Su were shocked and didn't even have time to watch every trick of Lee Jun. They weren't sure that he had just woken up recently. And what was the point of his study here at all? Are all hunters like that? How perfectly he wields weapons is simply amazing. He is as skilled as a B-rank hunter. They could not lose him and simply have to get this genius. Lee Jun, meanwhile, had raised his level again thanks to the fact that he had destroyed quite a few goblins. They continued on their way, but they moved from one dimension to another. Soon they should reach the main boss. He is different from the other goblins they have met before. Therefore, they need to be more careful. Sang Su asked them to get ready and drink the potion, check all weapons and equipment. Everyone began to follow Sang Su's instructions and Lee Jun thought that the Demon King had the power of a player. He was killed by twelve heroes before he could release his full power. This would not have happened if he had not progressed faster than them. Therefore, he needs to become even stronger as soon as possible, so that he could become more convincing, stronger than the twelve heroes of Eden or anyone else. Sang Su said they needed to move on. The more they moved into the depth of the gate, the stronger the magical power felt. When they reached the source of this power, they were not even visible. Their bodies were completely enveloped in clouds of magic. They moved side by side to help each other. In case of danger, they had to act according to the instructions. Lee Jun also couldn't understand where she was coming from. Sang Su started yelling for everyone to back off and move towards the exit. As soon as they started to retreat from that place, there was a huge shot of fire. All the students ran to a safe distance. The teacher was the last to leave. 
He had to either dodge the bullet or face it. He managed to look around several more times. He chose to resist. Sang Su began to slow down to use his superpower. But this magical attack was incredibly powerful. He could barely restrain her so as not to die himself. It was a destructive force. That even the poisonous clicks could not completely repel this attack. He immediately began to look for his recruits with his eyes. They were led by Li Jun. Who was ready to protect them from any enemy? Sang Su noticed that Li Jun was unbeatable during this attack. But he did not agree, because he thought he was able to repel this attack only because Sang Su blocked most of the attack. Sinful Angel invites to destroy the great goblin sorcerer. If you answer this request, you can get a good reward. It was a large goblin sorcerer capable of destroying B-rank hunters with ease. It seemed to them that they were not in a low-level gate. There were indeed some problems with setting the level of danger for the gate. One way or another they had to escape. The only one who can fight him is the hunter Sansu. He will not be an easy opponent for him. He asked everyone to leave the gate and call for reinforcements in the association. Li Jun asked for permission to fight him. The students were stunned by such an act. The teacher told him not to overestimate himself. It was known that he had already defeated many goblins and even an orc. But the abilities of the great goblin sorcerer are not based on physical strength, but on magical strength. His magical attacks can easily kill a B-rank hunter. The great goblin sorcerer has fire magic. The main skills are fire arrows, fireball, wall of fire, and flame shield. Li Jun knows that this monster is strong and he knows how to fight it. The monsters that were in this dimension are designed so that beginners can easily defeat them. So he asked to give them a chance. Sang Su was sure that it was blind arrogance and nothing more, but he still decided to allow the fight. Li Jun prepared himself and started a duel with the sorcerer goblin. The goblin used all his advantages, fire arrows and fire shield, but Li Jun tried to hold back these attacks. The goblin used massed bullet attacks, but it was a good thing that Li Jun was agile and could dodge all the blows. The students noticed that he was able to completely repel the fireball. Sang Su also noticed this and was shocked, because he did not block it but absorbed it. How did he do it? Li Jun tried to attack from different directions, but all his attempts ended in failure. It was impossible to get to him through the fire shield. He was really very strong, and most importantly it is not clear how it can be defeated. They were wrong, and most likely they will not be able to cope. They will simply be smeared with long-range magic. The goblin looked at Li Jun, and the boy used the splitting power. It is only available when a certain level is reached. The fire simply spread over Li Jun. He could easily get the goblin because he was now defenseless. Sang Su thought it impossible. Mastery of fire is an unsurpassed ability, and with her help, Li Jun was able to make his way to the goblin. The boy rushed to him. Although the goblin tried to use some protective abilities, it did not make any sense, because the main task was to get rid of the fire shield, and as a result, he destroyed it with a spear blow. The sorcerer seemed to dissolve into thin air. The students could not believe that he managed to do it. It was a super rookie. The mission was accomplished. The sinful angel was delighted. In connection with the successful completion of the mission, the sinful angel will become his patron. He is given the opportunity to fulfill the call of the familiar. He had wanted this ability for a long time, another skill that made the demon king so invincible. Meanwhile, Sang Su went with a report to the Hunter Association. He went to see the president. He realized that the reason he wanted to meet him so much had happened during the last final test, and it was all because of an S-rank hunter. And indeed, the president was right. He guessed that his rank was much lower. But Sang Su replied that this time it was the other way around. The president had a lot of confidence in Sang Su. So when he said things like that, it was definitely true. He asked his opinion on how much potential this guy had. Sang Su replied that the situation is such that it is possible that the goal to which the president is so eager can be achieved. The president was quite restrained in his answer, but he wanted to meet Li Jun sooner. The next day, the boy met with representatives of the higher league Song Gu and Kim Su. They expected to see him with the head of a major league guild. Kim Su said that he was very worried when it was revealed that the rank of that gate had increased from rank E to rank S, but apparently it didn't cause any problems. Song Gu asked if Li Jun had received an invitation to join the association yet. The boy thought about it because it was offered to him as soon as he defeated the sorcerer goblin. 
Sang Su approached him and made a favorable offer based on his emotions. Students saw with their own eyes how this is recruited into the association, but he replied that he still has no desire to associate himself with joining any group. Sang Su was surprised that the boy rejected his perfect proposal that everyone dreams of, but he said as if he understood him. If he had joined the association, he would have advanced much faster, but if he does it, he won't be able to hide anything from them. And this man was part of the association. He must not contact him under any circumstances. He must avoid him at all costs. Song Gu asked if Li Jun had any food preferences. This was a much more difficult question for him than being recruited by the association. Maybe ramen. Song Gu asked if he likes meat. Li Jun immediately started drooling. And then Song Gu hugged him and offered to go eat tons of meat. The boy returned home and immediately decided to take a shower. Memories of the fight with the goblin immediately began to appear in his head. He went through every shot and defense in his head. Was everything done with sufficient quality? The boy analyzed his every step. It was important for him to become stronger every day with every fight. He also thought about his current status. None of the normal hunters are able to summon a familiar. Only 12 heroes. Only a handful of people had this ability. Thanks to her, he was able to accomplish all these feats. Therefore, it is not surprising that he managed to defeat countless bone dragon-like monsters. He gained the same powers that the Demon King once had. Then the summoned familiar should be no worse than his. He had one chance to summon a familiar guaranteed by the sinful angel. And he decided to use it right now. The next day, Lee Jun came to the big league. He was waiting for Kim Su there. When he entered the office, he immediately decided to share the interesting news that the media had published news related to Lee Jun. It said that a super rookie had defeated a dungeon boss that only an A-rank hunter could kill. Kim Su said he heard about it, and it was not clear to him, just like the rest, how he managed to do it. And why didn't he tell about it last night? He got to the first line, but there is no personal information about him on it. But most likely the higher ranks in the association already had it. Hunters have recently become more popular than most idols, but it didn't seem like Lee Jun was even interested in it. The boy said that he had much more important things to discuss with Kim Su. The representative immediately asked what it was. The guy said he wanted to take part in clearing the dungeons. He would go into dungeons and destroy level 1 goblins and other monsters. It was training and leveling up for him. He wanted to activate the familiar but in order to do so, he believed that it was necessary to destroy monsters. He continued because he remembered his promise. Lee Jun had to quickly become the strongest, to have sufficient influence on others. And so he cleared his first dungeon. Lee Jun turned his attention to his bracelet, and it didn't react at all to all the monsters he killed, even after the death of the boss. And he did not understand how to use it at all. The familiar must be unrealistically powerful or endowed with special skills, but he does not manage to absorb a single soul. All along he thought that monster souls were needed, was he wrong? When Lee Jun cleared the dungeon, he was met by Kim Su. The man greeted him. He completed his fourth dungeon raid. If he has any items he wants to auction, he can give them to Kim Su. He must have dealt with the inventory. As soon as the item is sold at the auction, the funds will immediately go to his account. He asked when he could enter the next gate. Kim Su said that unfortunately he doesn't have a gate that can be reserved right now. It was very strange. The world is literally torn apart by gates that cannot be closed, but he cannot reserve even one for himself. Kim Su replied that a guild had recently appeared that was gradually building its name. They single-handedly reserved about 20 low-level gates. Even if they are low-level, one single guild was able to reserve all 20 for themselves. Usually the association rejects such requests but since all previously reserved gates have been cleared, they had no choice but to grant this request. Lee Jun guessed that the head of this guild might be called Choi Sung. Kim Su confirmed this information. This is the guild of the Army of the North. It was founded by Choi Sun, who was nicknamed Super Rookie before Lee Jun appeared. Soon this person will earn the title of hero and establish himself as a subordinate of the Twelve Gods. And besides, he will become famous as a merciless killer and an absolute tyrant. Finally, he will meet him. It was raining heavily. People demanded to stop the construction and gathered entire protests. The assistant told the manager that these rallies were getting out of control. What to do next? He said that they are nothing but ants. If they destroy their home here, they will build a new one somewhere else. 
there is no reason to worry about the lives of ants. Even if they let these slaves survive, they will still be unhappy. This was the method of ruling the head of the army of the north. They relied only on aggression and evil. These people could only blackmail humanity for their needs. They are absolutely not interested in human values. After that incident, half of the residents of the village where Li Jun lived died. It was a terrible tragedy. He remembered her very well in detail. Li Jun heard someone calling for help in the nearby street. It was a man's voice. He saw how several hunters beat and robbed an ordinary townsman. They provoked him in order to find an excuse for abuse and torture. These were not hunters, but real bandits. He begged them to stop and not mock him. Li Jun approached them and asked what they were doing and how they could afford it. Moreover, this person was weaker than them. They mockingly asked who he was. The guy replied that he just heard strange sounds and came up. He thinks they are bullies. One of the bandits started shouting and did not allow such rude communication with him. Li Jun said that they were the first to start acting like this. They were scared because they realized that a real hunter was in front of them. Li Jun turned to the man and asked what had happened to him and why they were picking on him. One of the boys replied that this grandfather had injured him with his cart, and he simply demanded his compensation from him. Grandpa stood up and said it was a lie, because they were the first to throw his cart and start beating him. Li Jun asked why they broke the grandfather's cart. Since he was also a hunter, he should understand. Everyone who attacks him challenges him. Therefore, he saw no problem in the fact that he broke it. He was already beginning to perceive all of Li Jun's actions as an attack in his direction. Jun said he was letting them go quietly because they had done enough. He will be able to let them go, since they did not seem to have caused any serious damage to the grandfather. But it didn't suit them, and one of the boys pounced on Li Jun. But he shouted that no one dares to order him. He dodged the blow. Then he grabbed the hand of the bandit, after which he threw him over him. He ended up on the ground. Now he was not so brave and rude. There is one more offender left, because the first one was unconscious. The next one had already drawn his weapon. Li Jun never thought he would see a weapon in such a place. The hooligan seemed quite sure of what would happen next. He asked if Jun had a guild yet. Therefore, they believed that they were on a completely different level than such garbage. Li Jun maimed the other bully without any problem. He skillfully knocked the weapon out of his hands and ended this circus. If he didn't know about guilds, he would definitely think that their guild was no bigger than Mommy's under her skirt. After eliminating them, Li Jun called the relevant agency to prosecute them. But they continued to prove that Grandfather attacked them first. Kim Su thanked him for understanding this situation and helping them. One way or another, an attack by a hunter on an ordinary person is a very serious crime. Kim Su confirmed this, and he said that this is all the concern of the association and thanked him for his help. They saw two men talking. They were worried that the guild would want to take revenge on their grandfather. But the association would definitely look after and protect him, so there was no point in them worrying. Lee Jun remembered that one of the bullies was in the guild, but where was she? It just so happened that this was the Northern Army Lee Jun had asked about earlier. It was impossible to take all the low-level gate contracts without help from the inside. The Guild of the Northern Army and the Rotten Hunters from the very middle of the association. Lee Jung had hoped that they would be much quieter, but that was simply not possible. As expected, two days later, Lee Jung was called up to the association as a striker. A few days passed and the grandfather whom Lee Jun saved changed his testimony. Those who attacked him became innocent, and Lee Jun, who helped the old man, became the attacker. He understood everything, but still felt bad because of this injustice. Kim Su asked not to be nervous about it. In any case, everything will be fine. The association is not so rotten yet. What he didn't know was that for Lee Jun from the future, the association was rotten from its inception. Kim Su invited the boy inside. He was asked if he did not remember anything from the moment of the incident at the gate. He replied that it was true. As well as the incident that happened a few days ago, he was the first to report everything and detained members of the Northern Army. The guy confirmed everything. He was asked if it was true that he had put old man Lee Moon's life in danger and had given false testimony about the North Korean guild members at the expense of the first attacker. Lee Jung said it was a lie. He was asked if he wanted to say that all their testimony was a lie. The boy replied that it was true. 
an elderly man who was a participant in this situation was called into the room. This man was asked if it was true that Lee Jun attacked him, because he testified that members of North Korea attacked the man and him. He looked away because he understood that he would have to lie. He was blackmailed and everything went rotten, as expected. He asked the man not to worry because he already knew the truth. Grandfather said that Lee Jun attacked him. The man thanked his grandfather and said that he could go. He left the interrogation room, but it was clear from his eyes and behavior that he had no other choice now. His face was tired. Most likely, he was threatened with the massacre of his loved ones. The worker asked if Lee Jun had anything to add to what was said. The guy threw the phone on the table, on which he filmed absolutely everything that happened that day on that street. The worker was shocked but he was forced to accept this evidence and provide it to the investigation. That was all he wanted to add to his words. In any case, the association knew why the testimony had changed, but only the grandfather would be prosecuted for false testimony. And he cannot do anything in this situation. He still lacked strength. Song Gu has already seen the news. They met Lee Jun again. Kim Su called Song Gu because he no longer has any connections in the association. Of all the contacts that remained, he was the most influential person he could contact. Lee Jun thanked them both for making time for him. All Song Gu could say was that Lee Jun was on the loose. While they were talking, the grandfather who was being protected by Lee Jun came up. He began to fall to his knees and beg for forgiveness. These bastards said they would kill his granddaughter soon if he didn't say what they demanded. He just couldn't let that happen. Instead of helping, he brought even more problems. Kim Su didn't understand if the Northern Army was blackmailing him, then why he decided to tell about it only here and now. If he had said it earlier, his granddaughter would have been in danger. But what has already been done cannot be changed, and now he can only ask for forgiveness and pray. Song Gu promised that his granddaughter would be safe and he would take care of it personally. He asked not to worry about these bastards and to go home. He listened to Sung Gu got up and went home. Lee Jun developed a habit of filming everything because he had been in such situations so many times. From this day on, he must not let anything out of his sight. They continued to chat and saw the president of the Northern Guild passing nearby. At first, they exchanged glances. Song Gu and Lee Jun were surprised to see him here because he usually doesn't leave his office. He approached and said that he could not even believe that he could meet the head of one of the largest guilds here. He asked if they were that close to the newcomer about whom there were so many rumors. Kim Su did not understand how he found out about all this. Is the worm in the association his personal informant? He held out his hand and introduced himself as the head of the Army of the North. His name is Choi Seung. Song Gu thought about it but then shook his hand. It was a long handshake. He tried to pretend that he was glad to meet him. He decided to warn him, and he said that he should not be so arrogant if he does not want to become an enemy for him and this newcomer. Choi Sung took his hand away and was offended at how he was treated. He was even scared, because no one could talk to him like that before. Song Gu even decided to paraphrase his speech a bit. He said that Choi Sung would never match him in life, and advised him to be more careful if he didn't want to die. Kim Su and Lee Jun were sitting in a cafe, where they discussed the situation that happened. Kim Su still couldn't come to terms with the fact that they were just fined when they tried to kill an innocent person. In the future, hunters are untouchable. Lee Jun decided to switch to Grandpa and said that the most important thing is that everything is good with him. Kim Su said that lying to a hunter is a serious crime. But thanks to Lee Jun capturing everything on camera, the actions of the Northern Army were found to be wrong. They issued only the usual warning and let them go home. Most likely, Song Gu also influenced this, but he asked Kim Su how things were going in the Army of the North. After Lee Jun was called to the police because he protected an ordinary man from being bullied by thugs from the Northern Association, they were released from custody almost immediately and were just given a small fine and found guilty. Then the boy realized that their president tries to bribe everyone who prevents him from making money and lining his pockets. But the boy wasn't going to give up and do whatever this person ordered. He wanted revenge. Lee Jun believed in the power of retribution as much as anything else. The next day, Jun and Sun were standing outside in full combat readiness. They were wearing bulletproof vests and additional ammunition besides weapons. They were going to enter the gate together. 
Sun told the boy that he never thought that he would contact him for a joint trip to the gate. But he noted that this time the gate was of a much higher rank than the ones he had passed before. That is why he asked him for support, so that someone could take care of the boy if he was seriously injured. Sun considered it a great honor to fight alongside this boy because he possessed great strength, and the man knew of no one who could defeat him in an even fight. The two fighters decided to approach them because they thought it was the same famous rookie who cleared gates of almost any level without the help of other fighters. They also said that it was an honor for them to fight alongside him. After they rescued him from that gate, they couldn't even imagine that they would ever be able to walk into the gate together. The commander introduced the boys. One of them was called Choi, the other Hun. The two of them were the ones who saved Lee Jun that day, and it was clear that they were members of their guild. The guy was very happy to meet the people who gave him the opportunity to change this world now. He thanked and introduced himself. He did not remember that their names or faces had somehow met in the story. But there was nothing strange, because the story about the Demon King and the entire guild of the Top League was erased from all pages. The commander began to open the gates of the S-Rank. They had a very responsible mission before them. It was time to fulfill their duties to the country, and he called to start a campaign in the dungeons. All the fighters were waiting for the portal to open as wide as possible so that they could enter it. There were quite a few of them, but the commander and Li Jin were in the lead. In the location of the Gunter Guild, there were exquisite works of art like paintings. Their leaders decided the further fate of the guild and discussed plans that could accelerate their approach to the goal. The deputy head of the guild, Choi Eng, said that they cannot leave this situation so easily. They have only just begun to confidently conquer new territories. The knight in armor asked him if it would not be better to increase their influence in the already conquered territories before capturing others because everything could turn the other way, and they would lose the conquered territories and not find more strength to capture new ones. Especially after the last incident, it was obvious that their guild members were getting out of control. John N., the other vice chairman, said this. Choi replied that these scoundrels were definitely wrong. Ordinary people are ordinary cockroaches who only live by protecting hunters. He didn't even think that they would ever bow their heads and apologize to these cockroaches. This made John very angry. He showed with all his appearance that he was not going to tolerate such behavior. Choi grabbed his chair to prepare for a surprise attack. He asked if John wanted to fight this issue with him. Both of them began to emit excess energy, which signals a complete readiness for battle. But only the head of the guild could stop it. He entered the room and ordered them to calm down. He waved his hand and said that Choi was right. John didn't like it at all. He was brought up differently and therefore it was humiliating for him to behave like that with the weaker ones. And Choi, on the contrary, flaunted his position, and a high-minded smile appeared on his face. The chairman said that because they dared to accuse them, they should suffer the deserved punishment in full. He was interested in this no less. John was confused. Displeasure was visible even through his armor. The chairman added that this personality said the same thing as he. Most likely he also has an interest in this tall animal. The deputy couldn't believe it was true. He said that soon the stage would be set and they just had to wait for his signal, because defeat was unacceptable for the army of the north. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, the fighters tried to deactivate all the traps that came their way. The girl dealt with this issue. It took her a few minutes to neutralize all the traps and clear the way. After checking, she allowed them to go on without any danger. The one who sees what he doesn't need to see always smiles. The commander stood in front of his group and announced the start of the sweep. They went forward. Not even having passed a few steps from the temporary location, a wave of arrows was fired at them. Each of the fighters had special protection and used it as needed. One of the guys used a fireball to attack the enemy. Thanks to this, a huge explosion took place in the place where the enemy was stationed. Jun thought that he could learn most of them. He saw hunters for the first time in real battle. Sun was also not going to stand aside and immediately joined the battle. He attacked monsters with his flaming sword, which could destroy several enemies with one blow. The monsters were in a panic. They thoughtlessly ran at the boys, for which they paid the price. Sun was able to destroy more than 50 monsters with a few such blows, and ended this battle almost single-handedly. Li Jun watched the skills he used and was in awe of the commander's technique and intelligence. 
When he recovered, he thanked the boy for such a compliment to the old warrior. But Jun replied that he was the one who asked for help, and he should be the one to thank. Sun asked to be honest with him, because he believes that the boy just wanted to see how powerful he and his guild are, what it is capable of. The Major League Guild was very strong, and Sun was unmatched in it. He was so powerful even though he didn't even show what he was really capable of. One of the fighters said that they also wouldn't mind seeing what the super rookie is capable of. The commander listened to him and also agreed with his opinion. The boy replied that he understood their request, and he had no need to hide his abilities from Sun and the entire guild. They waited for a new wave of monsters, among which were trolls and orcs. This time they gave Jun a chance to prove himself, and he accepted the challenge and sharpened his spear before the battle. When the monsters got very close, he activated his abilities. The boys were shocked to see that he could activate his skill without using a spell. He had already learned a high-level ability. He was really a super novice. He was very sharp and could cut through several monsters at once with one blow. The flaming spear and shield was not an ability. It was power. He cleared the goblin sorcerer's dungeon. Fallen Angel boosted his skills. Some stats also increased a bit. When they returned from the dungeon, the boys approached Jun to discuss the sweep. They believed that he was called a super rookie for a reason. Even the head was not at such a high level although they respect him very much. The boy started yelling at Sun and blamed him for losing such a talent and not recruiting him into their guild. Such a warrior would raise their level several times over. Sun was confused at first because the boy started to speak sharply in his direction, but then he started to smile. He replied that his offer was still relevant. Their guild was indeed very strong and continued to become even stronger. Sun could see that Jun had gone through a lot of trials in his life up to this point. He was right. He had already managed to understand his inclinations and goals, the one he knew did not possess such powers of prediction. He continued that the scum of the Northern Army would not sit by. If he joined their guild, it would be much harder for them to harm him because they would meet a lot of resistance. Sun made a decision and offered the boy to join a higher guild and he would give him the position of guild chairman. His subordinates were shocked by such a proposal. They did not expect that the commander would take such a step. In fact, even Lee Jun himself was confused. He could have expected the position of vice chairman, but he did not foresee this. He replied that he greatly appreciated his offer, but had to decline this time as well. Sun was not offended at all and saw no reason to express his sympathy, because he saw that his eyes were looking at something grander. While they were talking, Lee Jun received a message on his phone. He got it and was shocked again. A lot of things happened in his life. He was forced to become more cold-blooded than anyone in order to survive and achieve his goal. The message said that the Hunters Association needed his help, the Army of the North and about 100 more hunters. The boy began to think about this message. It definitely could not be sent by the head of the guild and Deputy Choi. They simply cannot let go of someone who stands in their way. An order to mobilize hunters the Army of the North and another 100 hunters. Considering that the largest guild in size is the Northern Army, this was very suspicious. Did Choi use association? It was the most realistic. Meanwhile, at the head office of the Guild of the North, John was left alone until late at night. He could not come to terms with the fact that his opinion was no longer accepted here. He did not even notice when they had time to change so much for the worse. Choi Ang, whom he knew since childhood and his older brother, Everything changed from the moment they met that person. Militant but warm-hearted, Choi no longer regarded ordinary people as important. And the head of the guild considers everyone around him to be worse than himself, regardless of whether they are hunters or ordinary people. They are trying to kill the hunter only for the reason that his actions are pushing the Northern Army to deteriorate its authority. The Northern Army Guild has rotted from the inside, and its honor cannot be restored but there is no way he can leave these two people. He put the phone in front of him and tried to make the most logical and correct decision, primarily for himself, because the future fate of the Northern Guild will depend on it. On one side was justice, and on the other was friendship. It happened in an abandoned warehouse that was half destroyed. John and Jun met. The guy said he was glad to meet him and introduced himself, but John refused to introduce himself. He no longer felt the presence of other people here. Did he really come to the meeting alone? The guy said it was just the two of them there. No traps, so he might not worry about it. 
The knight said that he is here to tell him one thing. He must receive an order from the association to mobilize and to reject it. Jun didn't understand and asked why he should reject him. He replied that their entire guild was mobilizing as well. Since he only recently became a hunter, he probably doesn't know, but hunters are much more terrifying than he could have imagined, especially their head. He is not the best person. It is very dangerous to meet him even just outside if he enters the gate together with him. Then it will become a big problem. Jun tried to find out what he was planning to do. If it is dangerous to meet him on the street and enter the gate together, then it turns out that the Guild of the Northern Army... This is a Guild of Chaos, which over time gains more and more progress and spreads to each member of the Guild. Demons were also among the patrons. They gave tasks for killing people or tasks for mass murders. Guilds formed by a group of such people were called the Chaos Guild. This angered the deputy head, but the boy was sure that he himself had tried to tell him about it, but he did not have the courage to throw dirt on his guild. But if that was not what he meant, there was no need to warn him of the danger. When he heard the phrase Chaos Guild, he had nothing to say, because his relationship with the Northern Army Guild had been like this from the very beginning. John probably didn't like the guy's attitude towards him and his brainchild. So he drew his sword and wanted to explain that he was actually wrong and misunderstood. The energy was so strong that the entire warehouse trembled. He told John not to dare to humiliate their guild. But the boy replied that they themselves should understand. That the guild of the army of the north is rotten to the bone. The head and the deputy head, whom he trusted all the time, have become completely different people. And it all started from the moment when they met the same personality that he followed. The man was still able to control his emotions and their conversation ended. This guy became a hunter just a month ago, even without looking at his rapid leveling, just to think that he was not weaker than him. He believed that they had found everything they knew about him. He knew John wouldn't attack him. Can he read minds and even know about the same personality? He couldn't figure out who this Lee Jun really was. He didn't look like a human at all. Chung and Chang. He was also called Siegfried the Dragon Slayer, but his most popular name is Siegfried the Immortal. It was he who managed to overcome the most dangerous monster of the demonic king. After that, he received unprecedented power from his patron. He was gifted with immortality. And in the upcoming battle against the demon king. When he received an order from his close friend, he was unlucky to become a hero because Choi Eng killed him. The boy understood that he had to lure him to his side. He may have strength and skills, but the most important reason why he needs him is moral principles. In the rotten army of the North, he was the only one who kept the balance inside. Lee Jun was very fond of thinking about the future as he cleared the dungeons. He could do two useful things at the same time. The first is to clear dungeons and increase his level. The second is to think of a strategy to achieve his goals. He dealt with another dungeon of the dead. His weapon strength dropped to zero after the battle. His weapon simply cannot withstand the power of mastering fire. It seems that he has one more task to complete before mobilizing the hunters. He needs a weapon. The first thing that came to his mind was to blackmail the local blacksmith. When he entered there, everything looked like a medieval forge. The master was busy with his work, so the boy had to wait a little. He looked very focused, and it was obvious that he enjoyed his work. Jun never thought he would be able to meet him in person one of the hunters who became a dwarf after awakening. A man who will soon become a wandering blacksmith, the hero of all hammersmiths. His name was Pak Hyun. His work continued for four hours, and only after that he left the hammer. Pak began to look for the boy who was waiting for him, and decided to start by finding out who he is and why he came to him. He had to wait for four hours, and he just now decided to ask who he was. Jun said that he came to order a weapon, he also asked if there were any blacksmiths in this place besides him. For Pak, it looked very strange because he himself came to the nameless blacksmith for weapons and asks if he works here himself. The boy replied that he only asked because he saw another blacksmith's hammer in the corner. Pak thought at first, then remembered which hammer we were talking about. He emphasized June's attentiveness and said that this hammer belonged to one guy, but it was not important. Pak asked why he chose it and how did he even know about it. He had never made ammunition before. It was all for fun, nothing more. The boy replied that he was directed by his patron. He told Jun to go to him. The boy's expression immediately changed. He couldn't believe that his patron was working directly with him. 
but he had no choice but to believe him, as he himself felt the direct influence of his patron on his life. Pock was so famous that his patron directly interfered in the blacksmith's life. So it was written in the autobiography of the Demon King. The one who created all the weapons for the Demon King was Pak Hyun, but due to the influence of the Twelve Heroes, they were scattered all over the world. Pak only supplied weapons to the Twelve Heroes. The Demon King wrote that if only Pak had stayed by his side until the very end, they would have changed history. Considering how strange these patrons are, he would have no reason not to trust Lee Jun. But he could not create anything for him. Jun thought he was in a bad mood today and asked what the reason was. He just wasn't very friendly with fire, so he had never taken orders from customers until now. Then the boy realized that the reason was not that he did not want to do it. Then Lee Jun walked closer to the boy and extended his hand to him. Pak did not understand what this meant and asked why he extended his hand forward. Jun replied that he would create the flame for him, which he would need to create the weapon. A second later, a red flame appeared on his hand that looked perfect. The boy asked if Pak was familiar with the ability to control fire. That is, he meant that he could control that little flame in his palm. It was ridiculous. If he had such a close relationship with fire, than even a blacksmith like him. The boy did not have time to finish as he saw what he did not expect to see. A blue flame appeared in his hand. Pak began to ask how he did it. He had the power to control the fire as he wished, and this was not ordinary possession, but complete submission. What he saw completely changed his opinion and attitude towards the boy. A week later, June came to pick up his new weapon, which would no longer break after clearing a dungeon and would be resistant to fire. When Lee Jun took him in his hands, he understood why this boy had made weapons for the strongest people in the world in the past. But he said he wouldn't be able to make the shield he asked for. As they had discussed before, he wouldn't be able to do it on his own. But speaking of what he asked for, the ability to control fire was locked inside that spear. He did everything that was in his power. The spear looked really very powerful and capable of a lot. He hated to say it, but with his current strength, that was all he was capable of right now. This spear increased control over fire. The characteristics of the spear increased when interacting with fire. He said that it was the best he could do. But even if he was a famous blacksmith, this weapon was an unrealistically rare type. Anything more would require the patron's direct intervention. But there are weapons that improve over time. If he had at least one such weapon, he wouldn't have to change it anymore. Pak said that this spear was not yet completely finished. That guy wasn't here yet, so for his flame, this weapon is still low level. He should definitely come back. But don't be too late, but try to come as early as possible. If he comes in time, then Pak will be able to strengthen him. Then he decided to leave it to him. Pak noticed an unusual bracelet on Lee Jun's hand. He guessed that this bracelet on his hand was given to him by a patron. It seems that his sponsor was not exactly an ordinary guy either. Pak had a bad feeling and said he didn't think it should be used at all. It was a skull keeper of souls. In order for it to be activated, it was necessary to absorb at least one soul, but now activation was impossible. He was right. It was all speculation, but if he is right. The boy believed that it would be difficult to complete the challenge while he was participating in the mobilization of hunters. But he felt the power of his new weapon, and it was much more than he expected to get. If he manages to get John on his side, he will have a better chance of winning. The situation is getting more complicated, but if everything goes as it was written in the book, it will definitely give him an advantage. There are two weeks left before the mobilization of hunters. He had to become stronger, and so he needs to clear a lot of dungeons because he has a feature that allows him to level up by killing monsters. He was no longer afraid of crowds of monsters. He destroyed them very easily, especially when they were low-level dungeons. So he needed to reach a certain level to be competitive. But even if he has the opportunity to grow stronger through hunting, two weeks is not enough. Even sleep will be a common waste of time. Two weeks later, the time for general mobilization came. There was a notification that the owner paid attention to everyone. They gathered in the hall of their office. Everyone had to get ready. The Lord announced the completion of all preparations. He hoped that this day would go down in history and the army of the North would emerge from the shadows. In Korea and around the world, everyone should learn about the Army of the North. His eyes burned with cold fire. He wanted only revenge and the whole world to obey him. 
By his example, he adjusted each fighter and made him believe that they were doing the right thing. John noticed Choi's insane magical power. He was finally able to reach a rank. Unsurpassed. Everything was exactly as the owner said. All the requirements for becoming a hero were fulfilled. After a short pause and silence, the Lord shouted that there was power for the whole hall. That the world would tremble on behalf of the Guild of the Army of the North. He was supported by absolutely every fighter. They believed that the ruler could not be wrong. But he wanted to use his power and his warriors just to get the title of King of the World. Meanwhile, Lee Jun was riding in the car with Kim. Kim asked the boy if he really wanted to go and join the mobilized warriors of the Northern Guild. Because he believed that Jun would die, the more he told him absolutely everything he knew about the hidden values and intentions of the Army of the North. They are much more terrible than they say. The guild that tried to raid with the Army of the North last time was destroyed. This was enough to understand their entire essence. Jun pretended to guess their horrible actions. Kim was shocked and decided to pull over to the side of the road because he might lose control. He tried to find the words to talk the boy out of going to this hell. Jun tried to hold back and not reveal his secret, because he knew much more than anyone in this world knew. Kim said that he has no right to go there because he was a very important person in the association. Moreover, no one forced him to go there, and his life is the most important thing. He began to literally tremble and get angry at the same time. The boy begged Jun not to go there, if only for his own safety. But Jun seemed to be laughing at him and sat next to him and smiled. Then he replied that Kim is saying that there is nothing more important than one's own life. He calmed down and confirmed his words. He was well aware of this. He decided not to participate in the mobilization and hoped for the best. Jun promised that these scum will learn that life is not just a sound, but something precious. And now the portal is open for another dungeon raid. A lot of people gathered, and they were not only participants, but ordinary people and reporters. Fighters adjusted and prepared for new challenges. Journalists did their job and tried to get more information about the plans, tasks, and goals of the guilds in this raid. John met the head of the top league guild there, and he heard that they gave up on the raid this time, but Sun came there anyway. The man replied that he had already declared that the Army of the North was their enemy, and he also declared that the super novice was his comrade. Therefore, he could not be in another place. They met the head of the guild of the army of the north, and he made it clear with all his appearance that they are determined to be as aggressive as possible, and their plans will definitely not be liked by anyone. Sun's smile immediately disappeared because his comrade would be going there with those demons. He turned to Jun and asked if he would go there even if Sun asked him not to. The boy confirmed his words and he hoped that Sun was not here to dissuade him from the raid. Jun probably already knew this, but still Sun decided to reiterate that this scumbag was much stronger than he thought. His officially registered rank was in the B Association. It seems that he has already managed to rise to rank A, it was palpable. Sun was surprised at how strong Jun has become. It doesn't matter what happens in the dungeon because he's sure the boy has a good plan. He already wanted to see how strong he would become. Therefore, he promised to wait for him near the portal. But the boy asked why he did this. He replied that if he did not get out of the gate, Sun would not forgive them for it. Jun charged that Sun was ready to destroy the entire guild. The raid was about to start, and the fighters needed to finish training and gather. Choi Sun will become the hero of Gunter, and the gate called the Rain River will kill countless people. Everyone was ready and entered the portal one by one. Lee Jun pushed the last thoughts out of his mind and started to walk inside with everyone as well. He wanted the story to reverse its course at this point. They entered the gates of the Rain River. Here he will receive all the glory that a true fighter for justice deserves. And finally they all entered this gate. It was the most dangerous gate in recent times. Each of the fighters knew absolutely nothing about this dungeon and entered it blindly. The head of the Army of the North was glad that everything had finally begun. All that remained was to carry out his plan. Everyone was notified that under the influence of the characteristics of the gate itself, the magical power had changed. The fighters did not understand what was happening. They saw such a message for the first time and no one warned them about it. Then they noticed that the gate rank had gone from B to B+. Jun didn't show any emotion at all because he knew everything about this dungeon. If he didn't know about it, he would never have left. New messages have started arriving. 
Gateway feature activated. Gateway exit blocked. When some of the fighters wanted to leave the gate, it was immediately closed. There was no way to leave them until it was cleared. Everyone started to panic because they were stuck here. The messages continued to arrive. A large number of awakened people gathered in one place. The patrons paid attention to this place. The density of magical power would increase. The bodies of the participants began to burn. No one understood what was happening and what actions needed to be taken in order to survive. Message. The awakened have entered a special gate. Patrons' attention to this place has increased. The density of magical power will increase. The captain turned his attention to his tablet that kept them informed. And he was shocked. Something strange was happening with the gate rank. It increased from level B plus to level A. No one expected this at all and was not ready for it. The tablet fell out of the captain's hands. They had no hope for life. Jun grabbed him by the collar and tried to find out more information about what was going on, because only the captain had at least some information. But after the stupor, he began to look for a way out and shout that they were thrown into the A-rank gate. A gate of this rank is considered impossible to clear without a hunter of heroic rank. Some hunters despaired. Their reaction is quite expected because this place can become their grave. The head and deputies stood and watched it. They definitely knew about it, and that's why they didn't even react. It seems that this is exactly the situation they needed. The first wave of monsters was already very close, and they needed to gather to at least try to fight for their survival. They simply had no other choice. The head of the Northern Guild finally spoke and asked everyone to calm down. He understood their anxiety, but he said he was just as shocked as they were. He also wanted to understand what had led to this, but the gates were not well researched. Unexpected things happen to them all the time. But now is definitely not the time to despair and start crying. Then the most important thing was to survive. And he, the head of the Northern Army, Choi Sun, promised that he would clean this gate with everyone who was in this dungeon. New message. The owner of the stream tried to take over the stream. The mood of the fighters changed to a more positive one, and they agreed that it was time to show their strength and not to cry and fear new challenges. Lord of the Current All incitement and command skills are tripled near the river. There is also a small chance to gain forceful command over others. Due to the fallen angel's influence, they had resistance to forceful command. This was the power of the current ruler. All these hunters are simply incited. Choi asked the host if it might be worth starting already, but he said no. According to what this person had told them, the wave of this gate would continue for a very long time. Their guild strength must be preserved as much as possible. Choi Ang was confused. The chairman ordered to follow the plan as they had agreed. The Army of the North will keep its forces and in turn survive with the help of these forces. Was he going to kill all the fighters? But he replied that he would not kill all of them because they needed those who would spread the rumors. Their guild would keep their strength until he ordered them to retreat. But Choi believed that the hunters are not so stupid. They will follow his rule, but once they understand that the Northern Army does not interfere much, everything will become clear to them. The chairman repeated what he had said as much as possible. They would send insects from their guild to help them, so that they would not have any suspicions. Choi realized that he was going to sacrifice even the guild members. Lee Jun was looking at them all the time and didn't look away. He knew their intentions. All that remained for him was to quickly build a plan on how to confront such scoundrels who are ready to kill their people for the sake of power. This confused the head. His eyes seemed to see through all his plans. They needed to kill him faster so that it would not cause unnecessary worries. The chairman called John to him to give him a very important task. He approached, but he had no idea what he would have to do. Due to his kind-hearted nature, the chief had to hide part of the plan from him, but there is no point in doubting his dedication and skills. He asked to continue following this idiot when he got the chance. He ordered to kill him, because he arouses suspicion in the head. John understood that it had gone too far. When it all started, he had no idea that injustice could reach such a scale. Choi Sun said that it would be better for them and the Northern Guild itself. John thought about how he should act in such a case. If he does not comply with this order, he will be recognized as a traitor, but if he does, he will betray his values and principles. There was already a wave of monsters. But very close. Two warnings were received. The fighters had already seen these creatures. They only had to give all their strength in order to survive. These were unusual monsters. 
They were much stronger and stronger than trolls and orcs. But these pawns were still easy enough for their fighters to defeat. If they clustered, they would be more difficult to defeat, so it was necessary to attack quickly until they gathered in a bunch. Jun noticed that they were attacking without any formation. Even if they were low-level monsters, it was very stupid. Because they were in... River and no one had faced such trials before. They attacked very confidently, but did not take into account too many factors. These monsters were not as simple as they seemed. They used their ability and attacked the fighters. Whoever came under this attack could not continue the fight in the first ranks and was pushed to the end of the group. Jun ordered the wounded to be carried back and ordered the rest to line up. They began to listen to Lee Jun's commands and do everything as he said. But it was too early for him to intervene. To begin with, he needs to fully understand the situation. At this time, when all the fighters of other guilds were fighting off the enemy's attack, the Army of the North, under the leadership of Choi Sun, stood aside and did not participate at all. But then the chairman gave the command to attack the monsters and destroy them. Part of his army went to the line of contact with the enemy. Lee Jun thought it was impossible. He involved his guild members. It was not within any moral framework. They continued to fight all together with the monsters from the river. The captain supported them because they were just mermen. They were no stronger than the orcs. The guys were really supported by this and they fought very desperately. These monsters constantly dealt damage to the raiders. That is why doctors always tried to position themselves behind them, who immediately cured the soldiers with the help of their strength. But Jun noticed something. These guys who fought against the mermen, they were the lowest members of the northern army that he sent to die so that there would be no reason to accuse him of anything. They used them without any conscience to raise the fighting spirit of other hunters. They sacrificed them like cattle. The guy decided that he had enough time to think. Now he needs to get to work. Everything was much better than he had planned. John ran to help all members of the raid defeat these monsters. First it was necessary to deal with them and then think about the head of the army of the north. At that moment, John wanted to approach him because he had a task on his mind. He hesitated a lot before doing it. Again, he was faced with a choice. He remembered how the boy had said that the guild of the North was rotten to the core. The head and the deputy head that he trusted so much had become different. And it all started from the moment they met the same person they had been following. John realized that the boy was not wrong. The army of the North is rotten. If things continue like this... Many hunters and members of their guild will die. The head believed in John's loyalty, but he himself forgot even the meaning of this word and long ago acted only in his own interests. But he tried to convince himself that the boss had a plan, if he was the one he knew before. When Jun joined the members' attack, they didn't have time to follow his movements. He was unbeatable. John overheard these conversations and decided to also see what was happening on the battlefield. The area where Jun fought the monsters was literally on fire. Thanks to his new weapon, he could destroy monsters much more actively and not be afraid that it would be damaged. The boys could not believe that such a hunter was participating in the gate raid. They were sure that they knew the names of all the cool hunters. John was also shocked because he hadn't seen the guy in battle at all. He pumped really well. Just ten days ago, they were at the same level in all characteristics. But now he completely overpowered him. It was impossible, but you can't argue with the facts. This wave was cleared. They were given time for a short break. Some patrons decided to give a small reward to the awakened ones. Notifications came very often. His stats improved, received Marmon Slayer achievement. The guy did not have time to reread all the messages he received. The guardian of the long spear took an interest in him. The spherical representative took an interest in him. The lord of everything wet took an interest in him. Many sponsors have been watching him, but can he use some patrons? The fallen angel expressed his displeasure, the patron who was interested in him. The boy could not understand why this happened. Many members started running up to Lee Jun and thanking him for his help, because he broke almost half of the whole wave. They started asking him what guild he was from and who he was, but he replied that this is not the end, and there are many waves ahead. They all better hurry up and prepare. The current rank of the gate should not be lower than A. If they really want to survive, then they should take it very seriously. They clearly listened to Lee Jun's commands and advice and promised to start training. When the boy finished talking with the participants, he felt that someone was behind him. It was the head of the Northern Army Guild. 
He stood in one place and could not move. He was very angry because things didn't go according to plan. John was sure that he was going to take over the hunters who entered the battle at the most important moment. He completely destroyed his plans. Once it was all over, these hunters would be on his side. While there was a break between waves, he decided to check his status. He was already level 24. This gate will become his foundation for growth. Here he will reach level 30, and those hunters whom he now helps will follow him. The next wave started. Jun could not only attack powerfully, but also defend himself. With his shield, it was difficult to break through his defenses with magic or ranged attacks. After the monsters are exhausted, he changes defense to attack. He destroyed them one by one and did not tire. There was another break. Already the fourth wave was successfully cleared. He saw that the boys were sitting without a mood after repelling the attack. The guy decided to come closer to find out the reason. It turned out that four guys died in this wave and they already doubted that any of them would manage to get out of here alive. John wanted to leave this gate without any loss, but he wanted to understand how it happened. He was angry with himself for not being able to protect his team. The boy did not understand why the Army of the North had not yet fully participated in the battle. He said it very loudly for everyone around to hear. He asked why they consider them cannon fodder, and they themselves are going to stand there and continue, preserving the strength of their army. The guys from the raid also agreed, because he really was right. Not a single member of the Northern Army was killed. They weren't even injured. Jun urged them to at least fight decently, or if they were going to continue to sit back and watch the other hunters sacrifice themselves for them. Choi turned to his brother and said that he had warned him of a similar outcome of their actions. He himself also understood that his plan would soon be a complete failure. After clearing the waves, using the weak guild members and hunters, he planned to attack them, but now it was all over. They realized that they were being sacrificed and now all the members of the guild are also excited. The plan that Personality prepared for him only benefited this scumbag Lee Jun. He was trying to understand how he should act further. At that moment, his brother turned to him. He told him that he decided to continue as it is and they will watch a little more. Considering that he had already spent a lot of energy, the difference between him and the head was very big. He would be able to defeat this boy. Moreover, he continues to use up his stamina due to fighting monsters. It would be better for him if he continues to fight, and then he will take care of his death. The fifth wave was completely cleared. With each wave, the monsters only get stronger. And now it's time for the pre-final boss. He was much more powerful than the pawn monsters. It was a water golem, but its dimensions were completely different, not as they should be in theory. Now he has appeared much bigger than he was talked about. His strength was high enough to single-handedly defeat an entire guild. Jun ordered everyone to move to the side while he attacks. You need to wait for his attack. Due to his bulk, it was difficult for him to aim attacks. Therefore, their chance was to move very nimbly and strike. But the fact is that the area of his attacks was very large and hiding from them is a problem. For the first time, the boys encountered such a powerful and destructive force in the dungeon. Since it was not possible to get close to him, the archers began to work. But there was no sense in this, because all the arrows flew through him. At the same time, they did not cause him any harm. It was all made of water, so it was illogical to attack with conventional weapons. When they realized that the archers could not fight him, the infantry went into action. They had no choice. Therefore, it was necessary to at least somehow try to resist him. One of the hunters was the first to run to attack him. He was able to dodge his powerful blow. And when the boy approached, he wanted to cut off his limb. But nothing good came of it, and the monster hit him with his hand. No attacks worked, and no one understood how to defeat this monster. But they had a secret weapon, and it was Lee Jun. He sped up and approached the creature. Due to his high agility, the monster did not notice the boy running towards him. At the last moment, he jumped towards the golem. Only at the last moment before the impact, the monster was able to see the boy. But it was already too late. He delivered his powerful blow before the water golem could react. After the impact, everyone was waiting for the result, and the boy landed successfully. The participants were shocked as to who he is at all, how he manages to do this. The gate was filled with magical energy. He asked not to try to use only your powers. You must use the gate's powers as well. You also need to fill the weapons with mana. The archer thought that only high-ranking hunters could fill weapons with mana, but she decided to try. 
The girl took out an arrow and inserted it into the bow. She pulled it. And she noticed that it really worked, even though she was not a high-ranking hunter. They all began to use gate magic and attack the golem. These attacks really did him a lot of damage. Thus, they had hoped that they could defeat him with Lee Jones' tips and the use of gate magic. Such attacks damage him much more, but they will not be able to completely destroy him. He decided to use his spear and imbue it with flame. To finish off this scumbag, he must destroy the core that holds all of his magical power. But it was still too early. You need to wait a little. The hunters continued to damage him with the magic of the gate. The golem was preparing to use its attack again. Everyone needed to dodge. But Jun understood that the only chance to defeat him was now when the core was fully exposed during his attack. The boy dodged his blow and decided to attack the core. He punched through it and destroyed the core with basic magical power. He successfully destroyed the pre-final boss. His patrons paid attention to him. Several patrons are shocked and only interested in one person. The boy returned his weapon, which was not even damaged after this fight. The comeback ability he got while leveling up was very handy. The hunters were amazed by the skill and intelligence of this boy. One of them mentioned that there were rumors of a hunter with a spear and a shield. He told this to his teammates, and they decided that this guy was just a monster rookie. They began to argue about what rank he was. Now they were sure that with a fighter like this, they would definitely be saved. All the members trusted Lee Jun. He leveled up again. He also got the award for killing the golem. Then he got the achievement, one of those who could defeat the water golem. Even Fallen, the angel smiled at him. Finally, he will be able to get the support of several patrons at the same time. But after a few minutes, the fallen angel expressed his displeasure, and the other patrons lost their interest. The boy was outraged, but at least he got a new ability. The Demon King also couldn't have multiple patrons. He was unsurpassed. He didn't have many patrons to support him, but he still managed to become strong. Now in the boy's eyes, he had become even more unsurpassed. Choi Sun didn't understand what he had been doing to improve his skills so much in such a short period of time. He thought that the boy had only recently reached B rank. But what he saw proved that he was close to rank A. He was very angry. Not only did this guy completely ruin his plan, he was also getting stronger in his eyes every minute. John suggested that the leader make his move, because if this continues, their lives will also be in danger. He understood that what happened was not part of his plans and they cannot just watch. Choi Sun silently turned to the vice chairman and continued to remain silent. If his plan was completely destroyed, then he needs to come up with a solution and a new plan to move on. And after that, he asked Choi Sun to surrender. The chief didn't expect to hear that. He asked him to back down, show his weakness and give up on killing Jun. Did he think that the head could lose? He created the army of the north and raised it. He is not one of those hunters who run away from everything. He did not accept his defeat. He could no longer control his emotions and took out his sword. He began to shout throughout the dungeon and call for his army. He ordered to take a full-scale participation in clearing this gate, so that no monster could get through them. His army still obeyed him, so they lined up and waited for further orders from the Lord. The king would never allow his pride to be trampled upon. The head of the Northern Guild decided to turn to his deputy and tell him something. But when he returned, he was not around. Only his helmet lay on the ground. It definitely belonged to John. Choi Sun remembered the moment when he awarded him with this helmet. Then he promoted him to deputy head. Then he said that with his face it would be difficult for him to control the guild members. So he prepared a helmet for him. And now he tried to direct his forces against his master, who had given him this life and allowed him to move beside him to great victories. He showed deep contempt for the head, and for that he must answer. Choi Sun stepped on the Sholov and broke it. Now he only wanted to find him and do what a traitor deserves. The chief looked at the battlefield and said that he was inviting death by his behavior. Meanwhile, the army of the North had already joined the main hunter forces and also began to destroy monsters to prove to their master how loyal they are. In fact, it must be said that they were quite skilled fighters for their level. They thought that now they would surprise everyone with their level of training and ability. But they didn't know that there was a Lee Jun who hadn't even experienced monsters of this level. And when they saw it, they understood that they would not be able to surprise the hunters with anything. The guys from other guilds no longer needed the help of the North Guild because they had a super rookie, and now they can clear the wave without any problems. 
Jun inspired many boys with his strength and forced them to give their all. This helped them defeat the monsters. Jun leveled up again after another sweep. From the outside, it looks like he's draining his stamina, but he raises his level and restores it to the maximum. While the boy was examining his new abilities after leveling up, the monster attacked him from behind. He used dungeon magic as well and started attacking with fire. The boy turned and saw that it was a person. It was a girl and she said he lacked eyes in the back for cover. But he responded sharply and said that he did not need it. The fact is that this girl was the same John in the helmet. It was actually a girl, but the boy didn't know it. She thought that he was disappointed in her because of that and refused to help. But she could not give up because of such reasons. She collected her emotions and went to help the monsters. She promised to do everything in her power to protect the hunters, and she wanted to exceed her maximum. This girl was very smart and strong. No one knew what to expect from her. John was determined to show her resolve by turning away from the Army of the North. She destroyed monsters almost as efficiently as Lee Jun himself. The girl believed that her justice would protect the people around her. They cleared another wave of monsters. But there were unpleasant moments. One of the hunters lost his friend during this task. He lay unconscious and did not respond to anything. His companion began begging him for the potion and promised to repay them 100 times over once they were out of the gate. It was a real hell. There were 111 of them at the very beginning, but now not even half of them are left. John asked Jun if he was okay and if he didn't have any injuries. He replied that everything was fine and also decided to inquire about John's well-being. But she was not given the opportunity to answer because the soldiers of the Army of the North approached them. They began to humiliate her. They remembered that she told how they would survive in these gates all together and meet again outside of them. She is still the deputy head of the guild, and they allow themselves to communicate like this. Although the Army of the North has always been based on killing other people, for all members, but she with her sense of justice was not at all like them. He asked how long she was going to put up with it and did not answer. He offered to join him because she had already turned away from those she had cared for for so long. That is why she did it. She wants to join him because they are very close to her, and she wants to take care of them and get them out of the mess they got into because of their fault. She can no longer do nothing and sit idly on the spot. She can no longer watch them move further into the abyss. Choi Sun will still make his move even if it is beyond his capacity and ability. John asked not to worry about it because she was ready for it. The last wave has started. The appearance of the final boss. The Rain River Gate boss, Yearworm, has appeared. It was time for a real battle for life. Everyone was waiting for the main boss, their ticket home. It was something unreal, big, and terrible. It started to climb out of the river. The level of the river began to rise when the annual worm began to climb to the top. He was very dangerous and no one in the world had ever defeated him. All the hunters were just little defenseless insects compared to him. They were knocked off their feet by the water rushing down on them. They could not even theoretically understand how to destroy this monster. Even Jun was as surprised as possible this time, although he had seen very powerful monsters. This one was an exception. John said that the Northern Army has no way to kill him, but Choi Sun definitely has. And this method gave him a personality, she was sure of it. He has a method to kill such a giant monster. But before Choi Sun begins his hunt for this beast, there are those who will greatly hinder the completion of this raid. First of all, Lee Jun must deal with them. She warned Jun to prepare for battle and be ready at any moment. The other hunters watched this and couldn't believe that they would be fighting each other at such a crucial moment. John said that the Army of the North was using them all. They should have noticed the strange behavior on their part from the beginning. They were going to kill everyone in order to take all the loot for yourself. She and who was the vice head of the Northern Guild, and now she is ready to tell them this truth. Now they will attack them. If they don't trust her, then just watching is enough. Because when they die, all the other hunters will be next. The boy couldn't understand what this sudden change in mood was. A true dragon slayer. She said that a hunter who grows stronger from being more and more cornered. The boys realized that they would most likely die anyway, so they decided to at least give these scumbags a decent fight. Choi Sun watched this and thought that it was a foolish venture and that they would not be able to overcome this opposition. He believed that nothing would change and ordered the Army of the North to proceed according to the plan.
Choison began to activate his ability to finish off the year worm. Meanwhile, the worm was absorbing all the water from the river while they argued with each other. Most likely, he did it in order to then attack everyone with it at the same time. Its size and strength allowed it to swallow the entire river. It suddenly began to rain in the dungeon. They used the annual worm to set up the battlefield for themselves. The boy looked at the head and understood their plan. Their forces prevailed and they were in a winning position. If he completes this raid, he will become another born in this era rotten hero. John has been pumping nonstop all these days, but will it be enough to defeat him? The boy's flame was really strange. It continued to burn even under this downpour. The boy understood that now he had nothing but his weapons and his mind. He only had to fight to the last and win. He decided to attack first. The boy pushed off the ground and flew towards his head. Choi Sun was waiting for him to reach him and was ready to defend himself. The battle of the century began between them. Now it was decided who would become a hero for the whole world and who would remain a shadow and become an exile. The boy noticed that the strength of his head was not the same as before. He used all his power to defeat the enemy. Choi Sun could do nothing but defend. Jun continued to attack and it felt like he wasn't running out of energy at all. His weapon every time caused irreparable damage to the enemy. As a result, he could no longer take such powerful attacks. His body trembled and he could not even hold his own sword. He didn't understand what these abilities were. They were on the riverbank. On the contrary, his strength should increase, especially since he had already reached A rank. The guy looked very confident like he knew this was going to happen. He said that at the time he entered these gates, he was much weaker from the head. Did his patron give him support during all this time? Jun conserved his energy and moved like a small child and continued to pump while hunting. He hoped that now he would finally understand how wrong he was about him. But he did not speak so that anyone would understand him. Choi Sun knew that he would not be able to defeat this boy even if he used all of his abilities against him. He began to call the annual worm for help. The monster's eyes immediately lit up and he switched to the boy. He began to attack him with his skills and magical weapons. Jun could only dodge these blows. He became so harsh when he received little support, but his personality gave him even more strength. Power that is at a completely different level than what he had. The head expected to kill the real power in his head. The protective instincts of the annual worm, it was as if he was protecting his child. He crawled over to Choi Sun and protected him. In fact, it was impossible to approach him, even if he would stand and not defend himself. The worm would do everything for him. He climbed into the mouth of this beast, and Jun was waiting for the moment to attack him. When he waited for his moment, he immediately decided to attack him. Choi Sun thought that he wanted to give his life thoughtlessly. Only a desperate person could do that. Meanwhile, while Jun was fighting with Choi Sun, John was dealing with another deputy head. She was very angry with him and wanted to channel all her anger into power. He said that if she fell on her knees and began to ask for forgiveness, then he would have mercy on her. But she and will never be able to defeat him. The army of the North will be the only one who can get out of this gate. She did not understand what was happening to him. Did he forget about their oath to protect humanity together? They clashed in battle again. Their magical power overshadowed even their silhouettes. The girl tried to win at any cost. She was moving very fast and at first glance was superior to Choi. He attacked her without even looking, but it was unclear why. The sounds of their weapons echoed all the way to the gates. Meanwhile, the river worm was guarding its child. But they were both in his mouth. It was a smart enough decision to deal with the head first and then get out of the worm. Because then he will not be able to attack him in any way. And he could easily beat Choi Sun. Frankly, the chairman did not believe that he was capable of such a bold step. But the boy did not understand what he was talking about, because he was just waiting for the worm to swallow him. Because when they protect their children, they swallow them and protect them inside their body. And regardless of what kind of worm it is, it is always dry inside. The boy stuck the spear in and you could see how the skin of the worm was splitting from the inside. He then set it on fire to show his superiority in the place. But in the dry stomach of the worm, the power of the patron saint of the year will be reduced to zero and his ability to control the flame will become much stronger. The spear absorbed flames. Its attack power is temporarily increased. The hunters noticed that the worm began to burn and emit fire from its mouth. Much the same thing happened inside the worm. Choi-sun could not believe it, 
After all, he was the true king and he was chosen to become one. His aggression began to override his common sense again, and he began to attack into the open Jun. He considered him a nobody and that he should not be here at all. Jun did not listen to this and did to him what he did to the rest of the monsters. Is it over for him and he has fulfilled one of his missions for this life? And then his bracelet worked. The skull of the Keeper of Souls absorbed the soul of the hero. Finally it activated. There were many attempts to do it and now it was very appropriate. Because the boy knew that the skull of the Guardians of Souls does not absorb the souls of monsters. He needs human souls. In addition, strong people who have been pumped for a long time. The Lord of the Year was destroyed. All his support was stopped. The boy could not believe that the patron died. From the hands of a fallen angel. After the awakened one's death, the patron dies with him. But in the Book of the Demonic King, it was written that patrons never die. A black hole formed near the boy, which turned into a black crow. Jun could not fully understand what was happening. Raven said that he still did not answer his question. The boy had memories of what kind of goal he was pursuing. He killed a hunter, not a monster. He follows the path of a tyrant, not a peacemaker. That is, the path of a demon king. But one is not enough. In order to change this world, he is ready to accept any dishonor and sin. He is even ready to surpass the demonic king. A fallen angel supports his decision. A raven flew up and said that was a very interesting answer. They should see each other soon. And he disappeared from his vision while the boy could only watch the sight. He asked to tell the owner every little thing he saw here. The boss of the Rain River Gate was killed. He was completely destroyed and immobile. The boy made a great contribution. He obtained the essence of water. He obtained the achievement of the one who conquered the river. He also raised his level. The hunters stood and carefully watched what was happening to the worm. Opposite them stood the army of the north, who were waiting for further instructions from their master. The worm just burned up like ordinary firewood, and a human silhouette appeared next to it that looked a lot like Lee Jun. The hunters were very happy that he managed to deal with the annual worm. He came out of that fire with a smile on his face. John began to scream to warn the boy of the danger. Choi wanted revenge for his brother and unexpectedly attacked him. Without thinking further, he immediately took up the fight, using his shield and was not surprised at all, as he was used to his opponent always being dissatisfied with something. But the reason for his anger was really understandable, because he wanted to destroy the boy for what he had done to his brother, because from that moment on, Lee Jun had ruined everything, everything they had built over the years. Lee Jun was also a little angry because he didn't feel like fighting at all right now. But there was no other option, especially when a man with a sword was thrown at him in a fit of rage. Jun calmly observed the situation and waited for the right moment. After all, you need to finish all this as quickly as possible. He took a step and stopped to stand up confidently. After that, he blocked his blow with his magic shield because even though the guy is threatening him, he still doesn't want to fight him and hurt him. Therefore, Jun simply pushed him with tremendous force a few dozen meters away, which he clearly did not expect. The boy was clearly surprised by this turn of events because he couldn't imagine that Jun had become so strong. But still, the emotions took their toll, so he started yelling at him and even then he also tried to run further towards the attack, to fight and avenge everything. It was... Jun noticed this, so he decided to get ahead of the game by throwing a fire beam at him and jumping with him. He then stood in front of the guy and put his sword to his head, making it clear that he had no desire to fight him and was asking him to see reason. After such a turn of events, the interlocutor already had a slight desire to calm down. After all, it was better to remain silent now than to go to the other world with his brother. Jun decided to explain to him, after all, the reason why they obtained such a great hunter power is the opportunity given to them to protect humanity from the crisis. And with great power comes great responsibility, so people like them who bully those who are much weaker than them. They themselves have no right to call themselves hunters. So he turned his sword even brighter and put it to the guy's head, letting him know that he was not in charge and that he should listen to what Lee Jun was telling him. He took his gun and said that he had already seen too much blood wasted today. Then he looked at the boy with contempt and said that this time he had had enough, so he forgave him and would do nothing about it. Lee Jun turned around and suggested that he simply repent and move on with his life. But apparently he wasn't ready to listen to it at all, so he started to get angrier again and prepared to attack from behind. 
For this he prepared his sword, which he had already begun to unsheath. He then immediately ran towards the guy, screaming that he was finally going to die and wanted to stab him in the back. But something really surprised and shocked him, so he widened his eyes as he clearly wasn't expecting this. Seconds later, the first pool of blood appeared. It turns out that John immediately came to the rescue, who had his own view on the matter and wanted to deal with the traitor herself. The boy looked into her eyes and couldn't understand how she could do that to him, after everything they had been through together. These words were the last, after which he instantly fell to the ground, head down, already without strength, although a few seconds before he had the opportunity to continue leading a normal life. Therefore, the soul guardian's skull absorbed the soul of another hero. Jun looked at the girl and asked her if she was okay and if she had gotten hurt. She said it was fine, but she was very sorry that she couldn't stop them sooner, because if she had, this kind of tragedy definitely wouldn't have happened. Jun looked at her and said that she shouldn't feel guilty about that at all, because she was already very different from them. She lowered her sword and suggested that this would be the end for her, but Jun didn't understand what she was talking about at that moment. John pushed him to the ground with all his strength, not realizing what he should do next. The fact is that he is no longer allowed to touch that sword and will live exactly until he atones for all the sins of the Northern Army. After that, she walked away from the sword, but the boy still didn't understand how she could give up. After all, she was someone whose destiny was to become a great hero. Lee Jun thought about it and realized that he definitely couldn't do that now, so he decided that he wouldn't let her do it, but for now he just has to watch her. Another equally large army of reporters appeared in front of the guy and his army of hunters in front of them and started taking pictures of everyone. The guards yelled at them that they represented the Hunters Association, so they asked everyone to refrain from excessive filming. The reporters didn't understand where Choi was now, and the others also couldn't spot the mastermind in the team lineup, which surprised them greatly. They were surprised because they did not understand what had happened in the meantime and where had most of the Northern Army gone. It turns out that the middle hunter was the one who led the raid. Journalists were very excited about such a thing because his name and face are unknown to everyone, so he will definitely become a sensation. They ran closer and began asking who he was and what had happened at the door and asking his name, filming everything. The guy took another step towards them after which he put his hand on Lee Jun's shoulder and said that he was rumored to be the awakened S-rank rookie. People were surprised by this answer and couldn't believe their ears, so they started taking even more photos and asking even more questions, because the answer was Hen Gu himself. It seems that he and the newcomer know each other well. He smiled and coughed a little before continuing his speech. He then started shouting that these hunters had just returned from a hellish gate sweep, don't journalists think they should be given some time to rest? It's a big deal now for these returning heroes and those who couldn't attend, so he asked them to give the hunters some honor and step back. The journalists were very surprised. They heard this order, so each one began to hide their cameras and phones. The door through which 111 people entered became truly special. And the number of people who have been able to return is only 39, so it is not difficult to guess that it really is a lot of stress for all of them. Later, surprising things began to happen in the city, where in the middle of the white day a black hole appeared. From where a crow appeared and flew towards the window, he sat down at the table and caught the attention of Heimdall, who had been waiting for him for a long time. He smiled and admonished him because somehow Hugen had arrived too late. The association leader thought about it and said that apparently Lee Jun also knew how to control the river worm and how to become a hero, which was very interesting. Raven simply looked at him and didn't say much, only adding that Jun was also becoming much stronger due to hunting monsters. Such a thing made him think hard, and he realized that the case would definitely involve Agriel. Then he immediately took out his phone and started dialing in a panic. He really needed to meet with the survivors of the attack at the Rhine River Gate, and he would prepare and organize everything for the meeting. Furthermore, Heimdall also said that they no longer needed the Northern Army so the interlocutor agreed with him and said that he would immediately prepare all press material. There was a girl on one of the buses. He was preparing for today's very important meeting. It was John, who was dressed in civilian clothes and looked quite pretty. She wasn't even immediately recognizable. He remembered this place where the teacher held periodic meetings for the hunters, motivating them with a speech that he prepared in advance. 
But now the place is completely empty. There is not a single soul there. Now they are just memories. The girl bowed her head in homage to old times and remained silent for several minutes straight. She realized that she had now completely toyed with being a huntress, so she no longer wanted to see herself in that role. In that very intimate moment, she was disturbed by the people behind her, who turned towards her and gave her a little scare. John turned his head and was glad to see that the hunters were there too. They saw that she was very upset, so they looked at her sympathetically and informed her that she really hadn't done anything wrong, so she would be their vice principal or new leader for the rest of her life. She looked down and continued listening, because the hunters also realized that it was all the fault of Choi and the master, who had done all this, and no one else here. Then they knelt down as a sign of respect and asked her to keep her hands up because they really needed her right now. One of the hunters said that he wanted to live a dignified life so that he could look into his son's eyes with a clear conscience in the future, so they had already consulted and were ready to bear the sin of the northern army. Themselves, but their destiny should not end like this. She was very surprised, but realized that it was still her duty, because she was the last captain left on this sinking ship, so the children were not at all obliged to bear this sin. Hunter looked at her and said that there was actually something else that she didn't know before. This interested him very much, so he kindly waited for the continuation of this story. The hunters realized that their hands were already dirty and covered in blood. John looked at them and changed very dramatically. Darkness and lightning began to appear near her. Meanwhile, outside everything was relatively fine. Nothing could be seen of what was happening inside the house. The guy was carrying a can of soda, and he was impressed because he was really wondering if his statement to reporters about the guy was something he shouldn't have done at all. Lee Jun looked at him and told him not to talk nonsense because he should thank him, because thanks to the bald man he could become even more famous. Thanks to such an act, Jun had become very famous, so he only continued to smile in response. There was nothing surprising about it, considering that in the time allotted to clear the gate, he had risen to the highest rank. His face occupied all the advertising headlines, as well as several programs and newspapers. People loved him because he was capable of overcoming all adversities and surpassing all possible expectations. Baldy thought about it and looked at the boy, saying that he was now called Dark Horse because of his history. But he didn't understand why they did that, because normally that was only for those who were considered weak, so he didn't do it. I don't think it was a good nickname for him. He smiled because since he had no past behind him, he couldn't say that it really didn't suit him, maybe even the opposite. Baldy smiled and said that he was very worried about that, because he thought that Lee Jun would see it as an invasion of his privacy, so it was very good that the boy didn't worry about that. Lee Jun thought about it and realized that he would probably need to tell about his next plan, but before doing so, he decided to ask how they knew. Baldy didn't know what he was talking about, so he decided to clarify. Jun looked at him in surprise and asked him how he had guessed that he was using the hero's creation to his advantage. The idea of creating heroes is not what was discussed here. Baldy thought about it because he hadn't even thought about it, so he was very surprised. After a moment of silence and complete incomprehension, he looked at the boy and asked if he really claimed to be able to create a hero now. After all, people in this world believed that heroes were people who were born from a mixture of fate and the power of their patrons, and sometimes even time. Lee Jun looked at him and said that he already knew everything. He looked at his companion and turned to him, telling him that he was actually a member of Asgard. After saying that, his eyes lit up and he seemed to become very aggressive, showing his true colors. After transforming, he activated all his abilities, preparing to engage in battle and demonstrating his power. From this transformation, playground swings began to break and fly away. A great gust of wind appeared throughout the street, carrying everything in its path. People continued to sit in the office and solve problems. But suddenly the president of the association also began to hear something and suspect something. The guard asked him if everything was okay or if something was wrong. You could tell he was getting nervous too. The boss smiled and said that everything was fine and going exactly as planned. It just seemed to him that something entertaining had already begun. Lee Jun was surprised, because this was indeed his true strength. A bald man stood in front of him in full combat gear and looked directly at him. He closed his eyes and lowered his head. 
After opening them, he became an ordinary man again, but was very surprised by the turn of events and asked how the hell that guy knew about this. When they first met him, he was already a member of Asgard, but Lee Jun didn't understand why he did it. He thinks that all of his actions seem to come from the fact that Yoon is aware of the boy's plans. Jun was currently in front of him and that he had made his move long before. I also had great suspicions about him because Jun really has an incredible growth rate, and his actions seem to scream that he is aware of something. Now it all made sense. Jun smiled because he realized that because of this, they had set a trap for him and he had fallen for their bait like a stupid fish. He laughed because even though he had done it deliberately, he wondered how they thought, what was he doing all this for? Hyun hesitated and didn't even know how to properly answer that question. So the boy soon intrigued him, telling him that his real reason was his true intention to join Asgard, which greatly surprised his interlocutor. Lee Jun realized that Asgard was actually a secret group of incredibly powerful hunters, so the real war would begin right now. We needed to resolve the conversation at the base of an abandoned factory so that there were no extra eyes and ears. Then John went there and asked why the boy wanted to meet her, and in this very place. He looked at her and said he wanted to get straight to the point, then invited her to join his team. She was very surprised by this, because she had thought that her usefulness had ended at the gates of the Rhine River, because now she did not have even a shred of her former authority in the Northern Army, so she was now completely useless. He also lowered his head and said that he did not consider himself a person who could do anything useful. Lee Jun looked at her and wanted to snap her out of that state, saying that she was thinking completely wrong and that, in fact, John is a very valuable gift. She clenched her fist and realized that he spoke as if he knew everything. After that, she started screaming because the guy was absolutely right. The Northern Army was real trash and she was part of everything. It was already getting dark outside as their conversation had gone on for a long time. Lee Jun asked him what happened, but she just lowered her head and didn't know what to say. She had an outburst of uncontrollable anger. She reported that she knew nothing about many of the atrocities that were being committed behind her back, and that she did not even know about it, because the hunters were committing murders while obeying the orders of the deputy guild leader. Lee Jun heard her and was shocked, but she continued, reporting that these were innocent and helpless people. Then she sat down and grabbed her knees, staring at the ceiling because she couldn't forgive herself and didn't know how to continue. Li Jun, do you remember what they tried to do to you? In that conflict between hunters and the common man, they secretly killed anyone who stood in their way. As Choi was the head of the Northern Army, he took ordinary people for nothing more than cockroaches in all seriousness. It's very bad, especially for someone with morals like her. When things start falling on her shoulders too abruptly, so Lee Jun realized that if nothing was done, she might finally collapse. But he couldn't let that happen, since he didn't want to lose a dragon slayer like that at all. He looked at her and held out his hand to ask her what she planned to do next if something like this continued to happen. The door keeps appearing, but the hunters still awaken new powers, so ordinary people can't even hope to face such unimaginable power. If this kind of thing happened in the small Northern Army Guild... It was no surprise if the same thing happened outside of it, so would he turn his back on everyone in need? Lee Jun looked at her and said that he wanted to eradicate this at the base, that is, get rid of all the evil that was happening around him. He began to scream because everything she saw, heard, and felt, all of that he wants to destroy completely. She was excited too, so she started yelling at him, asking him if he really thought he could stop all of this. John understood his power, but doesn't Lee Jun realize how much power he has? After all, they are nothing compared to his power. She looked him in the eyes and told him that he was too weak to face him, but still asked the boy if he had any plans to change this world when they got in his way. He was glad to hear that, because he realized that was exactly what he wanted to hear. His eyes lit up and he said that he actually came from the future. This surprised John a lot and scared him a lot. The boy continued by telling him that something unimaginable would soon happen, where many would die, and the destruction that would precede the not-so-strong changes in the world's customs would be immeasurable. So when the time came, he would desperately need its power. He also looked at her and asked her if she knew that the association would call them at her house very soon. Then he said that their next meeting would be there, but for now he would let her think about everything. 
The next morning they woke up in the city and were ready to deal with all the problems there. The day began with news from the Northern Army Guild, finding that many horrible deeds committed by them came to light, including the murders of innocent citizens. Lee Jun watched the show and realized that things had gone much further than he could have imagined. Was everything planned in advance? After all, now that they had become useless, they were simply eliminated. Wasn't it all their doing? Suddenly his talisman began to glow and activate, informing the boy of his awakening. Lee Jun rejoiced that he had finally recovered because he had absorbed the souls of the army leaders as well as the water essence of the water worm and the gem of the water golem. The talisman informed him that the name of the new surname was Hyun Mu, so to summon him, he would only have to say his name, which surprised the boy since he had no idea how strong he was. So he began to summon him, without thinking twice. The talisman began to glow and rose into the air. Skull then approached the guy, saying that the guy had approached him, giving him his name. He was surprised, because he had never before imagined that a bone dragon could talk, but he was also surprised when he asked Jun if he was okay. It was very good that he lived in a house that was not in the most popular area of the city, with cameras placed everywhere. Magic is like the air that floats around us, so he continued to study it and meditate more and more, but that is what Lee Jun and many other heroes thought. But could it be that they were not using the true potential of magic? After all, they had been trying for a long time to find a way to extract more power from her, but it hadn't worked. The method created by the Demon King to utilize the true potential of magic is described rather superficially, so trying to apply it is not that easy. Soon there may be a moment of no return. When the time comes, the current A-rank hunters will be demoted to C-rank hunters, so he must prepare for that moment and become much stronger. However, he realizes that it is not that. Easy. While practicing, he received a message on his phone asking him to hit the road, after which they would accompany him to the association. He turned it off and was cautious. But still, Jun didn't realize if now was really the time for them to meet. I was driving down a busy road to the same place I didn't feel like going. He is poisoned behind him by the driver, who seems to see the boy so nervous for the first time, since he is usually very happy and doesn't worry about anything. Lee Jun smiled and said that he was also a human after all, so it was quite normal, right? Yes, although the driver definitely didn't think so before, so he smiled and asked, Did Jun really not think so? After all, when he entered the dungeon and then even rain, he never showed the slightest emotion. Could it be that the simple fact of knowing the president of the association would make him nervous? Although he also added that he was the type of person with whom it would not be possible to communicate freely. After that, he laughed, saying that there was no need to worry at all, because the guy was not being summoned because of an oversight, but only to reward him for his merits and talk to him a little. Jun was also upset, saying that more than 50 hunters died as a result of those campaigns, and that the murdered leaders of the Northern Army are also there. So he doesn't believe at all that the head of the association called him just to congratulate him for surviving and to know how Jun is doing, so he tuned in and said unequivocally that it would be an investigation. The driver also became nervous, saying that what he was saying actually made sense and that he hadn't thought about it at all. Hyun asked the boy if he really wanted to join Asgard, but also warned him that it was not in his jurisdiction. The thing is that Heimdall had a disagreement with Asgard because his original goals were for the good of humanity. But now many things have gone to the dark side. Everything changed when Hyung met the Demon King. Already at that time he had great doubts about Asgard, but there was no reason to leave Asgard. So he was only briefly associated with the Demon King and Asgard, but left after him. The guy clearly decided that he needed to get to Asgard faster than the Demon King, and then use whatever he needed there to pump faster exactly until he took everything he could from Asgard. At the association building, he was asked to go to the designated room. Lee Jun stood there and realized that he needed to enter that door now, but he was still nervous. The person in charge of the association was already waiting for him there, who was arranging the books on the shelves. He smiled and looked in her direction informing her that he had completely forgotten that he had called a guest today since he had been running errands all day. He was very happy to meet the boy, and also said that he does many things, but he is the one in charge of the Korean Hunter Association. His name is Jang Hyo Jin, 
That is how he introduced himself to the boy. This really surprised Li Jun, because his interlocutor had followed the exploits of the Northern Army with great admiration and had also been mentioned many times in the Demon King's biography. They shook hands and greeted each other, although Jun knew that in front of him was a truly powerful person who simply could not go unnoticed. Judging by his level, he knew that he was not even sure he could dominate him. The boy also said his name and looked into his interlocutor's eyes, although still a little nervous, too. Zhang Hyo smiled and said that now was the time to have a serious conversation. He then asked the boy how about he take off all the masks and get straight to the point. So his eyes lit up and he asked Li Jun who he really was. It was clearly clear that the leader was very determined, so he looked at the boy once more, informing him that they already knew enough about each other, so it wasn't worth wasting time on those kinds of games. The boy was surprised by this, so Zhang Hyo told him that he was very supportive of the Northern Army, but Li Jun had his own opinion about this situation, because he remembered that you should not believe a single word, as he might do so. Everything will be a lie. She looked at him and with a smile informed him that she understood. After that, the association leader once again transformed into an ordinary person who works daily in the office. Smiling, he said it was very boring, but now he was definitely sure that they were completely different people, right? He looked at Jun and realized that he was quite an intriguing young man, who woke up as a hunter, fought many monsters at the gate, and was able to defeat the leader of the goblins, after which they tried to recruit him for the big leagues. And being a beginner with very weak skills, in just two months he was able to single-handedly defeat a river worm at the rank A gate, something that only a select few could do. Zhang Hyo said that the boy's pumping speed was really impressive, but she still had some questions for him, one of which bothered him. He raised his note and began to get very angry, barely containing himself. Then Zhang Hyo looked at the guy and asked him why he killed him. After all, he had personally raised Choi Lung Siong. But Li Jun looked at him and said that he had seen everything. So it was not a valid question, because he had killed someone who tried to kill him. Is there a problem? He started screaming and said there was a problem, and a big one, because Jun had destroyed the particle he had nurtured. He was very surprised by this, after all. Was he really that angry, even if he was just a pawn? As Zhang Hyun had suggested before, why didn't they get straight to the point instead of wasting time on idle chatter? Li Jun was determined, so he said that he also wanted to join Asgard. At this, Zhang was very surprised and remained completely silent, looking at his interlocutor with stupor and incomprehension. After a second, he analyzed the situation and smiled, praising the boy for his ability to surprise people, but wondering if he understood exactly what Asgard really was. Li Jun waved his hands, saying that this is a group of first-generation hunters formed to save humanity. This is Asgard, isn't it? He looked at Zhang Hyo and said that he was exactly the king of Asgard, so he decided to repeat it once again saying that he wanted to join Asgard. Zhang Hyo looked at the boy and was not very surprised, since normally one came there by invitation, not by recruiting common people from the streets. He started to laugh, because he was very happy to have such a smart guy in front of him. But how had he guessed all this? The presence of the crow, the river worm was under control, and then he also provoked it by talking about being pumped hunting at the door. Li Jun looked at it and realized that by betting everything he had on this information, he was really risking his life, but it worked. Everything happens exactly as described in the book, where Zhang Hyo simply won't be able to reject it due to her own curiosity. Zhang Hyo was as happy as a child because it seems that his eye didn't work on the boy either. After all, he definitely knows the abilities of his eye too, right? Jun looked at him and asked if he was talking about the eye that pierces instinct. Because his eye didn't work on him, Zhang's interest in him only grew. It was indeed a very fascinating sight for him. Then he smiled and said that he would have no problem accepting the guy in Asgard, but before that, he would like to give him a couple of tests, because that idiot Choi Dong San was originally supposed to take that position after becoming a hero. So if Jun passes this test, he will be accepted into the ranks of Asgard. He started to glow and laugh because I think Li Jun realizes that Zhang will forbid him from talking to anyone about what happened here and now. Even though it was all happening on a bright day, the bright yellow flash was still visible far beyond the building. After this ritual, the boy went to a cafeteria to change things up a bit. 
he was surprised and a little upset because his employer had blocked not only the penetrating gaze, but also the ban that had been issued. It was a very good thing. Odin didn't seem to have noticed anything. Lee Jun was very surprised, because if he was able to bypass the ban, could the fallen angel also dispel any mental attack? After all, if that were the case, wouldn't it be too unbalanced? At that moment, a girl approached him and greeted him. Jun immediately apologized to her because he was thinking and lost in thought, and then he walked over and invited her to sit down. He looked at her and asked her if she had come here to meet the director of the association. Had something happened? But she denied it, because he had only told her that everything that happened in the Northern Army was a shame. John looked down and said he couldn't even ask her why she had done all this. He looked at her and said that the head of the association probably just wanted to erase all memories and cut the connection with her since the girl knows her entire history. But the question that tormented him was, why did Zhang Hyo leave things as they were? Was it just because he was innocent? She was also surprised, but knowing him, he's the one who would invent a new sin and put it on the shoulders of the innocent, so it makes absolutely no sense. That's right. That's the reason she's still alive. Li Jun continued. For the mere fact that she has no value in his eyes, he believes that whether she was alive or dead, nothing would change from that to the point where the Northern Army still exists. Then he could destroy it as a warning to another guild more favorable to him. Those words made the girl panic and cry. He realized that he was really worthless. Then Li Jun once again tried to calm her down and offered to hold her hand. He looked at her and promised her that he would definitely change the world. And although she thought that for now he was vain or narcissistic, she needed to trust him because the girl no longer had anything to lose. She glared at him, but he continued urging her because holding her hand wouldn't make things worse, would it? She hesitated and looked at it, as she really had no other suitable options to move forward with her life. So John agreed and shook his hand, hoping that this time everything would be okay. They walked together to the place, the abandoned building where their first business meeting had taken place, and then looked into the distance. The girl didn't understand what the boy was going to do next, so she wanted to get at least some information from him. Lee Jun smiled and said that she had probably gotten a client within Rain River Gate, so she would like to know which client had their eye on her. She took out her talisman, but warned the boy that she wasn't quite sure she knew how to use it properly, but that her employer, Prince Charming, had given her a dragon's bloodstone. So far, everything was happening just as Jun thought it would happen, because the Demon King's autobiography said that this stone had only appeared three times in all of history and was actually very important, since it was necessary to obtain Siegfried's immortality. John looked at the boy and with a smile on her face informed him that she was ready to give him the stone. Lee Jun was very shocked by what he heard because he couldn't believe it. Was the girl ready to give him such an important gift in exchange for nothing? He took a few steps away from her so she wouldn't do anything stupid by asking him if she really understood how invaluable this stone was. The girl laughed a lot, because judging by her reaction, he himself knows much better what he is worth. Jun thought about it. He wanted to get it, but he couldn't imagine that it would be so simple. And although he already had it in his hands, Jun reminded the girl that he had received it from his employer. But would he do it? Would it be okay if she just gave it to him? The thing is, this could help her tremendously. Could she smiled and said that it was a gift from her personally for him to recognize and believe in her, so she couldn't wait for them to start working together. He thanked her for such a thing, and said that he had thought it through, at least about how difficult and long it would be to get the dragon bloodstone. But how could it be possible? This surprised him a lot, but doesn't the girl realize her value? Is she the simplest? At this moment, the fallen angel began to laugh a lot while looking at his appearance. Lee Jun came to the weapons store, greeted the salesman, and told him that they hadn't seen him in a long time. He was very surprised by this, so he asked Lee Jun why Lee Jun was here. The boy was serious because he was preparing for a great battle, so he needed the help of a master of his craft. He looked at the rack and noticed that the selection of possible weapons for battle was truly impressive. He was also very fond of spears, each sharpened for a particular style of fighter. Jun was shocked by such a wide selection, but it was not surprising since he had tried this particular master for a reason. Toth looked at him and informed him that they were not finished yet. 
The fire was actually very good, so he thanked the boy for his help, but still complained that the speed of delivery of the materials left a lot to be desired. While the blacksmith's skills are key, the materials are also equally important, but it all happened too quickly, so it is clear that the necessary materials will not appear out of nowhere in such a short time. Lee Jun took out the stone that the girl gave him and showed it to the blacksmith. He was very surprised and hesitated, because he obviously did not expect to see something like this now. The blacksmith put his hands on the table because he realized that it was a very rare and expensive specimen whose analogs are almost non-existent. That's why he started to get a little nervous and shout, asking what it was, because he had never seen a mineral like this before. Lee Jun smiled and said that it was not a gift at all. The blacksmith also continued to shout, saying that he knew the price of this stone. After all, what kind of idiot would accept something so valuable and mystical as a gift? Jun smiled and said that at least one of them was present here, so he took his hammer in his hands and said that he would borrow it for a while. The blacksmith watched him and wondered what he was doing. But Li Jun was serious, so he decided to make his own weapon material from this ore to fight in battle, so he suggested that the blacksmith observe the process closely. He charged the hammer with his magic power and heated it appropriately to make the metal base shine. The blacksmith was furious, so he ordered the guy to stop immediately and not do any of that because it wasn't his hammer. The boy's hand also began to burn completely covered in fire. Li Jun got into a fighting stance and began to hit the stone hard with his hammer to properly modify it and turn it into a great weapon. After such a blow, the stone broke into two equal parts, and in the middle a bright white flash appeared, behind which nothing else could be seen. The blacksmith was shocked and started to grab his head because he couldn't believe at all that Jun had just broken this expensive ore. When he recovered from such shock, he started looking at the stones and asked Li Jun if he was sure they should be used that way. If the dragon stone contains enough blood, it can regenerate. In other words, it can and should be doubled. So Jun smiled and asked him to place half of the dragon stone on his spear. But he also asked him not to play or experiment with the pebble, which is really very important, as well as the other half. He looked at the Gladius and realized that it was indeed very similar to Siegfried's Gladius that was described in the book. Then he asked him to put the other half of the stone in this Gladius that was on display. The blacksmith also smiled and said that he would do it for free, and thanked him for this opportunity to work with such valuable materials. And in addition, Li Jun unknowingly revealed another secret to him. It was already starting to get cloudy in his forest and the weather was starting to get noticeably worse. The monsters began to hunt, ready to destroy everything in their path while the dragonstone absorbed the orc's blood, but it was only one percent full of the one hundred needed. Then the boy and the girl went out to hunt them, destroying each one who stood in their way. John was glad because this one-handed sword is actually very good. She had never used such a weapon before, but it was as if it merged with her hand. Lee Jun smiled, knowing that there was no better weapons manufacturer in the world than Park Jae Hyun, he was the best in the business. He also asked the girl about the progress in filling the Dragonstone. She reported only 2%, so Jun said that the more they hunted, the greater the stone filling process would be. The girl couldn't even think that it could be used in such a way, where one stone becomes two and two becomes four, so only once again was she convinced that giving her the stone was indeed one of her best decisions. Lee Jun smiled and with a look once again thanked her for her trust. Their dialogue was interrupted by a huge monster that came very close to them and started whistling, forcing them to pay attention. Of a lion. So he also tried to roar, letting everyone know that he was the king of this forest. He took out his staff and swung it with all his might, hitting the ground with tremendous force. Therefore, Jun had to act by jumping back and using an evasion skill. Jumping to the appropriate distance, he began to quickly analyze his opponent. He understood that the boss of this gate was the ogre warrior, but why did he really have such crazy strength and where is John right now? At this point, she was taking the fight and holding her new sword against the swing of the attacking ogre. It was clearly evident that she wouldn't last long like this. His strength was running out and the tension on his body was extremely heavy. But gathering his thoughts, he swung his sword with the last of his strength and struck his opponent, surprising him and making him jump back. The ogre was very enraged, so it began to roar even more, preparing to mount another attack, 
but as it is written in the book, Siegfried's greatsword was capable of repelling even countless dragon attacks. Lee Jun watched the scene and was very happy, because this was indeed the John whose potential he could discern, because even the monster was surprised that the man was able to repel his attack with sheer force. He continued running to attack, feeling his superiority and the smell of the monster's first blood, after which she dealt him a powerful sword blow that passed through him. But she didn't stop there for long, so jumping up she was ready to attack again, much to the monster's surprise. The girl was excited, but she had a huge dose of adrenaline in her system that ruled her entire body. This was worth it, as the last blow was good and cut the monster's body completely in half. After everything was over and night was approaching, Li Jun approached her and asked why she was upset again. He smiled and said that she couldn't even begin to imagine how much he now enjoyed the fact that the girl ably had his back all the time. John also looked at him and smiled, after which his mood improved noticeably. Li Jun informed that they would go there in two days, so the girl began to prepare for everything to start very soon. The boy was sure that they would spend the next two days hunting to improve their teamwork, that way their chances of survival in the future would increase a little. She looked at the boy and trusted him completely, so she was willing to do anything he told her. Finally, John had a task for himself, as it would be the test that Odin had prepared for him. It was already quite dark, so we needed to start getting ready for bed. This moment had finally arrived. He sat in his room and meditated, preparing himself for a further adventure. Li Jun understood that now they did everything they could with that short period of time. Yes, of course, it would be very nice if Siegfried earned a name for herself. But this happened much later, so there is no need to be greedy. The guy looked to the side and was a little scared, because he didn't understand who it was. A bald friend came to visit him and couldn't sleep, so he called the guy to the table to tell him something very important. He didn't have time for idle talk, so he decided to tell him directly so that Jun would not even think about going there tomorrow. Because if he did, he could easily die. Because it would no longer be an easy walk, as it was at the gates of the Rhine River. He looked at his interlocutor and realized that now his words were truly sincere, and this was a great reason to think. Song Gu Hyun continued to speak, because he kept thinking about how Li Jun found out about Asgard, and for what purpose he wanted to join it, it was very important for him to find out his true intentions. In the end, he decided not to worry about such things, so he smiled and said that he completely trusted him. These words surprised Li Jun very much, so he could not restrain himself and asked where the bald man got so much faith in him. He smiled and said that he himself did not fully understand this, but most likely it was intuition. In any case, he once again decided to remind him that the guy should not even think about going there tomorrow, because Odin is already incredibly interested in him, and even if Jun does not go through any quest, he will in any case allow him to join Asgard when Jun will do it himself. Song Gu Hyun thought about it and said that the guy hasn't earned his title yet, has he? But if he wants to go tomorrow, he will still receive it posthumously. Lee Jun became wary and thanked him for his concern, but still asked his interlocutor to take it all more calmly and not worry. After all, no matter what happens there, he still intends to return alive, because there is still a lot of things he needs to do. So the next day, he immediately went to a large shopping center. He also took his partner with him so that together they could choose exactly what they needed. They were surprised, because they were already expected at the main entrance, although they had not planned this at all. It was the same driver who waved his hands and called them to him. Lee Jun was very happy to see the guy, so he smiled and immediately congratulated him on his promotion. Kim Soo Young thanked his colleague for his success and said that being sent on an international expedition is simply incredible. He considers it an honor to be a hunter who represents an entire nation. Unusually for himself, he bowed to Jun and politely asked him to wait a little for the opening of the passage at this place, after which he wished the hero to return safely from the expedition. After such pleasant words, the guy left to go about his business. The girl was very surprised by this behavior and pleasant words from the curator. Her partner agreed with her words. The gates to London began to open. The guy in the suit said that it was already possible to hit the road and wished the heroes to return safe and sound. On the other side of the gate, our heroes were already greeted by two men in formal clothes. For them, it was a great honor to meet such a famous dark horse as Jun face to face. 
The guy thanked for such a warm welcome and said that they were sent by the Korean Association. He confidently said this in English. The girl, with surprise and a smile, told her friend that he was fluent in several languages and noted that this was very convenient for their missions. John remembered that, in fact, he did not learn English of his own free will, because in the era of Eden, without such a skill, you were not even perceived as a person. Despite this truth, he decided to simply thank John for the nice compliment and tell the whole story. A man with white hair invited the heroes to rest after traveling through the gate. He said that in the evening there would be a party in honor of the arrival of all the hunters who were called to the expedition. They really hoped that their Korean friends would accept such an offer. In the evening, the long-awaited party began for all hunters from different countries of the world. John was upset that she couldn't speak English and generally didn't understand what people were talking about. Her partner replied that most of the hunters that approached them were actually very happy to meet them, but some were the ones who hung racist labels. At one point, the pleasant atmosphere was interrupted by the unexpected appearance of a giant. Everyone around was shocked. He said that he expected two idiots from the Korean organization to appear, but to his surprise he saw some kind of loving couple. The confident giant said that Jun and John do not look like those who can deliver any serious blow. He believes that the Korean Association sent weaklings. He approached John and with a threatening look told the calm guy that they were not the ones he was waiting for so much. The girl did not understand what the stranger was talking about, but from his tone she understood perfectly well that it was unlikely that he was talking about something good. John was also tensed by this behavior of the giant. The situation was different from his expectations. Still, the Asgard organization is classified as secret. It pulls the strings in the shadow of Korea. In addition to Asgard, there are many other secret organizations in the world that are also controlled by hunters, these organizations are constantly fighting for power and the right to have a voice and the right over the gates. One such important event was the dungeon battle. The original purpose of hunter organizations to protect humanity by hunting monsters was lost long ago. Having lost themselves, they got involved in a fight to prove which of them is stronger. The self-confident man asked John why he was simply silent in response to a direct question. The shocked guy still couldn't understand what this monster had forgotten in such a place because he was completely out of step with the rest of the company. Initially, the Battle of the Dungeon was the place where the title holder Choi Yong Sun was supposed to participate. After his victory at the gates of the Rhine River, he became famous as a Gunter, but due to Jun's intervention, the course of history changed and eventually the Gunter died. Therefore, Odin's original plans were destroyed, and he was forced to send him on the expedition instead of Choi Yong Sun. This stranger didn't even compare Jun to Gunther. Perhaps this is due to the change in the past. Another stranger approached the huge man from behind and asked him to stop this conflict. A guy with blonde hair suddenly approached them. He said that he was very glad to meet them, and it was a great honor for him to meet the dark horse that everyone was discussing. The sincere guy extended his hand to Jun. The aggressive guy was surprised to hear that the seemingly weak newcomer was the dark horse of the party. Looking at the disappointed comrade, the guy turned to him by the name of Demetrius and asked him not to be so rude to his dear guests. The nice guy introduced himself as George with the title Odysseus and apologized for his rude and stupid muscular comrade Demetrius. John immediately realized that George was the guy who was unlucky and was killed by his own partner Hercules in the future. Jun shook the guy's hand and said that he had heard a lot about him and was very glad to meet him. Odysseus replied that he was embarrassed by such words because his name was not even close to the fame of the dark horse. George asked Demetrius to quickly apologize and shake the guy's hand. The muscular man thought the new guy was funny. Extending his hand to Jun, he introduced himself as Demetrius and said that he had the title of Hercules, after which he asked the newcomer if he had really heard a lot about his homeland of Greece. With a terrifying look, he waited for Joan to please him with his answer, Hercules is truly an absolute monster. His very appearance gave our hero goosebumps. Unfortunately for him, he was unable to shake hands with his opponent. Unexpectedly for everyone, the girl stood in his way. Her eyes were filled with anger. She said that Joan would not accept an apology and Hercules should remove his hand. This behavior seriously cheered up the muscular man, and he looked in her direction with rage in his eyes. 
Despite the tension in his hand, the girl held him in place without much difficulty. George watched in surprise what was happening. He couldn't believe his eyes and was surprised that the girl could so calmly hold back the brute force of Hercules. The tension between the fighters grew rapidly. By applying more force to his hand, Hercules was able to throw June away. The girl was able to stand on her feet, but after a moment she looked excitedly towards her leg. She felt severe pain and realized that she had broken it. Furious Hercules began to laugh with satisfaction. He said that she impressed him, and it turns out that among them there is another dark horse. After Hercules calmed down, he said that this would not be their last meeting. George politely apologized for all the inconvenience that his friend had caused them and said goodbye to his Korean friends. John approached Jun and asked if she was okay. At that moment she was injured and was holding an elixir in her hands. The excited girl said that everything did not happen the way she wanted, and then asked if they seriously needed to defeat someone with such strength as Hercules. For Jun, this man looked like an invulnerable monster, and therefore he replied that despite the task, they hardly had a chance of winning. The guy understood that even such monsters have weaknesses, because he said that they would lose if the fight was under normal circumstances. Apparently, the serious Jun already had a plan. Parties took place every day, with members of the organizations getting to know each other while gathering information about the strength of potential opponents. All members of the expedition did this except our dark horses. One of the employees of the London organization was impressed that his Korean colleagues continued to defend the gates even while abroad. Jun replied with a smile on his face that they could do tourist things at any other time. The sincere man replied that in fact it was better for them to save their strength given the upcoming expedition to clear the gate. After this conversation, they entered the gates of the Org Horde. Jun planned to stay in this place until he gets the right thing. If they don't find what they are looking for, then they will go looking in other similar gates. The girl agreed with her friend's plan with a smile. They decided to act in the same way as in the gates in Korea. It would be training with an emphasis on defense for the girl. The guy believed that with his skills, he was unlikely to be able to withstand even one blow from Hercules and that is why John's role is so important in their plan. John walked away a little and asked his friend to wait for him. The girl was surprised because she thought that they would go together. John replied that this time they will work separately, and she will soon understand why. Besides, he will leave her for a while. The guy ran away in the opposite direction from the gate. The girl sighed with relief. Just a few days ago, she was weighed down by a feeling of guilt because of the guild, but now she felt calmer. Even her patron sent her messages of disappointment or rage, but now his messages make it clear that he is actually pleased sometimes. A moment later, the guy returned and ordered Jun to prepare for battle. There was a lot of dust behind him. A huge number of monsters were moving towards them. The girl was very surprised to see a dozen blood and even a dungeon boss with two heads. John went into battle and asked his girlfriend not to run away from the enemies. The girl asked why she shouldn't run away if all the opponents were against her. She understood why, before the fight, he asked her to equip the title of the great enemy of the ogres. The guy replied that she could handle it. Jun asked if that was why he said to fill the entire inventory with healing potions. They really have a tough fight ahead of them. The excited girl tried to collect her thoughts. She bravely shouted that she could do it and ran into battle. Meanwhile, the guy was using his power. He called Hyun Mu for help. Jun asked to help Miss John by using a healing potion on her as soon as she was in danger. The guy thought that this way she wouldn't have any problems. Now it's time to find the missing piece of the puzzle that will allow him to defeat Hercules. A brutal heavy battle began. Everything around was on fire from powerful explosions. Some ogres had already been defeated. Thanks to the guy's power over the flame, he could extinguish the fire by walking through it. He said that he had finally found what he was looking for. It was about an Easter egg. It only appears in ogre settlements with rank B. He noticed red eyes and a mountain of muscles. It was a terrifying ogre that even the heroes tried to avoid. He does not use magic because on the basis of his terrifying power, in the end, in the future, he was called the red-eyed ogre magician. A bald guy burst into the room noisily. He was very unhappy and shouted to the man in the hall, asking how he dared to do this. One of the employees approached him and asked what he allowed himself to do because this is not the way to behave in such a place. With a smile on his face, the man with the eye patch calmly said that everything was fine 
and asked the concerned employee to leave them alone. The surprised man asked what happened. The bald guy said that there is no need to pretend because in fact he knows what we are talking about. He asked me to think about the answer and not lie to him about the situation that happened. The man in the eye patch realized that they were in for a serious conversation and created a sound barrier inside the hall. After that, he said that now they could talk on the frequency. He said that this was not their meeting room, and he was wondering if he would follow as guardian rules here. The surprised guy said that there could be no talk of any rules and asked the boss what happened to their main pillar of actions in the name of humanity. He believes that the creation of new, so important rules brought him into the background. The angry man said that his words sounded like a reproach. The guy seriously replied that he would reproach him if there was a chance that his words would be heard, but he believes that in fact there is no chance that this will happen. Filled with rage, the man stood up and called the guy opposite him an insolent bastard. But the guy replied that we were talking about Hercules. Boss calmed down a little and asked what he meant. The bald guy said that he had heard rumors that he would take part in the Battle of the Dungeon. The head of the Hunter Academy calmed down a little and sighed heavily. He believes that this battle should have been the last point in their victory, but the problem is Hercules, and he wonders if Olympus plans to terminate their agreement. The bald guy was surprised because he believed that it was the head of the Academy who sent Hercules to this matter. Now it became clear to him that in fact things were much worse. He asked his boss if he was really going to send the guy to his death because it seemed that he was very interested in him. He also decided to go on an expedition. With a calm smile, the head replied that there was no need to worry because the death of this guy was not part of his plans and that's what happened. In fact, they made a pact. If he was in any danger, the pact would immediately notify the boss about it. With interest in his eyes, he said that Olympus had violated their agreement and this freed his hands. The bald guy was shocked by the behavior of the head of the academy. He could not believe that his boss was so insidious that he could even foresee such events. But still he was not sure that the concluded pact was good, but it would definitely ease their worries, despite this premonition of something. Something was wrong could not leave his bald head. In fact, Odin and Heimdall did not yet know that Odin's pact had already been broken by the fallen angel. Meanwhile, our hero's battle continued. He thought that luring the red-eyed ogre with fire was a really good idea. He finally found the mysterious reason why such an anomaly was in such a place, and this is the most important piece of the puzzle that will help him in the battle with Hercules. While thinking about his plans, Jun did not notice when the enemy approached him from behind. He didn't expect the red-eyed ogre to be able to find him so quickly. The guy decided to run away. The ogre ran after him. The shocked guy could not understand where this huge monster got such speed with such and such a size he believed that this ogre was a match for Hercules, and he didn't know if he could defeat him now. The ogre got closer and decided to kick. Everything around began to shake from such a powerful blow from the monster. But he failed to hit, and the guy managed to dodge a huge and powerful enemy. The guy used force to pick up his weapon. He wanted to avoid skirmishes while he prepared for the battle with Hercules. But now there was no point in this, and he must win. His gaze was serious and intimidating. The huge ogre approached Jun and swung his arm strongly. The guy was ready to take this powerful blow. Fortunately for him, a moment before the impact, he received a message that the gate was now cleared. With a little luck, he finally completed his task. He understood that the situation would have become dire if the ogre had managed to injure him. Before the battle in the dungeon, it would have been almost impossible to have time to heal with potions. But fortunately, Miss John managed and defeated the boss of the level, you can really rely on her. Meanwhile, a familiar event began in one of the London buildings. The daily party of monster hunters from all over the world was in full swing. George and Demetria stood nearby. They had not seen the strange boy in whom they were interested for a long time and understood that most likely he had been preparing for battle all this time. Hercules was dying of boredom and asked his comrade if he could at least enter one of the gates. His comrade replied that this cannot be done because he does not need new problems, which he will create as usual. For George, he is a complete problem, because Hercules ignored the order from Olympus and took part in the Battle of the Dungeon. The surprised muscular man asked what was his fault. He didn't understand why he should deliberately lose a fight when he could win. He, as a fighter, despised such unreasonable things. 
George asked him, as a real fighter, why then he sent Theseus to the hospital. Odysseus was very tense because his comrade was driving him crazy. The battle of the dungeon was one step away from the beginning and he hid Theseus well. But given that Hercules is the head of their group, someone from Olympus should arrive and punish him as the one who ignored a direct order. George will also suffer since he helped his partner. With a cheeky smile, the man replied that they shouldn't worry about it because he would protect them from anyone. But in any case, he was disappointed that the dark horse was unlikely to be able to withstand at least one of his blows, but he still liked the girl who was nearby with him, so he doesn't want to miss this chance. With a smile on his face, George excitedly wondered how many opponents his comrade had recognized, as he looked down on the dark horse of this event very much. For some reason unknown to him, he was overwhelmed with emotions in anticipation of something truly large-scale. Small activities began to occur in the guy's house, his girlfriend asked him if he was going to go hunting again. If so, then she would like to accompany him. Lee Jun said that everything is really fine, and even more so, the girl is not in the best condition right now. She felt a little embarrassed by this, so she asked who was causing her to be in such a state again. Lee Jun thought about it and smiled, and said that thanks to this, she had gained a very useful skill that would allow her to further improve her physical resistance and replenish her stamina. Maybe it's worth repeating. John began to twirl her hair on her finger and was also noticeably nervous because she didn't know how to answer him correctly, but John beat her to it and said that he was just joking. So let the girl rest for now and he'll go out on his own today. John smiled sweetly and said that if something happens, the guy should contact her immediately. Lee Jun understood that this was the street of alchemy. He understood that it should be located right here. It is worth noting that this is a place with enormous magical power. When he approached the right place, his eyes really lit up, because this was really what he was looking for. He walked inside and didn't close the door behind him, apologizing in advance for invading his personal space. A cute girl with red hair was already waiting for him, who greeted him in a telephone booth. He also smiled and realized that he had arrived exactly where he had planned. The girl smiled sweetly at him, because he was a Korean, so it was really a rarity for them to meet a Korean here so she couldn't hide her interest and asked what brought him here. Could it really be special potions or objects for some nefarious deeds? Lee Jun looked at her and asked if the girl's name was Park Yu Jin. She was very surprised by this, because not only did the guy come at the moment when she just opened up, but he also knows her name. What kind of inconvenience is this? The guy smiled and said that her blacksmith skills weren't that ossified yet, were they? This was the youngest sister of the greatest blacksmith, the second blacksmith of the last, and also the best alchemist named Hephaestus. It seems that the girl has already begun to understand everything, so she asked if Park J. Hyun sent him. A week later they met again, and the girl, at the request of the guy, melted the red ore that he gave her and coated her spear, but what worries her more now is who Lee Jun really is. After all, this object inserted into his spear, also this ore, which she is hearing about for the first time, is really impressive, especially since he left her stupid brother and traveled all this way to England in order to find this mineral. Isn't it strange? Moreover, even the people of Olympus do not have something similar. So she wanted to find out who the guy really is and how he came up with the idea of searching for these objects. But he just looked at the girl and told her to also return to Korea. Lee Jun smiled and said that if she needed minerals or other rare materials, it would be better for her to be in Korea rather than stay here. She was very surprised, so she wanted to know what he wanted to tell her. But everything is simple here, because if these two are reunited, then with their support, he will become even stronger, since he himself is in Korea. She didn't believe it, because how can a guy constantly get her materials and minerals that even Olympus doesn't have? Is he really that arrogant? But she still became interested in it, so she laughed and said that it was really a lot of fun and she liked it. Very quickly, a large blue beam that came from the workshop went into the sky. The hunters stood in their places and so far did not suspect anything. They were all laughing and just enjoying life. They were all preparing for something big, just like Odysseus. The news has already reported that the raid is about to begin, in which hunters of all nations will be present and preparing to engage in a duel. The girl looked at her boyfriend, with whom she had been walking in the place for a very long time, and then asked if they would really have to fight with all these people. 
Li Jun said that not with everyone, because there are people here who are not at all interested in winning the battle in the dungeon. They only need victory by clearing the gate. This reassured her and made her happy, because it means that the hunters are not in the mood to kill each other. But Li Jun understood that if there were people here who thought like this, it would be just wonderful. But unfortunately, this is far from the case. Meanwhile, Hercules looked at the guys and could not understand who they were and what they forgot here. Hearing this, they all simultaneously looked at him with bewilderment and contempt. But apparently this angered Hercules, so he started shouting at them, asking what they were staring at. Odysseus approached him, saying that they had not even entered the gate. His friend was a little surprised, but said that they were still looking at him very intently, so it annoyed him. In any case, they pointed their hands at Li Jun and said that he really is a dark horse. Li Jun looked at them calmly, and after that he also prepared to enter these gates and begin the duel. Demetrius said that the guy really has a very pleasant look, which fascinates and excites, so he laughed and wished him good luck. He also smiled back at her and prepared to begin. Meanwhile, the gates opened, after which everyone was asked to enter there. The guy looked at John and asked how she felt. He tried to set her up for a duel because when they get out there, they will need to act very quickly, so he asked her to run away as far as possible. These words surprised her very much because he at least understands what he is telling her right now. But it was already late and they entered, after which they were greeted by a mountain called Catalon. Everything around was in explosions. Everything was burning and blazing as too many players came to this place. John took her weapon and began to fight. She was really shocked because she couldn't understand what was happening here, so she looked around and also analyzed what the guy was telling her. She first started to run away because that was the order. But on the way, something really shocked her and made her afraid. The first wounded hunter was already lying on earth. It was clear that he had suffered greatly as a result of the fight and began to ask for help, and also really wanted to be rescued. But John remembered the words of the guy who ordered her to run away as far as possible. Therefore, she absolutely did not pay attention to the wounded, and with her eyes closed, tried to run away as far as possible. But still John decided to go back, give some healing potion to the wounded man, and also asked what happened. But it seemed it was already too late because he only drank the potion, after which he immediately passed out. The girl was shocked because she didn't understand what was happening here. She looked around and heard danger approaching. So John started swinging her weapon with all her might, trying to fend off the attack. As a result, a huge explosion occurred. It was the same Demetrius who came out of the smoke curtain and was impressed that the girl was still able to block this attack. John remembered everything that she had trained over many years in the ranks of hunters, so she stood in a fighting position and waited for further developments. Still, she was very nervous, so she held her weapon with all her might. But from her look, one could understand that John was worried, because the real Demetrius was standing in front of the days, and his attacks were much stronger than even those of the ogre boss. He came closer and his eyes began to burn, so he continued to laugh and also decided to insult the girl, calling her the same chicken that was next to the dark horse. So he said that he was very happy that he decided to take part in this fight. The explosions did not stop, but only increased. Obviously, not everyone understood what would await them when they entered these gates. Demetrius continued to destroy absolutely everyone in his path, swinging his strong right arm. He tried his best to attack the girl, who was able to dodge such unthinkable blows for the second time. So John took her sword and started fighting with him, because she had no other choice at all. Still, John looked around because she absolutely could not understand what kind of destructive force this was. Demetrius laughed and continued to attack her, asking why she is silent now. Has she really swallowed her tongue? It's very good that before entering the battle, the guy took the weapon for improvement, so the girl was able to use her sword as a protective shield. But still, it was really very difficult since Demetrius did not spare anyone on his way, so he continued to attack everyone. He laughed and told the girl to watch the process carefully. She was completely ready to fight, although she understood that the forces were not at all equal. She was already a little wounded, and the realization that her opponent's power was indeed many times greater was truly terrifying. John already felt every blow and she was in a lot of pain, but this was her training, so she prepared herself to be able to block his attacks so with a wave of her hand, she realized that now it was her turn. Demetrius continued to mock at the bottom, 
saying that she is the hunter who has not even won the title yet. It is truly incredible, because she was honored to experience his attack. Therefore, Demetrius did not spare absolutely anyone, just like this girl, creating an image of a real tiger above herself and activating her wild beast ability. After this, the fiery flame immediately ignited, and all this flew towards the girl, who clearly did not expect such a turn of events. It was necessary to make decisions immediately, because this could not continue for long, so the girl quickly looked to the side. Lee Jun came running to her aid and immediately ordered her to retreat. This was really the right decision, so he took the girl and started running away with her. The smoke from the flames that was behind them was really impressive, because it all flew right towards the girl. Demetrius looked with confusion, because he was already determined to fight. But why were his opponents running away? John decided to share her impressions that she had formed in this short period of time, so she said that as soon as they entered the gate, a really very large explosion occurred, as a result of which many hunters fell under it and died. This really scared and shocked her, because she really didn't understand what was going on here. Lee told her that it was a real trap. The thing is, that just after entering the gate, all the hunters immediately decided to attack Demetrius, and he was immediately enraged by this, after which he began to go on a rampage. After this, John, everything really became clear, since the guy was able to foresee this, and therefore ordered her to immediately run away. He looked to the side and realized that what happened there seemed to be only a third of its end, so it would be necessary to fight a lot more. The girl was very happy because she was lucky that she did not have to experience this attack that he was about to use, so she raised her hand and asked what they would do next. Lee Jun created his weapon and said that now they have only one task. His eyes lit up and he also prepared to fight, because the only thing they need is to survive. There are a lot of A-rank monsters in this world, for example, the same Catalan lions. After all, Demetrius is far from their only enemy. It was starting to get dark, so his skull mascot started peeking out over the area. After he arrived, he informed the guy that he did not find any hunters in the area, but this was not enough, so Lee Jun ordered him to continue monitoring the perimeter around them, and if he started to smell danger, to return immediately. Lee Jun told his friend that it was time for them to move out. She looked at him and asked for at least another minute of time. She decided to bury all her hunters, and since Hyun Mu controls the area around her, Lee Jun did not stop her, although it seemed really very strange to him that the girl was burying the bodies of her enemies. She looked at the guy in surprise and said that he had previously mentioned that there are two ways to win this battle, right? If you want to defeat the boss, or focus and take part in this fight, there will undoubtedly be a boss, and he will also be very strong, so it will take two people to defeat him. John agreed with this, but also asked if the guy really thought that Demetrius would not be stronger than the boss. So she started to panic and ask what they would do. Lee Jun has a plan, doesn't he? The guy simply smiled and said that they would be able to deal with two birds with one stone at once. This surprised the girl very much and made her nervous. The talisman arrived to its owner and also seemed to begin to worry a little. He reported that three hunters with skull tattoos were very close to them. Lee Jun thought about it and realized that right now he would need to act. He understood that it was these three hunters who enraged Demetrius as soon as they entered the gate, so the girl needed to prepare herself immediately. She said that they were about to encounter hunters. Wouldn't it be better to just avoid them? Lee looked in their direction and agreed that it usually works, but now everything is different, and he has a real plan. Another terrible fire started in the forest. The three hunters were already tied up and looking into the eyes of their captors. Demetrius told Odysseus that he was following the fiery trail of that dark horse, but what kind of idiots are these? Odysseus replied that they were somehow connected with Borgen, but what was it? Borgen is a shadowy organization that has its roots in northern Africa, so they know how to instill fear. And it was they who ambushed Demetrius at the entrance to the gate. This surprised him very much, and therefore he looked at them with his gaze. The hunters began to panic and scream very loudly in fear, begging for mercy since they had made a mistake. Demetrius started laughing and said that he has nothing against guys who do everything to win, and he also considers himself one of those. After that, his eyes lit up and he began to laugh because all this is good until a certain point, as long as they follow the rules. Ambushing people entering the gate was strictly prohibited in the rules of war in the dungeon, 
so he hit him hard with his fist and said that next time they would adhere to the rules, but only in another life. And just a second later, there was a huge explosion, which should have been expected. Demetrius and his friend watched the situation unfold and enjoyed the process. Odysseus bowed his head and said that rules are rules that should not be broken, even though someone does not even follow the orders of Olympus and, moreover, beat Theseus half to death. So it seems to him that Demetrius should say the same words to himself. Demetrius laughed and said that he didn't see a problem with it, but that Dark Horse really turned out to be a very funny guy. Odysseus was very surprised, so he didn't even know how to evaluate this statement. The thing is that in front of them stood a large army of hunters who were watching them closely. There were a lot of them, so it was necessary to deal with everyone, since none of them were good-natured and wanted blood. Demetrius also got angry and was ready to fight further. But he didn't understand who these people were. Were they really the guy's accomplices? Apparently no one here is so inflamed. He caught the courage and continued to laugh ominously because he was really starting to like it all. A second later, they were no longer alive. Odysseus looked at the situation and realized that Hercules had a truly terrible hobby. Maybe at least for the sake of decency, he will use a weapon. After all, he is far from being a fighter. And Odysseus actually didn't like Demetrius, not only because he was incredibly strong. Demetrius looked at him and said that in order to fully enjoy the hunt, the guy must first feel how the bones crunch, but such a weakling like him cannot understand this. In fact, Demetrius is not just crazy, but a real warrior, in whose veins flows an endless thirst for battle and victories. So enter into battle, he instantly becomes a maniac killer, so he meets every fight with a smile and a special mood. We can say that Odysseus was experiencing a collision between Demetrius and the Dark Horse, who right now with his girlfriend were moving in a certain direction. The girl was really surprised because she didn't understand what this incredible magical power was. It looks like they are now in the boss's chambers. Lee Jun waved his hand and greeted everyone opposite. He said that there are hunters there, but they are also not enemies to them because he does not feel the bloodlust in the air. The guy stood opposite them and slowly watched the situation unfold, analyzing what would happen next. The girl looked at him and asked if Lee Jun was the dark horse that everyone was talking about. Emen also said that they have been waiting for him for a very long time. Lee was very surprised because what are they talking about and what does their phrase mean in which they say that they have been waiting for him for a long time? The Egyptian with the mohawk was very surprised, so he asked if Lee Jun had not sent Asgard. He said that this is correct information and everything is correct. After these words, they decided to retreat a little and confer, since they knew what they needed to do. After this, the Egyptian came closer to him and decided to introduce himself, saying that his name was Inev, who came from the lands of the Nile. They were all waiting for Lee Jun to provide assistance, but as he had already noticed, the guy was not aware of the matter at all because it had long been decided that this battle for the dungeons would end in the victory of Asgard. This surprised him very much because the Egyptian Nile is a world guild like Asgard and Olympus. He doesn't know if this whole problem arose through the fault of Olympus, but everything became much more complicated with his appearance here, so he told us that they were waiting for him here in order to guarantee his victory. So the reason why Zheng Yangsu won this war was precisely this. Inim said that they would help him, so he needed to go and quickly destroy the boss, since it would be difficult for the two of them to fight him. But Lee Jun decided to surprise them, as he refused, which they clearly did not expect, because first of all he wanted to deal with Demetrius. All the hunters were shocked by this decision, since no one had said anything like this before. Enam and her friend didn't know how to react to this, but Lee Jun decided to explain that defeating the boss doesn't mean anything, because if he does it, it will only mean one thing that he is nothing more than a puppet in the hands of Odin, who blindly follows his orders. The girl was also shocked because she didn't understand why everyone was so surprised. It seems that the victory of Asgard in this war was initially predetermined by them, so their plans included victory, protection of the treasury, help in defeating the boss, so the girl immediately had a logical question after these words. Is it possible to avoid the battle with Demetrius and defeat the boss? because this is a guaranteed path to victory in this war. Lee Jun thought about it and said that it was true, but the whole point is that they were surprised that he decided to deal with Demetrius, which was not at all part of their plans. 
So his girlfriend smiled and said that she would be with him until the end, but only if he had a plan that she would follow. The guy smiled because he liked this attitude. Lee Jun thanked her for being truly reliable. Suddenly, everyone started raising their hands and shouting that they were leaving, greatly surprising the guys. One by one, the hunters left their places. Each of them just wanted to sit on the sidelines, as they were not going to get hurt in the battle with Demetrius for no reason. They started swearing and shouting why Asgard sent such an idiot, so they need to quickly get out of the gate. Enum approached the guy and said, This boss is a lion, something like those they saw earlier, but much larger and stronger, so he will not fight with Demetrius, but at least share information about the enemy with him. The girl also said that she was ready to stay away, just like the other participants. John smiled and said that they were back to where they started. But the guy said that now it doesn't matter at all, so they need to move on. The girl asked the Egyptian what he thought about this whole situation. Inim thought about it and said that it would be really very difficult. But looking back at what he had already experienced, this guy is really very strong. He is a rising star in Korea who appeared out of nowhere and was able to clear out the special goalkeepers of the Rhine River, defeating the main boss. He was also able to single-handedly defeat the entire guild of the Army of the North, which was quite strong. He is also very close to Heimdall, a key figure in Asgard, and all it took was a fleeting glance from him to get Odin interested in him. The girl was shocked by such information, so she refused to believe it, but the guy continued to talk because if you evaluate his potential, then he is in no way inferior to the leaders of shadow organizations. Therefore, everyone stood aside in order to more accurately assess his abilities because everyone was interested in what kind of battle they would see in the show between a dark horse standing face to face with an invincible hero named Demetrius. It is because of this that he and all the other hunters sit on the sidelines while the guy and girl are already going to their colleague and trying to start battles with him. This time they will have to confront the real Catalan himself, and the level of their skills has decreased slightly under his pressure. Lee Jun panicked a little, but was still able to pull himself together, after which the resistance was successful and his skills were again at the required level. After which he immediately jumped and prepared for battle. He started shouting to the girl, saying that he would take the left flank, so John needed to focus on the right, but it was very important not to forget to save his strength. She understood everything and was ready to carry out this order. Hyun Mu also said that he will have their backs. While Lee Jun was distracting Catalan on the left flank, the girl was already near his head and was preparing to strike. The animal clearly did not expect such a turn of events, because the girl was able to hit him without any problems. But the worst thing happened after that, because Catalan could not leave this unanswered. So he swung his paw and hit John with all his might. She was shocked by the blow she received and flew several meters away. And while Leo was attacking the girl, Lee Jun rushed into battle and directed all his strength at him. Now he was the main target for the animal. But his talisman also came to the aid of the guy, who also decided to help him. Hyun Mu used his powers to direct the attack towards the boss's eye, which shocked him greatly. In fact, this action shocked not only Leo, but also all the other team members. The guy understood that now the boss was not their main goal, so he asked the girl not to strain too much because the second phase would soon begin, at the beginning of which Demetrius would immediately appear. A huge explosion occurred very quickly. And this meant only one thing. Demetrius was already approaching, since many hunters were already unconscious. Demetrius clenched his hand into a fist and was extremely aggressive. He grabbed the guy by the neck and said that more and more he continues to meet his people in search of the flame of that same guy. After which, with enormous force, he threw the hunter out of his hands and sent him into a tree, but Odysseus asked him to be calmer, because the battle that Demetrius was so looking forward to would begin soon anyway. But he didn't want to listen to him, so he ordered him to shut up immediately. Odysseus watched the situation unfold and did not understand whether he had really gone crazy due to bloodlust. In exchange for such terrifying power, the thirst for blood consumes him with each new kill. Could it be that Lee Jun knew about this feature of Demetrius, and therefore left these guys to him? No, Odysseus refused to believe it. Since no one knew about it even in Olympus, this secret was hidden even from the eyes of Odin from Asgard. Therefore, it was extremely important for the guy to communicate with his friend, which is what he tried to do. 
Hercules's eyes really glowed red, he was already furious. But after the words of his comrade, he was still able to return control to his own hands. After that, he looked at him and asked what he wanted from him. Odysseus was worried about only one question. Was he sure that he could continue to remain sane? This question angered Demetrius a little, because he had already told him not to worry about this, because he had become stronger, so he would no longer lose his head in bloodlust. After that, they saw Lee Jun fighting a lion in the fog. Demetrius was very happy because now their main dish had arrived. Odysseus also revealed that he is one of the heroes supported by Olympus, and he is also one of the few S-class hunters in the world. So he smiled and said that he believed in him, so he wished Demetrius good luck. At this moment, Leo began to stop in his place and analyze the situation. This really surprised the guys because they couldn't understand why Catalan wasn't moving. Had they really succeeded? Li Jun said it looks like it. A huge explosive ball formed around them, around which a huge amount of flame appeared. The Atalan began to burn and seemed to be preparing to summon its assistance. Immediately after this, they began to run towards him. The Egyptians were shocked as the two of them were able to overcome the first stage of the boss, and in response to Catalan's demonic energy, the Catalan lions began to surround him. Usually people try to deal as much damage to the boss as possible while he is in another phase and stunned. So why did they stop attacking? John reported that she feels this demonic force in all her bones. Is this really normal? Are they doing everything right? Lee Jun looked at what was happening and told the girl not to worry. He realized that the same protagonist had come to them just in time. Demetrius was already approaching and was very glad to see such a meeting. Upon landing, he traditionally created a huge blast wave. As soon as he stood on the ground, he began to look around and said that everything looked pretty fun, since now they had begun the transition to the next phase. But he also began to scold his comrade for being inactive. But Odysseus could not keep up with him, so he asked him to wait. After this, a sharp jump was made in their direction. The Catalan lion attacked with great anger towards Demetrius, who stood with his back to him. But he did not react to him at all since it was too easy for him, so he stopped him with a simple blow of his hand. After this, the animal left this world forever. Lee Jun was very surprised by this turn of events, because he could not even imagine that they were so strong. The boss didn't like it either, so he watched the situation unfold and became increasingly angry. Demetrius looked at the guy and realized that now it was his turn, but he did not at all expect that he would start running away again, which shocked him very much. He continued to shout towards them, asking why they were doing this, while a huge Catalan boss stood behind him. John and the guy ran as fast as they could since they had to get away before the battle started. Demetrius realized that they had just lured him into a trap, so he became very angry, after which he got ready and also began to run. Leo ran immediately after him, sparing no effort and really wanted to avenge his subordinates. The girl told the guy that Demetrius was right on their tail, but she still didn't understand why Catalan wasn't attacking him. Li Jun said that the whole point is that only they cause damage to him, but soon he will begin to damage the demonic energy to all the enemies around him, so he just needs to buy some time. The hunters were shocked because they had never seen anything like this before. Is this really what they are thinking about right now? The lion continued to run after our heroes, who were already approaching a huge army of surprised hunters. The Catalan boss was extremely angry and strong. He needed to throw out all his negative energy. Therefore, he destroyed absolutely everything in his path. His first victims were the hunters to whom our heroes ran. Leo looked at each of them and analyzed. They all irritated him very much, so he began to growl and was ready to tear apart anyone who stood in his way. He was not alone, but immediately called several more of his subordinates for help. The hunters were very scared because they understood that these were monsters, and their boss completely succumbed to demonic energy and lost his mind. The lion was very angry and did not want to listen to spare any of them since they snuck into his territory. So he swung his paw and destroyed everything that came under it. Demetrius was already ready to fight him because he was not used to running away and there was no other way out. Therefore, he sharply swung his hand and tried to give a tough rebuff to his opponent. The complexity of the fight made his eyes light up and he became more and more interested in fighting. Well, Li Jun and her friend just sat on the mountain and watched the process taking place because they managed to gain a little time thanks to Demetrius, but only for a moment. The guy took out his bottle of red liquid. 
John decided to ask him what it was in his hands. He decided not to reveal all the secrets yet, so he said that this was indeed a secret weapon. After that, he poured the entire contents of the bottle onto his spear, after which it would become much stronger for a short moment. The spear began to glow and received the necessary power from this bottle. Li Jun was very surprised because the dragon bloodstone also absorbed the red ore. The thing is that Li Jun did not know what effect would follow from absorbing the red ore if he was absorbed by the dragon bloodstone, so he took his magic weapon and got ready. John was surprised because it really looked very dangerous. There were no other options, so the guy was absolutely sure that this was their only chance. Catalan, meanwhile, was fighting and was ready to destroy everything in his path. This time it would be Demetrius. He directed all his power at him because he dared to resist him. Well, Demetrius enjoyed the process of the fight more and more and got high. When they got closer, one could easily see two different forces between them, each of which had enormous potential. Demetrius hit Catalan very well, which shocked him. Li Jun understood that now this is their great opportunity that cannot be missed, so they need to act right now. Demetrius was smiling and very happy, so he asked how they appreciated his special skill called Bestial Roar. He then tensed up as he saw unusual activity in his field of vision. He turned around and was very frightened, as a weapon was flying at him at great speed, which he could not fight off or dodge. Therefore Odysseus absolutely unexpectedly came running to his aid, waved his weapon, and struck with all his might. From such a blow the spear flew back. Odysseus looked at Demetrius and said that he had warned him before that he needed to acquire weapons, didn't he? After this incident, Demetrius realized everything and he was even embarrassed that Odysseus was teaching him how to live correctly. But still, he will now try to prevent such mistakes. This situation made Odysseus smile and he felt very pleased that he was right at least once. But this was not the main problem. What was more important was that the dark horse's spear looked somehow different. Quite menacing, apparently, it had a similar effect applied to it, like Demetrius's bestial roar. Demetrius looked at the guy and said that someone like that would never be able to even come close to touching him, since for him, she was nothing more than an annoying mosquito. So he smiled and said that this time he would ask him to deal with this mascara while he dealt with the real enemy. After this, Hercules jumped back and ran to fight the lion, leaving Odysseus alone with Lee June and his girlfriend. He was visibly scared, since without Demetrius he is really nothing. It seemed to him that someone was looking down on him. John was already standing there, holding a weapon in her hands and observing the situation, preparing to enter into battle as soon as necessary. But she was very surprised by his words, so she asked what he was talking about. After which she immediately rushed into battle with him to resolve all issues during the fight. John's eyes were burning, she was ready to destroy Odysseus. Very quickly a quarrel began between them. Odysseus was also not an easy opponent, so he swung his weapon and also began to strike at the girl, which she skillfully dodged. After this, Odysseus decided to make the strongest possible blow, which he had been training for a very long time. But the girl took out her weapon and swung it, using it as a real shield. Not everyone could defeat such a fighting girl. Therefore, the entire blow of Odysseus fell on her sword. Odysseus was very surprised, because the girl concentrated a huge amount of chi energy at such a small distance, so he concluded that she still did not have enough experience. After that, he smiled and went on the attack with his sword, realizing that he was much stronger and now John would be finished. But absolutely unexpectedly, Hyun Mu appeared in front of him and began to attack him with all his might. Odysseus was shocked, but still his strength was not as strong as it could have been, so he was just a little uncomfortable and had to use his hand to deflect the blow. John was also very angry and her eyes were burning, so she started screaming. A second later, there was a huge explosion in the sky behind which absolutely nothing was visible, only purple flashes. They passed very quickly and were replaced by a smoke curtain behind which now nothing was clearly visible. Odysseus stood in bewilderment because he didn't understand whether the girl had really run away now. He couldn't understand why she did this, because she could easily have used this opportunity to pierce him. But why did she hit the ground? Odysseus wondered because this is not logical at all, and also why the skull also shot this sticky red thing at him. Is this really what he is thinking about? Anger began to control his mind, so Odysseus clenched his hand into a fist in rage. 
It did not last long because almost instantly he was surrounded by a lot of monsters, so he realized that the talisman from the skull had poured monster pheromones onto him. This surprised the guy very much, because he could not even think that they used the potion only to turn the hunt into this path and catch him. Meanwhile, Hercules fought on equal terms with the huge Catalan. Lee Jun was very surprised because he couldn't understand how this was possible and was very upset about it. The guy calmly rushed into battle against the huge Catalan, which no one could have predicted. Jun began to worry, because how does he manage to resist a huge Catalan overflowing with demonic energy? Is this really possible? This frightened him very much because he could not even imagine how strong his opponent was, so he and the girl watched what was happening. Li Jun looked at her and smiled, saying that she successfully dealt with Odysseus. She smiled and said that it was all thanks to Hyun Mu, who helped her a lot. But there was no time to rejoice at all, since she needed to finish before Odysseus returned, which she also understood. The fight was in full swing, it was truly scary to watch. Odysseus laughed and enjoyed the whole process, as he felt great about his body and enjoyed the process of the fight. His eyes were burning and full of rage. Lee Young understood that the process had begun, but he was very surprised that apparently Odysseus was still able to control himself, but he needed to be sure that he would soon lose control. Lee Jun understood that everything had gone too far, so he asked the girl to perhaps stop the Catalan, and he was ready to take on Demetrius. Jun realized that there was no point in killing him, because it would only be enough to strike him while he was in this state, so he needed to start quickly. He looked at Demetrius, who was skillfully fighting his opponent. He skillfully repelled all attacks and truly demonstrated all his capabilities, which undoubtedly surprised. It was funny to him that the Catalan could not really oppose him with anything. Therefore, an explosion occurred from a strong blow. Demetrius did not stop and rushed further into the attack, demonstrating his strength. Then he jumped towards the explosion and made it much, much bigger. But he could not remain unnoticed for long, so his gaze abruptly switched to another object, which definitely shocked him. He stopped and began to stand still, waiting for what would happen next. Demetrius saw the guy and realized that now he would have to fight this dark horse. Lee Jun stood opposite him and looked very confident. He started laughing with a sinister smile, asking why doesn't Demetrius play with him now? He grabbed his neck and said that he had just started fighting with another opponent. But there was nowhere to go. This challenge seemed much more interesting to him, so Demetrius's eyes lit up and he was ready to fight. Lee Jun prepared himself and activated his shield, creating a protective field and he was also really very happy, because right now everything was really going exactly as he had planned. Demetrius started laughing at the guy because it really was a stupid idea. Did he really think that he could protect himself from him if he filled his shield with mana? Therefore he immediately rushed into battle, saying that he would let him feel how stupid an idea it was. The people around were shocked by the guy's act, because did he really know nothing about the power of Demetrius? Jun has collected a huge amount of mana in his shield, but it will be difficult to block Demetrius' special move where he hits like a rhinoceros. Demetrius flew with all his might towards the guy, trying to deliver his signature blow as quickly as possible. And now his hand hit the guy's shield with tremendous force. He broke through it completely and was very surprised. He was shocked and incomprehensible because how could this happen, since Lee Jun is not here at all? At this moment, a red flash flashed through his eyes, making him nervous. Lee Jun was waiting for Demetrius to fall into his trap, so he immediately attacked him from behind, trying to cause him maximum damage. Lee Jun was very angry and also nervous because he had no room for error at all. Demetrius felt the moment when the guy's spear entered him and was very shocked, after which he looked in his direction with complete misunderstanding. He swung his hand and hit it sharply. The blow was strong enough that it noticeably hit Lee Jun and shocked him. As a result, he flew several tens of meters away from such a simple blow. Demetrius laughed and held onto his shoulder. Was the guy really thinking of tricking him by just filling his shield with mana? It seems that this really was a big mistake, because until recently I thought that since Jun was hitting from the back, then the spear would stick into his only place that was not covered with muscles, the anus. Please like and subscribe if you do too. Demetrius continued to laugh there for a while and kept saying that Lee Jun really seems to be a dark horse. And the guy watched the situation unfold and was very shocked, because the damage he caused was truly unimaginable. 
He started laughing because everything seemed to be going according to his plan, so he asked Demetrius how he was feeling. It was also funny for him to communicate with the guy, because what did he think he was doing just by scratching him? Moreover, he did not even pay attention to this wound, which should heal on its own. But after these words, something shocked him and his head began to spin. He looked towards his wound and was very scared because could it really be poison? Li Jun rejoiced and looked in his direction and also replied that it was not poison, as he thought, because this ore has two names. The first is emancipation, and the second is real madness, so it's easy to guess what's happening to Demetrius now. This is a red ore that gives regular ogre strength that surpasses bosses. It was its enormous capabilities that forced man to study this ore. After all, even the simplest animals with its help can turn into monsters, and monsters acquire the strength that is comparable to bosses, which is why it acquired its first name, Ore of Liberation. It didn't take long for scientists to start doing their experiments on hunters. The red ore exponentially enhanced the hunter's potential, turning them into superhumans. But since people were literally sliding towards death from madness, its use was soon completely prohibited. Because of this, Red Ore received another name, Madness Ore. A huge earthquake formed on the battlefield, literally splitting the earth between his feet. And the dust that appeared because of this made it much more difficult to see. Li Jun was shocked. As this is truly an unimaginable force, it feels like the entire mountain is walking along with Catalan. A guy approached him and started screaming and asking what the Dark Horse just did. It was George with whom John was fighting. He clearly wanted revenge, as he stood with a sword in his hands and prepared for battle. So Li Jun glanced at him and said that as soon as he came closer, he would die immediately. Odysseus began to scream and held his weapon even tighter in his hands, because even if so, then such is his fate. He jumped up and ran forward with great speed. Odysseus headed at high speed towards Demetrius. Therefore, Li Jun also jumped up and ran towards them. He understood that it looked like it would happen again, just like in the future. The thing is that in the future, Odysseus fled to Demetrius, who had lost his mind, and Odysseus, in the hope of stopping him, died at his own hands. The flames continued to burn, as did the current situation. Odysseus jumped towards Demetrius and defended himself with his sword from his fiery attacks. Li Jun also attacked Odysseus, trying to calm him down and reason with him. But George was determined, so he ordered the guy to go away, because while Demetrius had lost his mind and had just entered this state, he could still help him and bring him to his senses. Li Jun tried to convince him, because even if he does it, he still won't be able to help since now it's impossible. They started fighting since Jun couldn't let him die like that. He looked at Odysseus and informed him that he had a plan. These words surprised him and made him stop. He couldn't believe it, so he wanted to find out more about it. They stopped fighting and began dialogue. Odysseus said that he could not trust the guy, but still he was ready to listen to him, so he decided to clarify what exactly their plan was. Li Jun said that he would only need five minutes, so they need to hold Demetrius for that time. Five minutes? Does he seriously think he can hold it for five minutes when his mind is completely resolved? Demetrius had already moved and rushed into battle. Seeing this, Li Jun immediately called Zhang Ying Chang for help. Odysseus also jumped away from his place because Demetrius first attacked him, his best friend. The animal rushed to confront the guy, so they began to get closer. At the moment of impact, a huge blast wave of very large sizes was formed. Li Jun watched what was happening and realized that Zhang Ying Chang was doing a good job of luring them out. Besides, Catalan was now on their side, so they would definitely be able to contain Demetrius. Odysseus was shocked because he had absolutely no idea what the guy was up to. He grabbed his sword, and he was ready to do what he was told, because it didn't seem like he had any other choice. Li Jun said that the time limit for Red Ore is only five minutes, so they need to hold out for this period of time, after which Demetrius will come to his senses. And in this case, the winner of this war will be Li Jun. The hunters watched what happened and did not understand what this monstrous demonic energy was. One of them noted that it clearly did not come from the second phase of Catalan. What he saw scared him very much, but there was nowhere to go. It was Hercules who was moving straight towards them with great speed and fury. Odysseus came to their aid and entered into battle with his friend. He jumped back and swung his sword. This caused an explosion as Odysseus used all his strength to stop it. But this, of course, is not enough, since no one can stop Demetrius in a rage alone. 
Therefore, he used his fiery power and threw back his comrade with great force, trying to destroy him. At that moment, John ran up to Hercules and also joined the fight. She swung her sword and also put all her strength into the blow. But it seems Demetrius was completely ready for this. He again swung his hand in the direction from which the blow came to him, but almost nothing was visible behind the smoke. People watched what was happening and could not believe it. Was Odysseus really fighting Demetrius there? This is incredible because he is an absolute monster. Other hunters refused to even be here, let alone go into battle, since they did not want to die here at all. The girl asked, and didn't understand how they got to the point where the war in the dungeon turned into such a battle, so she looked at Inev and asked what he was planning to do. He said that it was all red ore, which greatly shocked the girl. Therefore, he decided to explain, saying that the situation was very unusual. It seemed that Red Ore was somehow involved in the battle and an urgent need to intervene. At this moment, Hercules completely destroyed Catalan, which was really very scary and strange at the same time. It was very difficult for the animal to resist such a strong opponent, especially when he was in madness mode. Hercules was very angry, as he lost his mind and destroyed almost everyone in his path. That is why he ran to John and hit her very hard in the stomach, but she managed to take out her weapon and put up protection. But this didn't really help, since the force of his blow was really very strong, so the girl flew away at great speed tens of meters. It was clear that it was really very difficult for her to resist such a strong opponent, but there was no choice. At this moment, Odysseus also jumped into battle because he really wanted his comrade to finally come to his senses, so he waved his sword and ordered him to do it. Demetrius stood and simply waited for someone to attack him again in order to continue the fight without rest. He raised his hand again, preparing to meet the blow of Odysseus, who was already very close to him. A second later, their powers merged with each other and the sword hit the right place. Well, absolutely unexpectedly, some kind of black magic happened, which began to suck Odysseus's hand and entire body into itself. Demetrius continued to fight, and as a result of the collision, a huge blue explosion occurred, which also threw Odysseus an undetermined distance back. The image of the lion appeared again, which tells us that Demetrius has just received his power, so in a state of madness he is a real monster. The explosions from such a fight were truly impressive. Demetrius continued to attack everyone, regardless of whether he had friends or not, so another player immediately joined in this fight. It was the same Li Jun who, at the epicenter of the battle, jumped and took the wounded Odysseus, who lost consciousness from such a collision. After that, he put it on the ground and understood that now they would defend themselves without him. Odysseus looked at the guy and asked how long these long-awaited five minutes would last. Li Jun looked at him and really didn't know what to answer, because experiments absolutely showed that the maximum limit of action of red ore lasts only five minutes. But why is this monster still not exhausted? Suddenly the guy got very scared because he heard approaching steps. It was the same Demetrius who flew at them with great speed, and since Lee Jun and Odysseus stood nearby, Jun quickly took his weapon and prepared for battle, because he understood that he would now have to defend himself for two, since Odysseus had not yet ready to fight after a state of shock. A water rampage was instantly cast on Demetrius, a spell that was supposed to stop him at least for a while. These were the same people who understood that Red Ore was present in the battle and wanted to help. Without wasting any time, John quickly ran to his friend and asked how she was feeling because she also received significant damage from Demetrius. But John told him that he was completely fine, so there was absolutely no need to worry. It looks like Zhang Ying Chang won't last long, so he needs help. The guy grabbed his weapon and really started to get a little upset, because if he had pulled just a little harder, this wouldn't have happened. Suddenly, his eyes lit up because the blood absorbed by the dragon bloodstone reversed its flow, so regeneration started at 1%. This really made Li Jun feel a little uncomfortable, so he started holding his mouth to avoid vomiting. The girl looked at the guy and really didn't understand whether everything was okay with him, because he didn't look very good at all. At this point, regeneration continued and had already increased by as much as 2%. The guy's hand began to emit a strong red radiation, which greatly surprised his girlfriend. Lee Jun's eyes actually changed and filled with rage. So he waved his hands and started screaming. The girl panicked and therefore quickly ran to his aid, trying to somehow bring him to his senses. 
A huge smoke curtain formed around the guy, which also seemed to trigger the process of madness in him. Oh, my friend and I were very shocked, because they couldn't believe it. Was he really in the same condition as Demetrius? Meanwhile, the guy's regeneration had already increased by 2%, and he just stood there with huge red eyes, getting ready to go into battle. But still, he had not yet lost his mind, so he tried to fight it and think adequately, trying to understand whether five minutes had already passed. Why then is Demetrius still not freed from his madness? Meanwhile, some kind of magic began to form over Demetrius. It seemed that he began to lose his power. Li Jun watched what was happening and tried to understand what kind of beautiful flow of mana he had. So he leaned down as if preparing for a low start. And I wanted to fill my legs with it. Immediately after this, he took his weapon and rushed into battle. The girl was shocked, so she started screaming at the guy, trying to reason with him. But it already seemed dangerous because Li Jun began to fight with the huge catalog that was on his side. There was a real fight between them. Everything was on fire, and Li Jun was ready to destroy it. His eyes burned and his strength increased tenfold. It was clear that he was now much stronger than the same Demetrius. Therefore, he waved his hand and directed all his strength to one point. After that, everything was on fire and absolutely nothing could be seen. The explosions at the sight of their collision were simply terrible, because no one expected that the red ore would affect two people at once. As he lies, he emerged victorious from this fire, and also increased his level by killing a friend who fought on their side, Catalan. He continued to stand with red eyes and noticed that the words of his patron were not delivered to him. His hands and weapons began to gradually fill with red, as if they were filled with blood. This also began to spread through his veins with great speed, because because of such an act, his body began to weaken due to demonic energy, so the process of its destruction began. He began to scream as his rage began to take control of him, but he needed to get rid of the demonic energy as soon as possible. It was an unimaginable and huge flame, and it burst out of Li Jun's body and spread with such force as if it was swallowing the entire Catalan mountain. A huge black hole formed, but with some kind of magical blue outline, it evoked fear and frightened everyone around, including Li Jun, because he understood that terrible things were happening, but could no longer control himself. The guys who were nearby were very scared because they felt very unwell. Is it possible that these flames are draining all their mana? But how can this be? They started screaming in panic, trying to understand what was happening here. But no one knew the answer to this question. The flame ignited and another fight began again. After Catalan, Li Jun decided to attack Demetrius and fight him with his strength, which he really had a lot of now. Demetrius, as always, swung his hand, after which he prepared to strike the guy with his powerful fist. Li Jun also did not lag behind, so he simply prepared to meet him without any emotions, as he was completely confident in his abilities. A second later, there was an explosion, which is not at all surprising. After their collision, a large cloud of smoke appeared, behind which again nothing was visible. Demetrius was shocked and began to emerge from the smokescreen with his hand torn off, with which he tried to stab the guy. Odysseus was shocked, so he began to shout towards his comrade, as he was very worried about him. He asked the guy to pay attention to his hand, which was torn off as a result of the explosion, but he was absolutely calm. Demetrius used his ability to regenerate and very quickly grew his own arm, preparing to fight again. Odysseus was shocked, because his body regenerates itself, using a lot of volumes of mana, so it became scary for him to realize that if Demetrius is now in this state, then what is happening right now with the dark horse? John was worried about him, so she screamed in his direction, trying to reason with him, but it was completely in vain, since the guy didn't hear anything, just like Demetrius. He was very angry and was willing to fight to the end no matter what, so he also generated a huge flow of mana to continue the battle and recover from damage. Odysseus didn't understand why all this happened, so he wondered if the same blue flame that covered all the gates could be the main reason. All this despite the fact that his wounds are much deeper, but Li Jun regenerates much faster than Demetrius. Hercules was very angry and was ready to continue the battle to avenge his lost hand, so his rampage only intensified. Therefore, without hesitation, he immediately rushed into battle. Jun also did not want to give in, so he did the same, preparing to meet his opponent. 
and so Demetrius again prepared his hand and waited for Li Jun to move closer to him. Odysseus was shocked, because does he really want to take advantage of the beast's rampage despite the fact that his arm has not yet fully recovered? But there was nowhere to go, and Demetrius had completely different plans for this, so without thinking twice, he immediately began to complete the task. His arm was really not ready for such a load, so he needed a little time. But the situation was very critical, because Li Jun also did not wait, and immediately rushed into battle, having already prepared his attack. Therefore, Demetrius had no choice but to simply prepare and wait for the approach of a large explosive ball along with Li Jun, which he created. But it seemed that Demetrius was ready for this, because with every second a wider smile appeared on his face. He was waiting for the guy to approach so he could lure him into his trap. Li Jun was also very aggressive and serious, so he was not at all ready to agree to a peaceful solution to the conflict. And then again a huge blast wave appeared as a result of their collision. Only this time it was already tens larger than the previous one, which evoked fear. Odysseus understood that right now there was a weapon near him that he could pick up and join the battle to help his friend. He couldn't believe it. Was everything really happening before his eyes now? Enev also couldn't believe his eyes. Had the Dark Horse really won? All they saw in the smoke was Li Jun destroying the enemy with his weapon. Demetrius was also shocked, because such an outcome of events was also not part of his plans. Well, Jun didn't play for a long time, so he kicked him with great force, pushing him away from his weapon. After such blows, Demetrius received critical damage and closed his eyes. He fell to his knees and looked towards the guy. Li Jun understood that in this battle he emerged as a real winner and all power was in his hands right now. So he swung his weapon towards Demetrius, who was kneeling and bowing his head as a sign of respect and that he had lost this battle. But Odysseus was not at all happy with this outcome of the event, so he rushed to the rescue because he wanted his friend to be alive. But from this moment on, Li Jun will cease to exist anyway, since the red ore affected the dragon bloodstone. Now the instincts of survival and the desire to kill, as well as the blood of the monsters he had been hunting all this time, as well as the blood of Catalan, mixed with his demonic energy, forming a hybrid crystal. Just like the red ore test subjects that were discussed earlier, so Li Jun will throw out everything that is inside him and then die. Therefore he swung his weapon and prepared to destroy Demetrius, who stood and waited for this moment. But suddenly a blue flame appeared in the sky which was directed towards them, and a girl suddenly appeared in front of Demetrius and came to his defense. She was very serious and looked at Li Jun, who wanted to destroy his opponent. The force of his spear was not enough to push the girl away and somehow fight her. She glanced at Li Jun and ordered him to kneel down and calm down. Everything in his mind suddenly turned upside down, and he could not believe his eyes, because changes really began to happen to him. Therefore, Li Jun fell to his knees and began to come to his senses, bowing his head in front of her. This greatly surprised John, who was watching the entire process. What can I say? Absolutely everyone was shocked by this result of the fight, so they watched the situation with interest. Odysseus bowed his head as a sign of respect and said that it was an honor for him to see Athena here. She was very upset because she could not understand why they were having such a conflict, and now she is also in debt to Zeus because of them. But there are even more important things. Athena looked at the guy and asked who he was. Odysseus answered her with fear that this man was a real dark horse. And Li Jun at that moment continued to sit on his knees and became increasingly charged with mana and rage. Athena was really very shocked because she did not expect such behavior. She couldn't even think that the reason for all these changes inside was just one person. And also when you think that he managed to push through her shield, it was really impressive. Li Jun engulfed the entire Catalan mountain and also began to steal the mana of all flora and fauna using the sinister flame. She innocently thought that this newcomer was simply lucky, as a result of which he was taken to Asgard, but who would have thought that he could defeat the Herculean evil spirits. After that, her eyes lit up and she really began to understand that this guy was very dangerous. So she made a weapon and realized that she would end it right then and there. Athena became a real monster who was ready to carry out her own orders. But suddenly she calmed down as people from the side started shouting and ordering her to stop. It was a bald guy who followed her. She glanced at him and then asked what he forgot in such a place. He was aggressive, so he said that he had exactly the same question for her. Did he really follow her lightning? 
but Hen stood up to protect our hero and did not allow Athena to do anything to him. This made her very angry, so she started screaming and ordering her to leave as Lee Jun should die right now. Hen began to speak out more aggressively, so if the girl wants to kill him, then she will have to deal with him first, and he will regard her behavior as a declaration of war on Asgard. Athena was very shocked by these words. Declarations of war? Is this guy really that important to you? She thought that there was not a single thing in the world that could offend him. But the guy still continued to defend Lee Jun. Athena was approached by an Egyptian who asked her permission to intervene. She looked at him and said that she already knew about him. He bowed his head in front of her as he was incredibly honored that she had heard about him. Therefore, he looked at her with his gaze, after which he said that Neil was asking her for the protection of the dark horse. Such expressions shocked her even more, because she did not expect to hear such things from him. So he continued, she must know this herself, but this is the eye of Osiris. It proves his right to represent Neil's wish, so he hopes that she will guarantee this request, after which the fallen angel also blessed Li Jun and cleansed him of demonic power. He spent the next day in his room. John was sitting on his favorite chair, and she was next to him the whole day as I was very worried. Suddenly the guy moved, which forced her to wake up and go analyze the situation. When John approached him, she was very happy that Lee Jun had come to his senses. Tears began to appear in her eyes, because it was real happiness that the guy returned her to normal life. Lee Jun looked at her and realized that now it was still difficult for him to speak, because his vocal cords were not working. But the girl calmed him down, saying that now his ligaments were in a terrible state, so she would now call someone for help. A very interesting specimen hung above the doors. Lee Jun immediately drew attention to it because it was a round shield and two balls. Could these really be the knights of the round table? In fact, not all powerful hunters create organizations in order to control the world of truth, because there were many secretly created organizations with nobler ideals, and the knights of the round table were one of them. He lay there and realized that the knights simply hid their heads and acted from the shadows. And when England was on the verge of destruction, even with such significant power in their hands, they did nothing to change the course of events. The guy just lay there and realized that his body was completely destroyed, his ligaments did not work, and his legs did not move. He wanted to use Hyun Mu on his hand. But his familiar was sleeping very soundly, so the guy realized that now there was nothing that he could need. He lay on his bed and looked at his statistics because his level had dropped to almost 50, but fortunately his dropped statistics were just a temporary effect from the red ore, but still he could not speak yet. Lee Jun understood that he needed to continue to live because he had finally acquired skills that were not inferior in strength to unique ones, and he also hoped that in the future he would continue to fight shoulder to shoulder with the fallen angel. Hen came to him and decided to ask how he was feeling. He smiled and said that he had already heard that his body was decomposing under the influence of demonic energy. This is indeed a rare case, so there are no methods of treatment or rehabilitation as such. But looking at his condition, he does not think that there is any reason to worry at all. The guy also smiled and thanked him for his support, and he also said that thanks to the help of a fallen angel, he has the ability to get rid of demonic energy. The bald man smiled and told him to give Raval some time to work on his recovery, after which he would take him for a more detailed conversation. Meanwhile, the court hearing began, to which the bald man immediately went. Athena made accusations that Lee Jun's strength is too dangerous and anomalous, so Olympus is requesting research into his skills. Asgard sees no reason to reveal the abilities of any of its hunters. Instead, do they think that Olympus should just explain itself for what happened back? Didn't Olympus terminate the secret agreements between them and Asgard? Asgard had to gain victory in the Battle of the Dungeons, and accordingly, the hunters had to act in the following manner. If they had not known in advance that Hercules would break all the agreements, then they would not have sent Lee Jun there. In such a situation, their hunter simply did everything that was required of him. That is why he sees no particular reason to explain anything here, but on the contrary, he hopes that Olympus will explain all his actions. Athena tilted her head and said that the power that Lee Jun has is very dangerous. It covered the entire area inside the gate with blue flames and absorbed the mana of other hunters. They had never encountered anything like this before. 
That is why she demands that the Dark Horse be given to them for research. Otherwise, Olympus is ready to go to war against Asgard. Hen was very surprised by such a statement. At this moment, it was really very important for him to answer correctly. So he began to summarize again, because he also understood that absorbing the mana of other hunters using flames was dangerous. But this was an ability that they also knew nothing about before. However, don't they think that hunters themselves pose a danger? Everyone at the meeting was very surprised by this turn of events, so they continued to listen carefully. And he continued, saying that until the moment all this appeared, they were unknown people, and the abilities of hunters to this day inspire horror and danger in everyone. Therefore, Olympus trying to start a war over such an issue are degenerate hunters who deserve to be brought to justice. Athena got very angry because she started insulting the guy and said that it was just because of him. She couldn't understand what he had forgotten there. Every time she encounters him, she is bursting with anger and her mind becomes clouded. The guy was watching her very carefully at that moment. He was really just as shocked and didn't quite want to acknowledge what was happening right now. So Athena told him that once this was all over, she hoped they would never meet again. These words really upset the guy, but still it was the only way out of this situation. At this moment in his room, Lee Jun continued to recover and activated the flow of mana, because now he can sense it and use it much better. He actually managed to understand all this while observing the movement and mana inside Demetrius. In order to achieve such power, he used all the mana surrounding him. Therefore, the guy closed his eyes and understood that if he used this for attack, the blow would be many times stronger. But if he used it for defense, it would be much stronger. It's simple. This is the power of the flow of mana, so now he needs to use its flows to restore himself, which he immediately began to do. His body began to transform, but still something went wrong. Li Jun suddenly started vomiting blood on the floor. This is all brought to me by the dragon of her blood, which jumped off his body. So now he can heal with the flow of her those places that were previously blocked by impurities. He was very inspired and happy that everything was really working out for him. And after this incident, he began to love and feel his body even more. But closing his eyes, Jun also realized that something was indeed interfering with the mana ceiling, so this gave him an idea. He realized that the ball on his back was really blocking all the movement of mana. Therefore, he will need to get rid of it and change the flow of mana, redirect it in the other direction. During this time, some really interesting events took place in the gym. Some people started visiting it regularly to improve their skills. Therefore, he honed them every time without missing a single workout. It was Odysseus who began his attack. The girl was shocked and was able to easily reflect it, although she did not quite expect it. Odysseus smiled and said that he was acting very slowly indeed. This shocked John, because until the last moment she thought that her speed was at the highest level. Therefore, she immediately decided to take revenge on him for such words and rushed to the attack. But not before she did a good jump from her seat. Using all her strength to strike, she hoped to hit her opponent. Odysseus praised her and said that now it was much better than before, so he asked her to continue working in the same spirit. It was very important for her to understand that the attacks of people and monsters really differ, but this frightened her very much, because her interlocutor uttered two long phrases, so she did not have time to understand anything. Well, since she was not ready to listen to him, she immediately rushed to the attack. Odysseus also dodged and swung his sword in response, a second later, the guy's weapon was already near the girl's cheeks, which scared her very much. So she jumped back a few meters, realizing her mistake. Odysseus looked at her and asked if there was enough training for today. But his words upset her very much because she was useless throughout the entire battle of returning to Catalan. And the fact that she currently doesn't have a title means that her patron still hasn't recognized her. She scolded herself for not even being able to protect the guy and she absolutely cannot believe that she is receiving such words from her patron, who at that moment looked at her with pity after these words. The girl understood that despite the fact that they were about the same level, Lee Jun was several heads ahead of her, so until she rose at least one iota, she had no right to even be called his comrade in arms. She lowered her head and said that because of this he almost died, and only because she was so mediocre. Odysseus decided to take some towels and dry his head a little, which was sweating so much after the fight. After which he looked at the girl and really thought about it. John, she looked at him and asked for another round. 
Odysseus looked at her and realized that she seemed to be his reflection, because she regrets that she also cannot protect others, so he is absolutely sure that soon the girl will become much stronger. So he put down the towel and agreed to have another round with her. The girl was very serious, because she understood that she needed to become much stronger. Meanwhile, a visitor began to enter the hospital. He looked at the IV and thought, even at the gates of Catalan, he felt grains of her potential, but this is truly incredible. Odysseus looked at his hand and realized that Jun was truly incredible because every time she crossed blades with him, she became stronger. And indeed, it reminds him of Demetrius in the past. At that moment, his comrade was also lying in the ward and trying to recover from a difficult battle. He continued to talk to his comrade and said that his intuition tells him that he would like it, and it also looks like the dark horse has already woken up. So he lowered his eyes and said that he needed to hurry up. He was upset because his friend was almost depressed, so he needed to quickly come to his senses and recover. After all, lying in bed for so long is not entirely unlike Demetrius. At the entrance to the room stood Hune, who for some time thought about whether he should come here and was a little nervous. I looked at the guy and was really upset. Lee Jun still didn't understand what exactly happened, so his smile disappeared very quickly, and he asked if Hune was really here for a reason. He smiled and was glad that the guy could already move. As always, he constantly pleases them with surprises. The guy smiled and asked if he really thought so. But Hyun came here to find out some information about what Lee Jun knows about lightning. The guy said that this is the sacred artifact of Olympus, which is endowed with the power of Zeus. That's right. There are not many abilities in the world that can compare to Zeus's lightning, and such skills have always been sought after by experience and subjected to research. The guy laughed and said that it looked like their Bifrost, which really shocked Hyun. After that, Lee Jun took the initiative and said that he really had something to talk about. Hyun agreed to talk, but was sure that this was really not the best place for such a dialogue. So he asked Lee Jun to follow him. They went out to the park together and began to walk around this beautiful place. Indeed, the building looked much better than its hospital, and you could also admire the rainbow. The fountains also relieved the atmosphere and made it more calm, although it was not that. Jun said that this was indeed very impressive, but Hyun could not disagree with him, so he informed him that this was his sphere of influence, Bifrost. The bald man was very shocked, so he asked the guy who he really was, was he a prophet or a regressor? Lee Jun looked at him and said that he was something in between, since he read a book about him and his friend. It was written about someone who was known as the Demon King, these words frightened the bald man very much, since he was not ready to hear this information now. And despite the fact that a very light and pleasant atmosphere reigned over the building, yet their dialogue was very tense, Baldy didn't understand whether the guy was really asking him to believe in all this, that is, that he killed him. But Lee Jun said that the bald man did not kill him, he just thinks that he knew that after this action, everything that is happening now would follow, so it is not a lie. The bald man lowered his head and understood that the guy also knew that he and Athena were once together, so he had no choice but to believe the guy. Bifrost tells him that it's all true, isn't it? However, the book is still not finished, which surprised Hyun. Lee Jun continued, saying that everything described in the book is just the beginning, and the future future depends only on his actions, and most of the information about the future has already been lost. So everything he knows is only a small part but it's definitely not lie. He was aware of all this, so he looked at the guy with fear and asked what his intentions were. But he just wanted to change the hellish future he lived in, so from now on, many things will go in a different direction. He understood that Bifrost was not able to distinguish lies from truth, and he was also only able to understand whether the speaker's words contained harm to Heimdall, so he apologized again and said that for now, he could not tell him everything. It is important to understand that changing the future is not only its goal. In the evening, Inem also went to the guy's window and observed his condition. He was happy that Lee Jun actually woke up. Lee Jun was really very surprised and couldn't even think that the guy would be able to penetrate the territory of the round table, so he really wanted to find out what happened there. Inem immediately apologized for his rudeness but he took a very big risk by coming here under orders to ask him for something. The guy heard that he used his veto power in order to protect him, but he also did not think that there could be any contact in their interests, so he listened to him carefully. 
Enem bowed his head and asked Li Jun to go with them to the Nile. This is his main request. He was very shocked because the head of the Nile is asking him for something on his knees. How is this possible? After all, they met him at the gate by chance and only helped each other a little, so this is all very strange indeed. Therefore, he really, really wanted to know the main reason for such actions. Suddenly, Enem began to panic greatly and realized that he had now been discovered. Therefore, he began to run away and said that all this was connected with the red weapon, so he urgently needed to go to the Nile. There were no more opportunities to talk, since he needed to quickly run away from this place, which he actually did. Li Jun observed the situation and began to think. He must know something about the red ore madness, but was this phenomenon really studied in Egypt? Red ore they should not be known to any hunter, but if you think about it, they began to act as soon as they saw Hercules' changes. Hearing strange sounds, the doors opened very quickly. John ran into them. She was very panicked and asked if everything was okay with the guy. But he looked at her, and I was very surprised. He said that there was nothing particularly serious. She looked at him and was shocked, because he clarified that there was nothing serious yet, which surprised her very much. He said that he had just overcome the top of the cliff, but everything inside him said that soon an even higher peak would await the guy. At this point, the round table meeting was completed, and Athena was found guilty of starting the war. This is really not surprising because Olympus violated all agreements, so now they must bear responsibility for starting the war. The guy was happy because finally they could go home. As soon as they started to leave, someone stopped them and asked them not to rush so much. The girl was very excited, so she hoped it wasn't George. What she saw shocked her very much, so she ordered the guy to stay behind him. Her eyes began to burn. She did not understand what was happening to her right now. Opposite her stood Odysseus, who also seemed ready to fight. His eyes also lit up. It seemed that he still had not closed all the questions related to his temporary allies. John decided not to play for a long time, so she immediately took out her weapon just in case. This surprised the guy very much, so he told the girl that everything was fine and there was no reason to worry so much. After all, even if he looks a little hostile, it looks like he just wants to talk to him. His girlfriend didn't even think about it, so she just looked at the guy with deep understanding. After this, John approached Odysseus and they began to talk. Based on the fact that he is already on his feet, and Demetrius is still not, it turns out that this is a complete defeat for Demetrius. He lowered his gaze and thanked the guy for everything, since after this meeting he learned a lot for himself. However, he is also sure that next time he will not lose. These words surprised Li Jun, as he had no plans for next time, but he is also not the kind of person who leaves things unfinished. This made Odysseus a little angry, but there was nothing he could do. He looked at the guy and said that it seemed like his words couldn't reach the girl's mind, so he needed help getting them across. Odysseus told how he and John trained together, and he said that she absolutely has potential, so she is capable of becoming much stronger. He told how he noticed that she wanted to earn a title for herself, but she must remember that the reputation and disposition of her patrons towards her are very important and she must also understand who her patron really is. So she should take a little time to understand what he is like. John was shocked and didn't understand what he was talking about now. But Ali June said that he was saying that she herself needed to become a handsome prince on a white horse, which surprised her very much. After these words, Odysseus also said goodbye and went back to the building, saying that they would see each other again. Lee John also wanted to say a few words, so he called Odysseus over. This also surprised him a little, so he turned around and looked in his direction. Lee smiled and said that Hercules would become a monster much stronger than before and would certainly rise to his feet. These words surprised him very much, so he looked at the guy in disbelief. And also Lee Jun repeated that he is not the kind of person who leaves things unfinished, so next time. He hopes they will fight on the same side, shoulder to shoulder. After that, he and the girl turned around and walked in the other direction. Odysseus clenched his hand into a fist, trying to control his emotions. But after that, he immediately let him go and calmed down. After all, he also understood that it would be really very good if everything came true, as Lee Jun says. But for now, Hercules is in a critical situation, so he urgently needs to be sent to Olympus. There was water near the territory, which was quite unusual. A little later, you will find out why. The guy started throwing stones there, one after another. After which, waves formed there and after the next stone was thrown at the desired point, 
something began to happen. He took another stone to make sure he got to the right place, but his look changed greatly when he heard the answer from there. And immediately after this, an unusual glow began to appear from the water, which was accompanied by sounds. A girl emerged from them, who was really very surprised because she didn't understand who told the guy about how she could be found. But all this, to be honest, was not particularly tactful. He smiled and decided to ask her if her name was really Merlin. She was very surprised that the guy already knew her name, but at first glance, she thinks that he is just an ordinary person. Lee Jun looked at her and said that he was the true head of the round table meeting. Merlin looked at him and asked him to introduce himself, but Lee told her that she already knew who he was. She understood that in front stood the man who was able to defeat Hercules, as well as a dark horse and an excessively arrogant hunter. Her eyes lit up and she continued talking, because she understood that the guy already knew who she was, so what was he trying to achieve by provoking her? She began to build up mana around herself, rising into the air. A second later, she turned into a real guy in military clothes. He looked at Lee Jun with his mysterious eyes and was absolutely sure that all the members of the round table knew that he was definitely not someone who should be angry, so he asked Lee Jun again who he was. He was also ready to talk to him as an equal, so he also began to get angry. After all, he is the one who knows where Excalibur is now. These words greatly surprised his interlocutor, so he was shocked and very frightened. Very quickly, everything moved to the airport. Lee Jun and her friend were sitting in the waiting room, waiting for their flight. John asked him where he had been for so long, but he smiled and said that he had a meeting that he absolutely had to attend. These words outraged the girl a little, because she hoped that they would spend time together. Suddenly, she noticed a pendant with a necklace on his neck. John looked at the guy and began to be very indignant because was he really dating a girl? These words surprised the guy very much because he couldn't even think about it, and his girlfriend was already starting to be jealous. She was simply furious because she knew that everything was happening exactly this way, so she began to blame Lee Jun for his girls in England. She really hoped that this was not true, but she was very disappointed in him. Hen informed the guy that all preparations had been completed and he could move out. Li Jun decided to check with him to see if he had taken care of everything. But he assured him that everything would be at the highest level, so he could return and not worry about anything. As soon as they began to move towards their plane, a suspicious man decided to stop them and told them not to be in such a hurry. This surprised Li Jun very much since they were a little late. You immediately looked at him and informed him that he came from Merlin, since she said that Li Jun would be waiting for him here and asked him to convey a message. He smiled and said that the guy was now obliged to repay the debt for the necklace. Their plane was almost ready to take off, but there were still not enough passengers. Hyun was very surprised, so he asked the guy how he knew Merlin. Jun showed off his pendant and necklace and announced that they had made a deal. But he still didn't fully understand what it meant. Were these Merlin's necklaces? Yes, and Jun almost died because of him. Indeed, at that moment, Merlin was very aggressive and began to attack the guy. He attacked him with particular brutality because he wanted to get information. Lee Jun grabbed his head and said that meeting everyone face to face is already very dangerous for him, but he really, really needed this necklace, so he had to step over himself a little. Hyung exhaled and smiled upon hearing this information. After that, they successfully flew to another country, and very quickly their plane already gained a fairly good altitude. There were practically no passengers in business class. In fact, there were three of them flying. Therefore, the girl decided to chat a little, because there is something else that she still cannot understand. Her words woke up the guy, so he looked at her and asked what she meant. Regarding George, even though they were enemies, he helped her in training and even gave her advice. If Hercules had done to them what we did to him, then the girl is 100% sure that she would have been consumed by a thirst for places. However, the way he helped her and the way he treated the guy in the end really surprised her, so she can't understand the nobility of high-ranking hunters. The guy also thought about it, but still referred to the fact that it seemed like it was all intuition. The girl was also surprised by such words, so she asked him to clarify, and Lee Jun said that most likely, he just realized that he was not going to deal with Hercules. The conversation dragged on quite a bit, because the plane was already preparing to land, after which all passengers were asked to go to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. Lenses have already been prepared that are aimed at the aircraft. A lot of journalists stood with cameras and were ready to shoot another report, 
since a dark horse was about to emerge from it. Hyun smiled and looked at Lee Jun and realized that he was really very nervous since he was not used to such a huge amount of attention, especially since he was shocked that they knew that he had overcome a huge distance and defeated Hercules, who himself challenged him. But the only thing that worried him even more was why the bald man knew about this and didn't tell him anything. But he smiled and said that it was just a surprise because isn't that what the guy wanted? Finding glory. They looked at each other and really no one had any hard feelings. So the guy started waving his arms and greeting the reporters. They were all shocked by his behavior and the way he acted in public, so they continued to film him and recorded his every move on camera. Everything was returning to the same abandoned factory where their story began. Lee Jun stood with John near the railing and watched the sun set. John looked at him and asked what he plans to do now. But the guy said that he had too many things to do. First of all, you need to repair your inventory, since the spear has become unusable due to the dragon's bloodstone and the side effects of the red ore. And also Hyun Mu has not yet come to his senses. And besides all this, Lee Jun still has business in Nile. But first of all, what should he do? So this is to move, because from an early age he dreamed of his own home, so the girl was very surprised because is moving really the most urgent matter now. It was actually a good thing because it didn't look like he would need her help anytime soon. So she smiled and said that she had something to tell him. He looked at her with a smile and asked what she meant. From now on, she wants to act independently. This shocked the guy a little because he clearly did not expect to hear this. She said that defending the gate with him was indeed a very fun and valuable experience for her, however. After what George said, she needs to find something that she can do on her own. Lee Jun looked at her calmly although he did not at all plan that everything would develop according to a similar scenario. After that, the girl left and didn't even kiss him goodbye. But still he was very happy, because apparently she had finally begun to reveal her potential, and very soon she would become much stronger. At such a late time, the guy received a phone call, so he immediately began to answer it. He received a call from Kim Sun Young, who said that the head of the association was calling him, so he would pick him up tomorrow morning. These words surprised him very much, so he began to think about a plan of action. After all, Lee Jun accidentally forgot about the most important thing. After all, his main goal is Odin. The next morning, exactly 10 o'clock in the morning, they were supposed to pick him up. Odysseus began to run in panic because this could not be at all. He refused to believe in it. Therefore, I ran with all my might to the meeting. There, the sounds of blows could already be heard, which intensified each time. Demetrius began to come to his senses and immediately returned to the gym to resume training. He hated being a loser, so despite orders from doctors to stay put, he continued to train. He needed to get in shape very urgently. So Odysseus came to him and was a little worried. Demetrius was very happy to see him and smiled, stopping his training to talk. George decided to ask what happened to him, and when did he come to his senses? But Demetrius didn't like the fact that he was acting like a guilty man, was this the first time he had seen a defeated hunter? George was very worried because he realized that he had never lost before. Demetrius smiled and said that this was true, but this was definitely not a reason to be upset. Therefore, Odysseus asked him if anything had changed since that moment, because before he was always on pins and needles and was also aggressive all the time. But now he looks at Demetrius and realizes that his soul seems to have found peace. So he decided to ask him again what happened. Apparently, Lee Jun did not originally plan to be their enemy. Odysseus was very scared when he saw the change in Demetrius' eyes. He smiled and asked him not to be surprised at all by this, since now he had completely mastered his madness and could use this power without side effects. He was very pleased with this because it seems that Lee Jun presented him with this gift on a silver platter. Odysseus immediately remembered the words of Lee Jun, who said that Hercules would become a monster, much stronger than before and he also hopes that they will be on the same side fighting shoulder to shoulder. It seems that these words became prophetic, so Odysseus smiled and really hoped that it would be so. An already unnecessary sword was sticking out in the ground, and next to it were the bodies of many destroyed monsters. Battles were carried out regularly and with particular cruelty. The girl wanted to become the best, so she regularly went hunting and trained. She ran at high speed because she realized that she did not have enough strength. John took her sword in her hand and prepared to fight further. It was clear that she still did not feel as confident as she did when she was deputy. 
On her way, she met a huge monster who smiled and looked at her, waiting for a fight. John was really nervous. It had already been three days since she had been here. But where did this monster come from? She had the impression that she was confronting Hercules again. This is not surprising because even with the naked eye, it is clear that it will really be very difficult for her now. The girl understood that she could barely stand on her feet even with the support of her patron, but this guy himself was already at the limit of his strength. The monster did not decide to feel sorry for the girl, so he immediately rushed to attack her. Therefore, a clash occurred between them, as a result of which the girl also rushed to attack. She jumped as high as possible, after which she delivered her signature blow to the monster's shoulder, which really shocked him. The girl understood that this was not enough, since her peers were already at a completely different level. Therefore, she rushed further into the attack with particular cruelty. John didn't know if she could just destroy this monster or if she had to leave him alive. But no one could give her the answer to this question, so she struck him in the heart with all her strength with her sword. And now, a five-meter monster, which initially seemed so scary and terrifying, is already lying on the ground and begging for mercy. But all this lasted only up to a certain moment, until his severed hand began to activate and fly into the air. He pointed it straight towards the girl, who had already plunged her sword into him. She definitely didn't expect such a blow, so now she was in a lot of pain. The monster also lay wounded on the ground and remembered his whole life. Well, the girl was just like that lying on the floor, beaten and useless to anyone. There was really a lot of pain and misunderstanding in her gaze. It seems the monster also had his own plans for life, which were no longer destined to come true. Therefore, with the last of her strength, she put her hand on the ground. Then she turned over and lay on her back, since she really no longer had the strength. The girl understood that she had already run out of potions, and even if she had them, it still wouldn't have helped since she didn't even have the strength to raise her finger right now. So she became very scared, because could she really die like that? At one point, a black warrior approached her and began to throw a potion, asking if she wanted to receive it. She was very shocked by this because she did not expect to see him here. After this, the girl immediately passed out and fell asleep. When she woke up, she was already met by Lee Joan, who was very worried about her. John the head of misunderstanding because she had no idea where she was now. Lee Jun smiled and said that she is at your gate right now. Where else could she be? She looked at him and said that her body felt much better. It was quite a strange sensation, so she wondered where they got the elixir. He did not answer her question, but congratulated her on the fact that she had finally come to her senses. After that, he hid his skeleton and smiled. The girl also did not understand where her sword was now. Lee Jun looked in that direction and said that he was also very close to stealing this kill from her, earning himself experience. But he also warned her that these were just thoughts, because he was not some kind of monster to do such a thing. It is very symbolic that the monster still continued to lie in its place. The girl thanked him for his help and also said that thanks to this, she finally managed to get her title. So she grabbed her sword tightly and inserted it properly into the monster. After that, everything began to glow and the result was not long in coming. The girl was very surprised because her patron had been a girl all this time. Suddenly, the same monster appeared in front of John, only ten times smaller. The girl was very surprised because he jumped on her shoulder and also looked quite innocent. She looked at the guy and asked him to explain what was happening, so he said that it was now her toy. Lee Jun smiled as she now has something similar to a black warrior who was under the guy's command. He also looked at the girl and congratulated her again, because now that she has a title, she can rightfully be called a real hero, which the monster was just as happy about. Did she really manage to become attached to him while they were fighting? Because this monster seemed quite cute to her. The guy asked the girl to protect him very much, and also asked her if she had already chosen a name for him. But while the girl was thinking what to answer, the monster himself said his name, Gongs. Aga was shocked by this answer, so the monster repeated his name again. The guy smiled, because the girl was able to win the one-on-one -on -one duel against the ogre mage, and he was also happy that her monster was keeping up with the black warrior. But the only question that also worried her was how did Lee Jun end up here? He looked at John again and said that it was a long story, and also said that it took her too long to clear the gate, so he began to worry because three days had already passed since she was inside. 
Still, she began to like Lee Jun more and more each time. The guy said that this is not all the information, but first we need to deal with this big guy. They looked at the monster that appeared in front, and the guy suggested that the girl first make sure that she dealt with every last one since they were protecting the gate. The girl smiled and listened to this order. She began to glow because the heroic power that she gained by acquiring the title began to overwhelm the mana flowing throughout her body. The boss of this village is a two-headed ogre who is standing in front of them right now, so she knew that this was truly an excellent opponent to test her new hero powers. Therefore, without wasting any time, the girl immediately jumped into battle. She swung her ball and seriously shocked the monster, who did not expect such a quick reaction. But after that, her pet became very frightened and began to run away in fear. The two-headed ogre was very angry, so everyone was afraid of him. This is not surprising because the ogre was extremely strong, so he immediately swung his weapon, instilling fear, but the girl easily destroyed it. Lee Jun was extremely surprised after the fight, so he began to think that John didn't need a pet at all. She looked at Lee Jun and smiled sweetly, because for the first time she managed to calmly clear the gate, and she also wanted to calmly chat with the guy and find out what brought him to her. He looked at the girl and said that he really needed to go to China, so it would be nice if she agreed to accompany him. Such words greatly excited her because she was clearly not ready for this. Heimdall was shocked because Odin's test was successfully passed. He wondered if their taboo would work, but he was able to successfully bypass it with the help of Merlin's pendant, so he turned to Lee Jun, and he said that he would be very glad to see him in Asgard. Lee Jun has finally managed to infiltrate a shadowy organization that has dealings all over the world, Hyun Mu has grown and formed a solid body, but he still has not reached the level of the evil king of the undead army, but now he can control up to seven skeletons. Also, another skull appeared on the guy's hand, but the skeleton's soul is not active yet. During this time, the blacksmith managed to restore his spear, thanks to the help of his sister. But now it has the characteristic of a demonic spear, which absorbs its own user. That is why Li Jun must go to China, the most dangerous region in the world, but all because they could not contain the huge number of gates opening everywhere, so China turned into a real kingdom of monsters. After all, it is there that the person who is able to cleanse the black marble is located, in a place that is about to become the center of an impending catastrophe. We are now talking about the Northern Front. A huge horde of snow orcs was approaching. This was not at all part of my plans for the hunters, because they had already been here for more than three hours. Immediately at the front, a small flame formed first, after which everything flared up to such a scale that it separated everyone with a huge wall of fire. The fire began to destroy the monsters alive. The hunters were shocked by this outcome of events, but they were very pleased. Lee Jun came to their aid with his girlfriend, making it clear to everyone around him that he was in charge here. He was wearing a jacket because it was already quite cold in China, after which local residents approached them because they wanted to talk. They thanked him for his help, but they still couldn't believe that they were actually going to go there. Li Jun smiled and said that he should thank them for protecting his country, and there was also something else he would like to do. His interlocutor was surprised because he heard that Li Jun defeated Hercules, but he decided to warn him because there is something like a barrier there that ordinary people cannot pass through so they will not succeed. The guy smiled and asked them not to worry about this since he had already been able to find a solution. And now they were approaching the main entrance, after which they decided to discuss everything a little. Hyun looked at Lee Jun and didn't understand, because he was very interested in how he wanted to travel without the help of Bifrost. John was very surprised because she didn't understand where they had come right now. It was a gate, literally the entire territory of China is a continuous gate. The girl didn't quite understand what he meant, so the guy said that she would understand everything as soon as she saw it with her own eyes. So Han immediately put his hand in and prepared to begin. Before that, he looked at his friends and told them to step back first. You need to understand that it doesn't matter what happens, since he won't be able to help them anymore. He extended his hand and said that now once a month he would wait for them here, exactly in this place. The portal was activated, so he gave them the last stage of formation, said that if by this moment they could not get out, then he would return here again in a month, and he would do this every month, the guy smiled because he understood that if everything went well, 
he would be able to get out of there himself. His friend smiled and very much hoped that everything would be so. After that, the guys began their journey. Hen was very happy because he understood that the guy was literally putting all his strength into it, and it was all just to save everyone he could. After that, Hen turned around and realized that he would go and try to reduce their time as much as possible. The weather was really very different, which is why it was very cold. John was frozen, so she couldn't believe that someone could live here. Lee Jun was also surprised, because he thought that it would be a little warmer here, but all this only means that time here feels completely different. Very quickly, they noticed the snow orcs. Therefore, the girl looked at them and prepared to join the fight, as she wanted to somehow warm up. Without thinking twice, she rushed into battle, destroying one enemy after another. It is important to note the fact that their blood was already green. There were really a lot of orcs. They all wanted to destroy the girl. It is worth noting that after a long period of time of intense training, she was no longer surprised, so she only looked at them with anger. A minute later, several monsters were already lying dead in the ground. The rest of them began to run away. The guy also noticed this, so he told the girl that it looked quite strange. But it didn't end with orcs, so they were very quickly replaced by ice trolls, who have immunity to cold, as well as high regeneration. Lee Jun began to worry about the girl, so he asked her to be careful with them. It is clear that he would not just stand by, so Lee Jun jumped up and immediately rushed to the attack in order to eliminate them as quickly as possible. John also decided to keep up and went to help, waving her sword. After the next portion of the opponents was destroyed, the girl stopped and waited for further instructions from Lee Jun. Her look changed a lot, because she really couldn't understand what was going on here. The thing is that this looks really very strange, especially since there are quite a lot of strong monsters here. But Lee Jun understood what she was talking about now, because he himself noticed that it had become much more difficult to control his mana. John confirmed this, and also added that the movements and battle tactics of the opponents are very different. They all seem to be human. Lee Jun understood perfectly well that her words made sense. Apparently, the process of being absorbed by the gate was happening much faster than he could have expected, so for now they would move on. Outside, the snow only continued to get heavier and the road became more and more difficult. John understood that there was probably a logical explanation for this, but so far nothing had come to mind. She left the guy a little to think, after which she asked how far they would need to advance in this format, but Lee Jun said that they would need at least two months of moving on their own two legs, if not more. John even screamed in fear because she couldn't believe it. Lee Jun turned to her and laughed because all this is only if they continue moving, which means that they cannot waste so much time standing around in this place. Therefore, now we need to find something that they will ride on, and their starting point will be completely different. He pointed his finger towards the heavenly lake at the top of Pectusan. The trolls continued to lie in the ground and did not bother anyone at all. When the team had already walked a sufficient number of kilometers, they stopped to warm up at least a little, because do not forget that it was bitter winter outside all this time. Lee Jun understood that he didn't want to be here and just waste time, so he looked at the girl and said that let her sit here for now, and he would take a walk and explore the situation. John simply silently agreed with him, because she understood perfectly well that moving on when she was so cold was simply a real mockery. After some time, John returned to her not alone, but with a couple of red deer that he could find. After which their journey became much more comfortable and pleasant, because you will agree that it would be much better to move on reindeer than to walk such a long distance and get your clothes wet with your feet in the snow. It is important to note that it is really very easy to get lost in this forest. So all hope was only that June really knew what he was doing. When even the deer were tired of running, the guys stopped to discuss further plans and take a break. John understood that they were now climbing to the top of Pectasan, but shouldn't it get colder as they climbed there? After all, the closer they rise to the top, the hotter they become. John also thought about it, because they had never even met monsters on their way here, and this made her very wary. Lee Jun reassured the girl, because the ruler of the mountain really protects her very well, so there's definitely no need to worry. John looked at him and asked what this means. What ruler of the mountain? Is this really a man? John was a little surprised by such a stupid question, so he said that of course not. How could he be human? But the girl decided to find out who they were going to deal with, so she decided to ask a lot of questions. 
But Lee Jun interrupted her and said that he himself didn't even know what would be the correct name for them. In any case, it's worth getting ready, because the girl will see them herself very soon, so he suggested it was better to leave the animals in this place for now. Now they will need to try to break through the barrier as quickly as possible. After these words, everything began to glow. Indeed, real magic appeared here, which protected the passage from prying eyes and bad intentions. So without some preparation, it is generally unrealistic to see exactly where the traps are. Heimdall was meanwhile on the roof and understood that after the appearance of the gate, the world plunged into real chaos. He awakened forces that surpassed all others on his path, so he set himself the task of finding Asgard and devoting himself entirely to people. But after he began to use his powers for the sake of humanity, he realized that it is only natural that all those who cannot use magical power will be left behind, so only hunters who are able to survive disasters are those people whose protection is now his direct responsibility. Li Jun went to China, but he was more disappointed that the country did not live up to his expectations, because the climatic conditions had indeed changed, and monsters began to rage in every city. He understood perfectly well that a guy who did not have the power of a hero at all, and who managed to defeat Hercules without her help, could still manage to find what he had not been able to do in his time. He laughed and realized that Li Jun was indeed worthy of attention, and the situation was becoming very interesting. Heimdall had not experienced such emotions for a very long time, so he even bit his tongue with joy. After this, of course, there was a corresponding reaction in the form of pain, because you shouldn't be so self-confident and underestimate other people. But his shock was not for this reason at all. Heimdall knew very well that right now he certainly could not absorb it so early. He spread his arms and began to laugh, forming magic near him because he understood perfectly well that now it would be much more pleasant for him to slowly enjoy it, because Li Jun really is the best snack with which he can drown out his irresistible hunger. Meanwhile, the guys had already managed to get to the top and were pleasantly surprised, because there was no more snow and it was warm. John was happy, because he really hates the cold, so Li Jun beat her to it and said that they had finally arrived at the same place. He looked around. And immediately after that, he took out his weapon. This is the same heavenly lake that they have been going to for so long, so now they need to be extremely careful. Opposite Li Jun stood people who were shocked by the appearance of strangers on the territory and were preparing to meet them. John also quickly prepared to engage in battle, because she didn't really want to fight right now, especially since they looked like hunters. Li Jun said that in the lands of monsters live people who survived from the ancient lands of North Korea. They were very surprised by this, so they shouted at the guy and asked how he knew so much about them. But Lee Jun wanted to resolve everything peacefully, so with a calm voice he said that now he would like to meet with the ruler of the mountain. People were very surprised because information about the king is really hidden all the time and very few people know about it, so they understood that the guy was very dangerous. Without wasting a minute, the people took out their weapons and prepared for battle, because they understood that now their main task would be to destroy the invaders. Li Jun was shocked because all he wanted to do was avoid an unnecessary fight, but it seems like he really has no other choice. One of the attackers looked to the side and was horrified, because a completely unexpected event had happened. The little girl began waving her hands and saying that the king had given her orders to call the guests for an interview. Due to failed nuclear experiments, their country became a wasteland even before the gate appeared, so after that a lot of refugees began to look for a new refuge. People stopped their attack because of the girl, but still started screaming and asking again how the guy knew about them. But he just looked at them and said that now this is a really difficult question. The girl immediately approached the warrior and began to scold him, asking whether he was really ready to behave like that with the guests of the owner of the mountain. She also warned him saying that if they knew about the king, of course they would know about them in the same way. The guy was shocked, but still he felt scared because he understood that the new arrivals could easily be accomplices of their main enemies, because of whom they are now here. He told her that he would go away for a second to discuss the matter with his colleagues, but the girl understood perfectly well that now she needed to take the situation into her own hands, because although they were able to deal with them, now their people are as if on pins and needles. Lee Jun approached the little girl and decided to talk to her on his own, 
since he perfectly understood that she was much higher in status than ordinary warriors. The guy raised his voice a little, saying that he was not as old as she might think. This scared the girl because she was counting on a completely different outcome of the dialogue. After talking, they immediately went to the market. People were shocked because they had not seen guests in this place for a very long time, and the guy actually invited the girl to look at their clothes, because apparently they really came from the outside world. But they could not believe it, because all this for a time they believed that it was completely destroyed. Lee Jun and her friend looked really amazing, and John informed him that there were about 200 people here, most of them hunters. Jun also understood perfectly well that these were people who were able to survive in such harsh conditions. There was a guy at the entrance who, seeing the new arrivals, immediately ordered them to move away from this place and did not want to let them in any further. Lee Jun was very surprised when a man with a spear began to stand in front of him, so he only laughed and asked if it was customary for them to receive all guests in this way. Didn't the owner of the mountain tell him to personally bring the new arrivals to him? But the guy was really scared and angry at the same time, because even though he had such an order, he simply refused to take them to the owner. So the little girl quickly intervened in the conversation, trying to defuse the tense situation. The guy didn't even want to listen to her, because the girl should perfectly understand the state the owner is in now. After these words, John lit up, because he began to understand perfectly well that something had happened to the owner of the mountain, but still he turned to the guy and said that his opinion in any case did not matter. After these words, he immediately rushed into battle, since he had just been humiliated, so he decided to take revenge. The girl began to scream and also turn into a monster. It seemed that she was offended by this. Lee Jun understood that the situation now was quite strange. His opponent was also scared because he didn't know what to expect now. In the name of the head of the village of Chengji, she ordered him to immediately get out of the way and clear the way. He accepted this and immediately lowered his head in front of her following the order. The girl looked at the newcomers, who were almost fighting for the second time, and told them to continue to follow her. Then their road to the owner of the mountain passed through a cave. Li Jun asked his friend if she knew anything about the Tangoon myth, but she didn't even know what it was. So the guy said that there is a long-forgotten folk myth called the Myth of Tangun, about how Huanung came down from the mountains and discovered Korea, founding our people there. John looked at the guy and didn't understand why he decided to remember this right now, when there were no prerequisites for this. Lee Jun decided to say that the locals clearly know something about this. The girl was very happy when she came closer to her owner. At the main entrance, there was a magical blue field and a lot of fire, and now the new arrivals began to be greeted by a huge white tiger who was smiling and in a good mood. The guy took a few steps, and having approached a sufficient distance, he decided to ask whether the tiger was the real owner of the mountain. Tiger smiled and said that even though they were superior to all of his military forces, the fact that they knew about him made them honorable guests anyway. He stood up and said that he really was the master of Mount Pectasan, so he wanted to know what exactly brought the guys to him. John was scared because she couldn't understand what this terrifying aura was. Lee Jun also understood that this was indeed a real mess. The tiger was a little surprised by this statement, but still decided to just continue listening to what they came with. Lee Jun said that the power with which he protects this mountain will disappear very soon. He looked at him carefully and realized that the tiger was dying right now because the source of his powers, Mount Pectusan, was gradually beginning to collapse. The tiger was scared by such a statement, so he wanted to immediately find out who Lee Jun really was. He stood in front of him and said that he was indeed the one who could help the tiger, but Lee Jun added that he would like to meet, but not with him. After that, he paused and said that he would still like to communicate with the true owner of the mountain. The tiger began to scream and fell into a rage because he could not even imagine that the newcomers could be so impudent. Lee Jun also started screaming because he knew very well that they were able to detain the intruder, but it is not at all normal for the owner of the mountain to be a dying idiot, so he ordered the tiger to immediately take him to the intruder, after which he promised that he would save the village of Cheongji and him. The tiger was even more shocked, because he had never encountered in dialogue with people who said everything so directly. After this dialogue, Lee Jun and his girlfriend were already standing on the street. John looked at the guy and asked who the owner of the mountain really is. After all, 
Lee Jun has repeatedly told her that this is not a monster. He just smiled and said that she might think of him as the reindeer harnessed to their sleigh, but he was a much more advanced creature. Simply put, after absorbing the magical energy coming from the gate, their personality and appearance changed. But this does not explain his ability to communicate with people, and the ability to absorb such huge volumes of magic, as well as his behavior. Lee Jun understood that the girl was completely right now, because even before absorbing the magical power, he was different from other animals, so he asked if she knew who the Alphas were. Their body is larger, they are smarter and stronger than other animals, so over time Alphas can become the main characters of legends and fairy tales. But the owner of Mount Bagdusen is even more special, and all because he has a patron, which greatly surprised the girl. Lee Jun told her that the owner is exactly the same hunter as them, but now he is injured by an intruder who entered Mount Pectusen. Therefore, now not only is he their target, but also the intruder who injured the owner. Without thinking twice, the girl waved her hands and directed all her strength into the air. She was very serious, so she even started screaming, ordering the world to be opened immediately. Immediately a flash appeared in the sky in front of her. And from there came a bright white ray of sun that hit the village and was accompanied by quite loud sounds. Lee Jun and her friend watched this process and were really happy that everything was going according to plan. Suddenly they both decided to jump up and run on very quickly. John decided to keep up with her boyfriend because without him there is nothing to do in this world and she will immediately die. Real magic was happening and the most interesting thing was that Lee Jun was absolutely confident in what he was doing because he knew perfectly well what to expect. After the guys jumped into the newly opened world, the girl immediately waved her hands and immediately closed it so that no one else from outside would jump in there. Therefore, after a second, there was no trace left of the huge flash and sounds. The girl was very worried about them, so she hoped that they would return safe and sound, because the team had just entered the time gate. They again moved to the mine, only this time it was completely different, which was different from the one where the tiger was. John couldn't believe it, because could it be that a temporary gate had opened in front of her right now? But the most interesting thing is that she couldn't even understand what it was. Lee Jun laughed and said that these are gates that appear inside other gates, so you shouldn't be surprised because Korea and China are already gates in themselves, so technically all the gates in them are temporary. John said that it's terribly hot here, but just recently they were very cold. But Jun understood that she needed to calm the girl down and get her ready to work so that she wouldn't worry about trifles, so he suggested that she take this as a hardening, thanks to which they will become much stronger and more resilient. After these words, the beautiful demon immediately awarded them heat resistance, which the guy really liked, but the girl still hoped that they would also give her resistance to cold, which she simply hates. Very quickly they both rushed into battle and the girl began to destroy the next monster that appeared on their way. When they finished, the girl turned to Lee Jun with relief, noticing that their levels of power over fire were now increased. The guy assumed that the Cheongji Gate with strong flames was indeed ideal for leveling up. But John couldn't help but wonder what happened to the head of the village and what kind of child it was, because she was the one who was able to create a sealed territory and let them in here, wasn't she? Yes, but it would be more correct to say that she did not seal the territory, but lured an intruder into it, because this place is the center of Mount Pectusen, where all the power is concentrated. So the source of the power of the owner of the mountain is also located here. This girl is a bear, from the myth of Tangan. So she can also use this energy for her own purposes, because she is the one who bestows this power on the owner of the mountain. John was shocked by this answer, because she could really imagine anything, but not this. She waved her hands and began to think about the answer. It turns out that the strongest here is not the owner of the mountain, but the head of the village, right? Lee Jun turned to her and said that she had analyzed everything correctly, but the intruder who was now trapped here was much stronger, although he was most likely stronger than any monster they had faced before. John looked at the guy with surprise in her eyes, but she couldn't believe that the name Unyo really belonged to her, because it was quite unique. Lee Jun said that he doesn't know her exact name, but it doesn't matter, Unyo is just her nickname, and this child is a hero. John was embarrassed by this, because she understood that the world was not so huge after all, 
She had just become a hero when she realized that they were now surrounding her everywhere. Cheonji was the best place for the growth of the Demon King, which he himself spoke about several times in his autobiographies. So Lee Jun knew full well that he had to become as strong as possible because he would have to be prepared for any changes in the future. Therefore, he began to train hard and destroy opponents in his path. He did not spare anyone and spent all his free time on improving himself because time had not yet played in his favor and he needed to improve his level. John noticed how the guy was growing quickly and raising his level, so she also praised his patron because he really gave him a lot of blessings. The guy turned to her and said that he considered Prince Charming a much better patron because Lee Jun becomes stronger just thanks to the player's ability. Unexpectedly, they were both very surprised because after these words, the fallen angel decided to give the guy even more power and points for development. And also a second later, Prince Charming gave his blessing to the girl, so they were both pleasantly surprised and happy that they really had incredible patrons. Meanwhile, a girl approached the owner of the mountain and decided to ask him how he was feeling. The tiger just looked at her and said that so far, everything had not changed because he was really dying due to the fact that he used his powers to protect Mount Pektusan and the village of Chianji, and also while he was sealing the intruder. Because of this, all his life force began to melt before his eyes. The girl looked at him and said that they had to deal with those powers of Mount Pektusan, but he was immediately injured, so she asked if she should take her powers back now. The tiger rose to his paws and told her not to even think about saying anything stupid. Lee Jun was preparing because he understood perfectly well that although they were indeed very strong, the invader would be a much more serious opponent. Unyo asked the owner why he sent them to Cheongji then. This question got him thinking. And although he didn't see his strength, he still perfectly understood who was behind Lee Jun. This is about the same thing as what he saw behind the intruder's back. It was not for nothing that thunder and an earthquake appeared in the sky again. The portal opened again. A violet flame began to appear near the guys, lighting up everything around and instilling good fear. John was scared because did the intruder really appear so early? From there appeared the same little girl who came to them, definitely for a reason. It seems that she began the process of preparation because she began to look around intently and analyze the current situation, but still something worried her. John was even more shocked, so she asked the guy whether this little child was really the intruder she was thinking about. But Lee Jun made her understand that she was very mistaken, because this is not a person at all, and you shouldn't judge a book just by its cover. John thought about it and simply looked in the direction of the girl. Although she was small, she used her skills very skillfully, forming lightning near her body. Immediately, she was able to summon a huge blue wolf that was behind her, the guys were shocked by such strength of a small child. John was scared because she wasn't sure that they could defeat him. The girl clenched her teeth and now looked like a real monster, who was clearly no longer ready to talk to them peacefully. Therefore, without further ado, she immediately rushed into battle, realizing that she now needed to destroy the newcomers before they stopped her. John immediately got into a fighting stance and got ready, but she was also quite surprised when her pet jumped out and also ran away from her. He also decided to fight and protect his mistress, so he was ready to challenge the enemy. Immediately after this, they grappled with the wolf and began to fight. It was a real shock, because until that moment it was even impossible to imagine that a pet could be so strong. John also shouted and rushed into battle to help, because after what happened she is no longer afraid of anything. Therefore, without further thought, she immediately jumped up with great speed. And with all her might, she was preparing to strike at her enemy who was not quite expecting it yet. But still, the girl jumped back and now turned her entire focus to John, who dared to challenge her. But she is not an ordinary girl, so in a fit of rage, John was preparing to strike a very accurate blow. But something stopped her. She was simply scared, because she couldn't understand what kind of force was opposing her right now. While the enemy was busy with John, Lee Jun did not waste time and attacked the girl, trying to destroy her and also take her by surprise. In his eyes, you can easily see a rush of rage and extreme anger. He put all his strength into this blow, and unlike John, no one could stop his blow and it hit the target, forming a huge fiery flame behind it. The monster jumped back and just crossed her arms, preparing to launch a counterattack. This is a truly terrible sight, but Lee Jun is absolutely ready for this and understands everything perfectly. 
Therefore, without waiting for an answer, he quickly rushed to the attack in order to be able to destroy the monster while he was still at a loss. A second later, everything was in huge blast waves that formed after the force of the fire. Raising your head up was indeed very scary because all that could be seen were flashes and fiery explosions. Meanwhile, at the fair, there was a real earthquake from what kind of fights were taking place here. Still, the monster was very similar to the little girl and took her image while she was in the village at the same time and ordered everyone to evacuate immediately. The soldiers had to find shelter for people until the situation stabilized. After that, the same security guard who did not want to let Lee Jun and his girlfriend through decided to jump up to her. Was he trying to see in her eyes if everything would really be okay? Although absolutely no one could answer this question now, the girl asked him not to worry, because even if everything does not go according to plan, she and the owner of the village will figure it out on their own. So now, first of all, we need to help with the evacuation. He bowed his head in front of her and said that he would do absolutely anything she ordered. She understood perfectly well that the fate of Changji was now in their hands, because if Li Jun lost now, then she and the owner of the mountain would not be able to cope with it. Therefore, she very much hoped that everything would go well and was worried. Meanwhile, the portal unexpectedly opened again. The girl's pet was lying on the ground unconscious, and it's hard to say whether he's actually alive. John was sitting on the ground resting on her knee, but she was still noticeably damaged, but that wasn't the worst thing at all. The intruder lifted Lee Jun up and held him very tightly with her wolf fist. When John saw this, she suddenly started screaming because she was very worried about the guy. But this angered the intruder even more, so she gritted her teeth and prepared to end the guy. Lee Jun just grabbed his paw and held it tightly, not allowing the enemy to grab him. It was very difficult for him. The situation was truly critical, and he needed to find a way out of it right now if he did not want to die right here. In his eyes, you could calmly see anger and despair at the same time. It looks like this is the end. He remembered that during training, the growth of his magical powers was for some reason blocked, and there was no way to increase their level, although before they had grown well due to the flow of mana. But his mana flow was still level one, and his power over fire had not increased either, so he concluded that it would not increase any further in Cheongji. And in order to solve this problem and increase the flow of mana, he needs to sever the wolf paws of his opponent right now. After such actions, his mana flow increased, and Li Jun now gained extreme confidence in himself and his abilities, so he was now ready to fight even stronger. The intruder was scared, because she noticed how her opponent changed literally before her eyes. Li Jun was able to escape from her grasp and began to form fire magic around himself, and compared to his opponent, he became much more confident. However, after being freed, he quickly looked at his body to make sure that there were no wounds or serious damage, but fortunately everything worked out, because the flow of mana is activated in situations on the verge of death. However, it was quite difficult for Li Jun to feel something like this from the monsters he had encountered before. But as he expected, with this enemy everything will be different and even though it's a little too late. But Mana began to envelop all his cells around his body, making it feel as if he had just been reborn again. Li Jun immediately created his magic weapon, and he prepared for the second round of their battle, where the invader was already really furious, because his victim had just literally slipped out of his hands. She got down on all fours and started growling at the guy like a real wolf, although it didn't look particularly scary. But Li Jun didn't care, so he immediately rushed into battle, but like a real gentleman, he first warned the lady that it would hurt a little. He was already ready to end this, so he summoned a flash of the sun and immediately received a huge amount of rewards and experience points because he was able to acquire the skill without any help. John was very surprised because she couldn't believe that it was absorbing all the mana from the air, and the space around Li Jun was literally distorted. The guy was extremely angry, so he continued to run towards his opponent, using all his strength. But she was not even going to give up, so she also rushed into battle to take revenge and recoup the previous misunderstanding. And so their forces collided again, as usually happens when no one wants to give in to each other. The result was a huge explosion, which was to be expected. Everything around was literally on fire because two very strong elements collided. The intruder had changed very much, and it was no longer possible to see in him the very girl whose image he had replaced and wanted to impersonate, so right now he was extremely shocked. 
Then another blast wave followed, which was supposed to put an end to him once and for all, freeing the owner of the mountain from suffering. But from the ashes and fire, the silhouette of a wolf suddenly appeared, which terrified. This frightened John very much because all this could only mean one thing. The invader is winning and is not going to give up, but everything was completely different. The wolf was very angry, so he only looked towards Li Jun, trying to intimidate him with his growl. But he was absolutely fearless. He actually didn't care. He was just thinking about what he should do next. Li Jun didn't want to wait, so he went to the epicenter of the battle on his own because he didn't care. The wolf continued to growl at him, thereby trying to dissuade the guy from making such movements. Li Jun knew very well that he had approached him through the blazing flames, so now this beast could not go against his will in any way, and all this was because of his origin. The thing is that it was just a wounded animal, and its eyes, filled with anger and pain, turned into eyes full of sadness. After all, he will soon meet his owner. Li Jun looked into his lost eyes and understood perfectly well that now the fallen angel was closely watching him and his decisions. The wolf stopped growling, but only slowly began to approach the guy who would now become his new owner. Thus, Li Jun was able to subdue this beast and lure it to his side, but despite his current pliability, he was once a demon who turned the world into chaos along with the demon king. He was an ally and follower of the demonic king, and for him, in turn, he was like his own son. Li Jun looked at the wolf and realized that from now on he would call him Fenrir, after which he subdued him. Unyo placed her hand on the ground as she no longer heard any explosions. She realized that the vibrations had stopped, so she wondered if it was really over. Unyo looked into the distance after that and noticed that her new heroes were walking along the path, who after this battle returned safe and sound. Lee Jun also carried a girl in his arms and walked towards the village. Unyo was very scared because could it be an intruder? She immediately began screaming and calling for help from the owner of the mountain, because it seemed she began to suspect that they had been betrayed right now. John, who was clearly not ready to fight in the village, was the most surprised by this. A large tiger immediately appeared behind Unyo, who had arrived at the girl's call. Before starting a battle with them, she still wanted to know what all this meant and how Li Jun would try to explain it all to them. He was extremely calm, so he said that he kept his promise and defeated the intruder. The tiger was also angry, so he began to growl and ask if they had deceived him. After all, they promised that they would completely destroy the invader. But Li Jun interrupted him and said that there was no talk of destroying anyone. He recalled that he promised to save the owner of the mountain and his village, and this intruder no longer poses any threat. The girl looked at him and was pleasantly surprised by this turn of events. After that, she jumped to the ground and stood next to Li Jun, practically preparing to take a fighting stance. The intruder's eyes lit up, but his eyes no longer posed a threat. There was no anger in them. The tiger and the girl were shocked, because they understood that now it looked like they would be fighting against two traitors at once. The intruder just glanced at Li Jun and simply waited for further instructions from him. She then bowed her head as a sign of respect, which surprised Onyo. Li Jun smiled and asked if this was enough to make sure that he was telling the truth. The village was saved, and now everything was as before. Now nothing threatened it. The intruder approached the guy and tried several times to pronounce his master's name, but nothing worked. Li Jun found it funny to watch, but still tried to teach him to treat himself correctly. But after several minutes of unsuccessful attempts, he concluded that the intruder still could not speak. At that moment, John came to them, called the guy, and was ready to join the company. Fenrir immediately began to growl at her, but the girl raised her hands, making it clear that she was not an enemy and it is also important to understand that the intruder only copied the image of that girl from the village, but after he was defeated by Li Jun, he became an ordinary guy whose image has changed a little. Now his name is Fenrir, and after John's words he immediately fell silent because he understood that he was still wrong now and there was no need to growl at her. Immediately after this he grabbed the princess and began to shake her in different directions like a toy. Li Jun smiled and said that everything was fine, don't let her worry so much, after all. These are children who want to have a little fun. But something told John that this was not the case at all. The next meeting was to take place near the lake. Unyo stood there and didn't understand why Li Jun called her here, to this particular meeting place. He looked at the lake and said that he had made a promise to the owner of the mountain that he would deal with the intruder and help with its restoration. And if he succeeds, 
Then he intends to take her away from here, which shocked her quite a bit. She looked at the guy and understood that he really knew what he was doing, but still she was very scared. Lee Jun reassured her, said that this would not happen now, but only when he came for her as soon as he dealt with his affairs in China, so he asked her to prepare for now. He took out his sword and held it tightly in his hand. Then he just threw it into the lake for fun, because why not do that, right? Li Jun laughed and said that the girl should take care of this sword for now until it comes back, and it would also be great if she performed one of her rituals here. Li Jun was very surprised, because so far she did not understand what the guy was talking about. But he wanted the sword to be safe, because he plans to give it to someone later. The next meeting was planned at the bazaar, to which Li Jun arrived with his team and local warriors were already waiting for them. They apologized for the last time, explaining that the foreigners who came to them before only tried to rob them all the time. Li Jun smiled and said that he understood everything perfectly and did not hold grudges against anyone, and John added that everything was fine and there was no need to worry. Onyo came closer to the guy and asked if they were going to leave already. Li Jun said that he needs to move because he really doesn't have much time, but he will be back soon and will definitely take her with him. The girl could not understand what this meant? Li Jun was a little upset by this because Anyo didn't remember their conversation yesterday at all. It seemed her side effects had gotten worse, so Jun said to find out about it from the owner of the mountain. John turned to the guy and suggested that he leave already and not linger here. Li Jun also said that the owner of the mountain must take care of his health because he really needs to be protected. Their road again passed through the cave. After that, the tiger's eyes only lit up and ordered Li Jun to hurry up. Their journey was very difficult, so Li Jun allowed Fen Rear to hunt the drake for a snack, so he immediately rushed into battle so as not to waste precious time. He then took the leap, as drakes were his favorite delicacy, after which Fen Rear caught fire and again looked like a monster who was definitely ready to tear his victim to pieces. The wolf he regularly turns into will not let him lie about this fact. The drake noticed the attacker, so she also quickly began to growl and react to the situation. She launched her magic blaster and pointed it towards Fenrir. The wolf felt his strength because it was indeed very similar to his fighting style. Therefore, he ran in a rage to attack his opponent, trying to destroy him as quickly as possible. And here again, a clash of two forces occurred between them. But quite quickly, Fenrir's energy began to win this confrontation and displace the drake's energy. And the wolf won this battle, receiving a portion of the delicacy for himself. Li Jun watched this process and was very surprised because now he even began to doubt that Fenrir had become weaker, because he was able to defeat the huge drake so easily. But he also understood perfectly well that this was all over and he could go back. Now you need to turn your attention to the lake, in which a lot of people drowned and froze. John looked at this lake and decided to ask the guy what he thought about this. After all, is this really the same catastrophe that he talked about, and will the whole world really end its existence in exactly the same way? Yes, but it will be much worse, but at least now they are able to minimize the damage and save a lot of people. Li Jun was well aware that there are many hunters and heroes who are in organizations like Asgard, where they will do anything to protect themselves and survive, so he is also willing to do whatever it takes, so there is no need to worry about it. This really calmed John down a lot, so she wiped away her tears and also promised that she would do absolutely everything in her power. After a not very pleasant conversation, it was necessary to start acting, so Li Jun said that the ice on the lake was strong enough and they could easily walk on it, so as soon as they crossed it, they would immediately reach their goal. But John still didn't quite understand where exactly their goal was, so the guy said that they were moving to the province of Gondun, where they would need to find someone there. John also wasn't sure if there were any survivors there, given the environment, but the guy didn't even doubt it. He holds back the black marble with a flow of mana, but at the same time he feels his powers becoming truly much stronger. Lee Jun clenched his hand into a fist and thought seriously because this is really his limit, because he clearly won't be able to hold back any longer. Therefore, it is very important not to waste time now, so Li Jun immediately suggested crossing this lake as quickly as possible to find his target. They drove up the main part of the road on Fenrir, but it was time to jump off him and talk. Li Jun said that now they do not have the opportunity to ride on a wolf, since it is not worth attracting too much attention. 
John smiled and said that it is much warmer here than at the beginning of the path, and again there are no monsters here, as before near the mountain. Li Jun laughed, because the girl herself guessed that they were moving in the right direction. While they were talking there, Fenrir just pointed his finger and said that they needed to move in that direction. The silhouette of a huge man appeared right in front of them, several times larger than them. John was surprised by this, because she thought that there would really be no one there, but the guy was not in the mood for jokes now, so he ordered her to prepare a weapon. John still didn't fully understand his intentions, because she clearly didn't expect anything like that now. Li Jun understood perfectly well that in such a place there was no way people would catch their eye. Therefore, he understood perfectly well that this was a giant that they would now have to try to destroy. Li Jun took out his weapon and prepared to attack. A few seconds later, the giant fell to the ground and the girl stopped in place. It was indeed very strange for her to realize that a giant appeared on the horizon like a simple person. But he behaved like a hungry animal, but Li Jun reassured her, because perhaps he just broke away from the group and should not underestimate him. Although those who are usually expelled from the group due to weakness or illness often end up in a similar way, so perhaps this giant was one of them which is why he is weaker than his colleagues. The girl was really scared to even think about it. However, suddenly something changed sharply in her eyes and she got scared. In the distance, the silhouettes of other monsters were visible. Perhaps these were the same giants. Li Jun also understood perfectly well that there was clearly much more than one of them, and John was still upset that they were not even given time to rest. But what surprised her even more was that the opponents were riding on ice drakes. It was really hard to even imagine. One of the giants came closer to them and decided to ask who they were and why they were hunting for this small rabble. The monster continued to look at the new newcomers and was a little perplexed. Li Jun smiled and looked at Fenrir, who was clearly special, because even in such a tense situation, he wanted to taste the drake. After that, the giant threw a large net in their direction, trying to catch the guys. John noticed this and was shocked, but she had to act quickly. She prepared herself for battle and was ready to attack. But Lee Jun put his hand on her shoulder and told her to calm down. The thing is that he does not feel any thirst for blood at all. The giant just grabbed Lee Jun in his net and looked at him. After that, his eyes lit up and he said that now Lee Jun and his entire team will have to come with him to check. The giants rode on drakes and led the children along. They laughed at them and discussed their affairs, which worried them much more than ordinary people. However, after a while, the leader decided to communicate with them, asking if they were local, so they immediately answered him that they came from distant lands. The giant calmly believed this, because he understood perfectly well that they had been captured with someone special, so he told the guys not to worry about their safety. Lee Jun was a little surprised because he understood perfectly well that they are different from the giants from the stories, because they are really very smart, unlike the records where they are described as simple monsters. So the guy decided to immediately ask if they could take them to Utgard. The giant looked at him and was very surprised because the guy already knew about their city, especially since they were heading there right now, so he told them not to worry about it and also added that they did not have the slightest desire to harm them harm. Therefore, the giant waved his hand and introduced himself, saying that his name was Shachi. He is a proud warrior of a great tribe of frost giants. Li Jun also smiled back and said his name. Suddenly, their conversation changed dramatically, and a real monster appeared in front of them, whose eyes were burning, and the desire to destroy only intensified. He was clearly furious, so he was already preparing to attack. After another second, he and his comrades were already lying on the ground. Shachi was very strong, so he dealt with the uninvited guests who dared to interrupt their dialogue. Li Jun was a little surprised, because the strength of his interlocutor was also really impressive. Shachi turned his head and also looked at the guy with suspicion. But then his mood changed sharply and he was ready to continue the dialogue. Li Jun was surprised because he didn't understand a little how to react correctly to all this, and how to make sure that the enemy did not get angry over trifles, so as not to provoke a conflict. The giant continued to look at the cage and became very serious. Still, it was clear that something was bothering him, so he asked the guys for permission to ask them a few questions, after which he could let them go. Li Jun suspected that Shachi was hiding something, but there must still be survivors in the city of giants. Shachi began to swear on the honor of his name, 
and also repeated several times that the guys could make their own choices and he would do absolutely nothing to them, regardless of their decision. Lee Jun extended his hand clenched into a fist in response, and he understood perfectly well that it looked like they would get to their goal much easier than they had planned, because right now they were heading there. John was also pleasantly surprised and shocked by what she saw. Shachi smiled proudly and said that now they had arrived at the place and this was their city. He began to admire it and greeted its new visitors. Everything was covered in snow, but in fact it looked really very beautiful. At first glance, one could assume that it was just a difficult-to-guard castle. Although this was partly true because the entrance to the city passed through a well-guarded gate where Shachi was the first to ride on a drake. People rejoiced at his arrival and immediately ran to meet him at the entrance. Lee Jun and John began to look around and analyze the situation. At the entrance, a guy and a girl also began to wait for them, who looked quite friendly. Another friend went to draw water from the well. John smiled because it really felt like they were in the Middle Ages. She looked around and asked Lee Jun not to talk about the fact that they had made this journey through space and time. Meanwhile, local residents looked at the new arrivals and were very surprised because why did people come to them locked in a cage had they really done something? Meanwhile, Fenrir became a real monster and became very angry with them. They were shocked, because they could not believe that there was a special one with them now. Could Shachi really manage to catch him? But Shachi told them not to worry, because they just wanted to visit the leader now, so let them get off the road for now. Li Jun laughed and patted his new friend on the head, telling him not to worry about this yet, because everything is really good and they are not in danger now. But Fenrir continued to repeat to himself that this was an enemy that must be destroyed immediately. Lee Jun was very surprised by these words because he couldn't believe it. Was there really an enemy there? The building at the main entrance began to shine and be wrapped in magic, which was truly quite an amazing sight. There were guards at the entrance whom Shachi ordered to inform him that he had arrived. After that, the doors at the main entrance opened and the giant began to walk along the path towards the leader, carrying in his hands a cage with new arrivals. The leader sat on his throne and waited for Shachi to come closer to him and report the stop. For now, he was shocked and angry, because he could not believe that Shachi had brought another uninvited guest to the city. Fenrir began to get very angry, so Lee Jun concluded that it was him that the guy was talking about. It must be him he fought with before he got to Mount Pectusen. Shachi knelt down and looked at the leader, saying that he had brought the werewolf and his companions to him. It looks like he wants to stay with them. The leader was truly shocked by such information because he refused to believe it. He started waving his arms because he couldn't believe that these two were able to defeat this werewolf, but Shachi said that it was exactly like that. The leader began to get angry and ordered the warrior to immediately leave the uninvited guests and go back. Shachi just looked at him and said that he made his promise that everything would be fine and no one would harm them, so he was extremely insistent that the leader should not do anything like that. The leader fell into even greater rage at such words, but Shachi continued to say that after the dialogue, these guys should return back safe and sound. Shachi bowed his head as a sign of respect and only asked the leader to preserve his name and rank as a warrior without breaking this promise. It got dark quite quickly, so people started turning on the lights in their rooms. The girl began to open the doors, but everything was closed. She understood that if she really wanted to open them, she could easily do it. But Lee Jun said that in this way, she would turn the entire tribe of giants against her. And even if she was so confident in herself, now she still continues to be in their possessions. John just waved her hands and was surprised by this answer, because aren't they locked in a cage right now and in trouble? John said that it doesn't matter how Lee Jun looks at this situation, but she feels very well that their leader still has really bad intentions towards them, especially after what Fenrir's reaction was to him. She was absolutely sure that the leader felt pressure on him, but she just watched as Fenrir warmed himself by the fireplace and thought what they would need to do now. Li Jun jumped on the bed and told her not to worry about this at all, because if they want to leave this place, they can do so at any time, but for now they just need to rest after such a difficult journey. He smiled and understood that apparently they were here for a really long time. Everything was on fire, the buildings were simply collapsing before our eyes. It was a terrible process that really leaves huge psychological problems in the future. Terrible monsters came who were ready to destroy everything that got in their way. 
Li Jun walked up and looked out the window because in the records of the demonic king, the war with the giants was described as one of the most terrible wars, but there were still nuances that he really could not understand. He was absolutely sure that their king was incredibly strong, but individually, almost all giants are inferior to humans in strength, so it is not clear how they managed to drive humanity into a corner. There was a fairly loud sound near the door. Li Jun had to look away from his thoughts and look in that direction. It was a little girl who brought tea to the guy. She laid out everything she needed on the table and began pouring the drink into a mug. It was clear that she was a little worried, because she began to stutter and repeat the same phrases several times, asking whether such a volume would be enough. Li Jun was sitting at a huge table with his girlfriend, but he became very curious. Are all new girls really accepted in this way? The servants refused and said that today was an exception, so Li Jun had a completely logical question. Why do this then? She crossed her arms and began to explain the situation to him. Li Jun smiled and told her not to worry, because now everything is fine and no one is watching her, so she can tell everything as it really is. The girl was surprised and frightened by this, but still still did not understand how this was possible. The thing is that no one had noticed the surveillance tools before. Li Jun smiled and said that this is a fairly standard magical tool, and if he were here alone and he might not even have guessed about it, however, he still has a necklace that belongs to Merlin, who is the strongest magician. Therefore, he got down on his knee and decided to talk to the girl, who had already said that her name was Siun, and also said again that everything was completely safe and no one was listening in on anything, so she had no reason to worry. However, once she left this room, she would still have to not tell anyone about this conversation. Siun told the guy that she had been here for more than a year, but many people had been stuck here for several years. It turns out that more than a year has already passed since people discovered Utgard, but still, Li Jun also decided to ask why then there is such a special attitude towards them now. Sion tightly clenched her hand into a fist and said that all this was thanks to the incredible strength of the guy, because giants really like strong people, and they are also glad that a special guest came with them. Fenrir just sat on a chair and listened a little to the conversation, where Seul continued to say that recently Utgard was attacked by the Nars, but at that moment, Fenrir quickly turned into a monster and killed many giants. After this, the king of the giants decided to fight Fenrir to stop him, so all the giants simultaneously confronted the guy and won. Li Jun now understood perfectly well that it was for this reason that Fenrir retreated towards Mount Pectison. He waved his hand and asked Sion to do a small favor for him, where in return he would give sweets, but the girl refused and said that she was not at all interested. Her look changed a lot and she was upset, but she still asked Li Jun for the iron because if she sold it she could buy medicine for her mother. Li Jun agreed without any problems, but in return asked her to find someone named Wan Hua for himself. She was extremely shocked by this proposal because was he really asking her to go and find Wan Hua now? But only Havada came to her mind, so she decided to clarify whether it was necessary to find him. Li Jun just smiled and said that this was exactly what he needed. Indeed, several days have passed since their arrival at Utgard Castle, and during this time the Li Jun group has done absolutely nothing. Every time they went for a walk at the same time, they were brought food, and they fully enjoyed life as if at a resort. John was already starting to get very annoyed by this because why were they here then? And also if the giants needed absolutely nothing from them, then why didn't they just let them go? Li Jun turned to her and said that thanks to this, they got a slight advantage and were able to practice at least a little. Isn't that great? The girl agreed with this, but still she preferred to die rather than live the rest of her days in a cage. Jun looked at her and hinted that he would definitely not let her get bored. After that, he prepared for the fight and said that now was just a great opportunity to demonstrate his strength. John was delighted because now can they really raise everything in this city to the ground and get out to freedom. The guy laughed and asked where she got such positive thoughts, because how could such a sweet girl strive to raise everything to the ground? It looks like she really doesn't like this place. She didn't deny this, because here they didn't even see people, but only giants, and besides, she doesn't like the king at all, whose behavior clearly infuriates her so she still suspects that something is clearly wrong here. Lee Jun really began to understand that it looks like the girl is right now, 
So now their main goal will be to try to figure out what is wrong here. And for this, a great idea would be to stage a show of force. He smiled and his eyes lit up so he insisted on fighting at least one round. John was shocked by such a proposal because all this time she thought that the guy was joking and she was not at all ready to fight him because she knew how strong he was. He stood opposite her and said that he understood what she was thinking about now because they had never fought seriously before. John also calmly understood this, but still did not understand why she needed to do this. Lee Jones saw her mood and was very upset that the girl didn't want to fight at all, so he asked her if she was really that unsure of herself and her abilities. John thought about it and was ready to cry. But she still decided to pull herself together and start a battle, so she swung her sword and prepared to also enter into a duel, saying that the guy would greatly regret such a challenge. Therefore, she immediately rushed into battle, adding that even if she did not win, she would definitely not give up very easily. Lee Jun smiled and also began to fight with her, saying that if victory really was his, then she would be owed. He swung his spear and sent the forces of fire towards her. John was ready for such a turn of events, so she tried to concentrate so as not to miss anything important. Her eyes lit up, so she was ready to continue the attack, saying that the same conditions would apply to Lee Jun if he was defeated. Meanwhile, snow continued to fall in the city, and there was a fairly pleasant atmosphere where nothing foreshadowed trouble. Suddenly their training went too far, and they either intentionally or accidentally hit the building with enormous force. Shachi talked with the other giants and laughed, because they joked about the fact that the castle had never been in ruins. But a second later, the explosion still occurred and the building was partially destroyed. A lot of time and effort will be spent on its restoration. Lee Jun was a little surprised because he and his friend clearly did not expect such an effect. Shachi, when he heard that the people he brought destroyed half of the castle's gardens, laughed even more. He was really interested in seeing the face of his leader to see his reaction. By uniting the tribes, he began to change. The leader demanded that he be called not a leader, but a king. And as soon as he began to mine iron, he immediately began to gather an army. However, no one knew who the war was against, and Shachi, who all the time fought for him only from noble motives, could not understand the motives of his leader. He just looked at the castle and told his comrade with a smile that he hoped that the leader really chose his enemies wisely. His partner suddenly started screaming and informed his commander that the path was starting to close right now. Commander Shachi understood that it seemed like right now was the right time, so he needed to start acting. Now a real preventive conversation will take place in the castle building. John sat opposite the huge bike as if on a date. He looked at her and tried to find the right words. But everything was completely different. She was called in order to explain that such behavior is a huge sin, to cause such harm to the castle gardens. But they also perfectly understood that their mistake was also in this, because initially they did not indicate to them their rights. So she immediately apologized for her behavior. John didn't know how much they knew about humans, so she decided to tell them that they have a tradition where they run around the forest and train. The giant understood everything perfectly well, but John decided to continue apologizing, saying that she was really very sorry that they had caused such damage to the castle gardens, so in the future, they would be much more careful. She looked at her interlocutor and said that she really wanted to correct her guilt, so she wondered what else she could do for him. The giant thought about it, because it would be quite good to compensate for this, so he asked her to tell her more about her team. After all, given what happened, he and all other residents of this city became interested in learning about them in more detail, so more information is needed. John smiled and said that she could implement it without any problems. Lee Jun fought her quite skillfully, although he gave in and tried to teach her. The girl also did not give up and put up her sword to protect herself from the blow. John missed several serious blows and was a little damaged, although she herself perfectly understood that she needed to hit much harder and more accurately in order to somehow resist the guy. She really had a lot of motivation to win, so the girl didn't think twice and immediately ran into a counterattack, after which the same explosion occurred, which destroyed the garden. As expected, nothing else could be expected from Lee Jun back then. Although he understood that they were now having a friendly duel, he still got used to the role quite well and did not calculate the strength of his blows. John saw that now was a pretty good opportunity to attack and tried to take advantage of it. 
so she immediately ran into the smoke. It was fundamentally important for her to strike and lose with dignity, since it was truly impossible to defeat such an opponent. After another second, another strong explosion occurred which put everything in its place. After that, Lee Jun stopped and calmed down. John did exactly the same. It was clear that she was upset that she had lost, but it was unlikely that she could seriously count on defeating the guy. Lee Jun smiled and told her that she fought really well and it was a pretty good fight. Nevertheless, he now decided to clarify whether she would do what he asked of her. John agreed to complete the task without any problems because she lost, but wanted to learn more about it. Therefore, Lee Jun asked her to pretend that she was cooperating with the city leaders and gather more information about them. John watched him carefully and listened to what he said. Meanwhile, security guards rushed to the scene and noticed that the gardens were burning. They were shocked because this had never happened before, since for all residents of the city this is a terrible sin. From the smoke, John's face could be seen standing over Lee Jun, who was on his knees and was broken and also mentally depressed due to his loss. The guards believed this, so they immediately ordered a doctor to be called for him after which Lee Jun was transferred to the ward and began to be examined as well as to find out what happened. The doctor analyzed his condition but noticed that there was absolutely no serious injury on the patient's body, only small scratches and minor wounds. Lee Jun smiled, although he understood that the doctor did not fall for this cheap game, but those giants definitely believed in it, so he continued talking to the doctor and asked him to help heal the wounds. So the doctor put his hand on his shoulder and began to treat him. A second later, the wounds on the body began to heal. Lee Jun understood that the doctor, with his technique, not only stopped the bleeding, but also completely healed all the wounds. The doctor was happy that the patient felt better, and a girl who was also watching the process ran up to him. Lee Jun said that it was indeed a great honor for him to meet him, because it was the same Vata. The doctor was a little surprised because he was not used to strangers immediately addressing him by name, even though he had not introduced himself. Therefore, his view and form of communication changed dramatically, and he also decided to find out more from the guy, how did he know about him? Lee Jun decided to play dumb and say that he didn't know anything about him, so the doctor began to believe that the guy found out about him thanks to Sion. Lee Jun smiled and said that actually no, but it would be better if they could get to know each other better, but Avada only got angry because another stupid person was sitting in front of him again. He turned around and told Seon that they were leaving and wouldn't even waste their time on it. Lee Jun got out of bed and said that he was still sick. Do they really want to leave a patient here who hasn't been treated properly? Kavada thought about it and told him not to pretend, because he did not at all look like a person who needed treatment. Lee Jun told him that the wound is not external, but why is he diagnosing him like that even if he didn't even examine his organs? Vata was shocked because he was really to blame for this situation. He took Lee Jun's hand and first decided to take his pulse. The doctor's eyes changed again and he fully concentrated on the process. After that, he took his hand back and said that he still saw absolutely no problem, so he got ready to leave. And closed the doors behind him. Lee Jun was even scared for the first time because he definitely felt the magical power that came from him, so there is absolutely no doubt that he is a hunter, but has Havada really not yet received his abilities? After checking Lee Jun's organs, he still didn't notice anything. But how is this possible? After all, this is definitely Vata. Jun thought about it after all. This is the same traitor of Grab, who was one of the surviving hunters of China, and also the one who healed many heroes and the Demon King, after which the Demon King activated the flow of mana in the lands of the giants. Many say that he experienced a rush of mana at the beginning of the activation, so it may have been something similar to a side effect of dragon blood, but the Demon King was able to go through all of this as with the help of a grasp that was so good that it could even be called a god. Li Jun thought about it and was a little scared because had he really come too early and Nevada had not yet been able to achieve that power due to lack of time? John approached the guy in the meantime and wanted to talk. The guy was happy about her arrival because he thought that she would have problems because of the situation in the garden, but fortunately everything worked out, so he decided to ask her how everything went. John smiled and said that everything was just great. She looked at the guy and said that the giants now want her to become their hired warrior. 
John told the guy that the ice giants, who call themselves Nars, are now building a city nearby and are looking for an opportunity to attack Utgard. Well, the locals want to protect the city from them and other monsters, but they don't have many warriors, so they ask for their help, Li Jun thought, because the number of giants is much less than he could imagine, and because of the Nars, it continues to decrease. It must be difficult for them to harm humanity because of this. John said that the giant also asked her a lot about the outside world, namely about the population, culture, and armed forces. Li Jun looked at her and praised her for doing such a good job, but John also wanted to know if the guy was able to get any information. So far, he hasn't succeeded yet, but he will definitely try to do it. After that, they immediately had to return as soon as they found the people they came for, but accepting an offer to become a warrior is really impressive, so he decided to ask John if this is the main reason why she is going to stay here. She said that the giants do not offend people here at all, but if people leave Utgard, they will simply die. Perhaps that is why they do not leave this place, and we need to find a way to help them. Lee Jun was shocked by this answer because he planned to take several giants with him after he found Grab. After that, he wanted to escape from Utgard, but the girl was much kinder than him, which pleasantly surprised him. Sacrificing the few for the sake of the many sounds good enough, but Lee Jun practically did what he hates most. By signing the contract as a mercenary warrior, he was able to stay here with other people. They looked at him and were very surprised because they couldn't believe what the wolf's owner had forgotten here. They had to look away because they were really afraid and worried about themselves and their lives, because he looked very dangerous. Lee Jun felt this very well, but could not do anything about it because no one likes strangers and it seems they are not welcome here at all. However, Siun came running to them. She was very joyful and wanted to talk urgently. She thanked the guy for helping her mother, who felt much better. Lee Jun was very happy with this answer, but what came next surprised him even more. Dr. Kavada also came, who smiled and asked the guy how he was feeling. Lee Jun extended his hand and said that everything was already much better thanks to his help. Afterwards, they shook hands and thanked each other. Kavada said that the guy can find him at any time if he suddenly becomes ill, and he will see what's wrong with him and provide first aid. After that, they turned around and went in the opposite direction. Lee Jun clenched his hand into a fist as he was very angry. But still he calmed down and exhaled. He deliberately redirected the flow of his mana in his presence, but again he did not notice anything. Lee Jun understood perfectly well that Wada should have noticed that something was wrong here, but did he really understand something wrong about the old man? John noticed that the guy was standing really very sad and worried, so she decided to ask what was bothering him and how she could help. Still, he didn't answer, so she asked him not to worry and promised that they would definitely find the one he was looking for. Lee Jun was delighted to receive such support. After that, he looked at his girlfriend and suggested that she just collect more information about this place for now. Lee Jun approached the local residents and wanted to find out how many giants live here, where he was told that there are about 1,000 of them. But his second interlocutor said that this is complete nonsense, because there are definitely tens of thousands of giants here. Li Jun also wanted to ask them who the Nars are. The guy looked at him and said that in Utgard there were always much more giants, about four times. But at one point skirmishes began between the giants, and one of the leaders took a group of giants and left after which they began to call them Nars. Li Jun also really needed to know what happened to those who did not stay here and become Nars. They all died fighting each other. Some of them were even struck down by some kind of disease because they could not adapt to these lands and simply died from diseases. Li Jun understood what all this meant due to infectious diseases and tried to collect as much information as possible in this way. Therefore, he decided to clarify whether other strangers came here besides them. But they told him that they had already come here, which surprised and frightened him very much, because he began to think about only one person. What if it was the Demon King? After all, the diary said that he visited China and arrived in the City of Giants. Perhaps he can find some traces of its existence since Li Jun is now in the past. The guys told him that there were several people here, but they left and they had never seen them with their own eyes, so these were just the words of the giants, who also found several intruders, who immediately disappeared after that. Lee Jun smiled, because this is really valuable information, 
and you will need to find out more about it from the giants, and he also invited the guys to tell them about what was going on outside. After the conversation, he began to walk back, since everything went really very efficiently. Li Jun understood perfectly well that there was clearly someone here who was able to stop the spread of infection among the giants, someone who is very often called to this castle, so the grab he is looking for must turn out to be this person. The guy understood perfectly well that only giants could give him information about this. Shachi looked at Li Jun, who began to approach him, and he started laughing hard because they destroyed the gardens in the castle. He thanked him for helping the giants, despite the fact that they are not even of the same species, because the dwarves and other guys from Baneer hate them, and he also said that today he would need to go outside. Li Jun didn't quite understand what he meant. Shachi explained that the Nars' attacks were becoming more frequent, so they needed to fight, and also invited Li Jun to join them to help. The guy just looked at him and smiled because he didn't mind at all. Therefore, the giants, together with Li Jun, left the castle territory to stop another attack by the Nars, and they encountered a very unexpected guest. After all, the leader of the Nars tribe named Srin appeared before them. He got off the drake and took a few steps towards him, after which Shachi did exactly the same. They met halfway to negotiate. The leader looked into Shachi's eyes and tried to convince him to withdraw his troops and take his side. Shachi was slightly frightened, because he did not expect that now he would have to confront the leader, because no one was expecting his appearance. Li Jun also realized that this could be quite dangerous, since this giant's name is Srin. He is a real monster who is also extremely strong. He is much stronger than Shachi. Perhaps Srin can easily measure his strength with the king of the giants from the castle. So Li Jun thought about learning their language, because he could not understand at all what they were talking about. Therefore, while he was watching them, the fallen angel awarded the guy a new skill and gave him knowledge of the Estonian language. The leader could not understand why Shachi did not want to change his decision. But he started shouting and saying that he saw no point in listening to a traitor. The leader was shocked, because was he really going to continue listening to this stupid king? He was very sorry that their tribe had fallen so low, because they disgraced the name of the warrior, and he also corrected Shachi, saying that they were not traitors, but only considered themselves the masters of Utgard. Shachi could not stand it and began to shout at him, ordering him to stop immediately and not say anything, since he was no longer able to listen to it. His eyes lit up and he immediately took out his weapon, preparing to fight. The leader agreed with him, because they were used to solving issues in a completely different way, after which he also prepared for battle. Suddenly Srina's gaze went to the side. He saw a special one named Fenrir and was shocked because he really obeys people and is also a human. Srin was very interested in watching this, so he said that they would definitely have to see each other next time. Shachi could no longer stand it, so he began to shout at the leader, ordering him to immediately stop talking and start fighting. He didn't mind, although he understood that his opponents were now driven by emotions of rage. Therefore, a battle immediately began between them, where Shachi was the first to strike and engage in battle. Sarin was also furious, so he concentrated and rushed to attack. From what he saw, fear could be seen in Shachi's eyes. Since Srin hit him with his hand with great force, which Shachi clearly could not have expected. He looked at Shachi, who was in shock and realized that he had just won an easy victory. Then he stopped and smiled and said that they would definitely see him again and fight. Well, also with a special person and his special person, Shachi was shocked. So he simply silently listened to the leader's words and looked into his eyes, which greatly surprised his warriors, who requested at least permission to pursue them. It was hard for Shachi to say anything, because he understood that Srin was much stronger than him, and going there would be tantamount to death. Therefore, he turned to the soldiers and explained that as long as Srin was with them, there was no point in fighting them, because they would only lose soldiers if they entered the battle. And although this is sad, the leader himself directly ordered to avoid clashes with him, so the Nars army simply left the territory on their drakes. The giants were very upset by this decision, because they could not believe that this was possible. They all understood perfectly well that they had just been humiliated once again, so they returned home with such a feeling of helplessness. Li Jun understood that they looked really defeated, but Shachi was right, because the giants may be hostile and enjoy battles, but their strength difference is too great. 
The Nars chief and Shachi looked like they were very close before, like close friends or brothers. Li Jun thought, is it really a person standing in their way? The giants must have definitely noticed him, but they don't seem to care, but what is he doing there? Li Jun pointed his finger at the guy and asked Shachi, who is he? This was a simple mercenary warrior, exactly the same as Li Jun and his girlfriend, who was in the service of Utgard. He turned to him and asked if he was still in search of medicinal herbs. The guy turned to him and said that they were exactly what he was looking for, which surprised Li Jun, because perhaps this was the one he had been looking for for so long. Shachi waved his hand and warned him that the Nars were wandering nearby and it was very dangerous to be here, so he invited him to return with them. The guy smiled kindly and thanked him for the offer, because he was just about to return, but he also decided to ask who was going with Shachi. The commander smiled and said that this was Li Jun, who was now Utgard's new mercenary. He also said that this was Dr. Quada and introduced him to Li Jun, who was very happy at this turn of events, because he was finally able to find him. Very quickly they arrived back at the castle, where John was already waiting for them, who already missed them quite a lot, in particular Li Jun. He came in and immediately noticed that the girl looked very happy, so she said that today while hunting she was ambushed by the Nars, but they got scared and started running away from her. Li Jun still told her that he had a completely different situation, so they didn't even fight because they met an enemy leader who was extremely strong. John was a little upset, but also said that there were also people among those who attacked her. Li Jun was very surprised by this because how is this possible? Among them was a Chinese who was able to deflect her blow and protect everyone, as if it were not a powerful blow with a two-handed weapon, but with a feather. In addition, she said that he used a spear, but it was longer than Li's, and also quite strangely shaped. The guy was surprised by this, because who could be the Chinese hunter who could easily repel John's attack? He couldn't even think that any other people could survive here, but still he also came across a person. John noticed that the guy still looked unhappy, so she decided to ask him what was wrong. Li Jun thought about it, because he wanted to go and talk with Vata, but he was worried that something might go wrong again, so he invited John to go with him to be on the safe side. She of course agreed, but she understood that even if she went, she would understand absolutely nothing in their language. But Li Jun took out his pendant and handed it to her, asking her to do a favor for him. He said that this was Merlin's necklace, which would easily allow her to understand their language, and he was absolutely confident that she could handle it. Meanwhile, there was a huge line of people entering one building. It was a hospital where everyone was screaming and calling for help from Vat, and the old doctor was panicking and simply asking the patient to be patient a little longer. Avata was completely immersed in the process, and understood that very soon the warrior would be able to come to his senses. Li Jun understood that in China, doctors who succeed in their field are called Wada, and now he understands perfectly why, but he still wondered why there were so many patients here. Still, despite them, he decided to approach and communicate with Havata. He turned his head and said that he was extremely busy right now and asked Li Jun to come over later. But he only took out a huge bag of magic potions and handed it to the doctor. He smiled and said that this should help, and also suggested that he use them as he saw fit. Vata was surprised, because there were too many of them and thanked the guy for his help. Thanks to the potions brought by Li Jun, Wada was able to heal a huge number of patients. And after all this, they had the opportunity to talk normally. Vada left the hospital and asked Li Jun to give him the opportunity to measure his pulse. But the guy didn't understand why he wanted to do this. Kavada said that perhaps he was deluding himself, but he couldn't shake the idea that he felt something strange after they shook hands. Li Jun was happy because he was finally able to find the guy he had been looking for for so long and kindly gave him his hand. Avata thought a lot after that. He looked at Li Jun and warned him that it might be a little unpleasant, but there were some things to check, which he had no problem agreeing with and didn't mind. After these words, Havat's eyes lit up. He held the guy's hand tightly and concentrated on the process. I immediately remembered the situation where Li Jun holds his hands on John's shoulders and transfers a flow of mana to her, which is not an easy process. The guy understood perfectly well that Havata was now using mana to check his pulse and his condition in general, but he did not feel any discomfort at all, as if it were his mana. After this, 
Kavata abruptly took his hand back because he was shocked and understood perfectly well that it looked like an unusual person was standing in front of him, the one he needed. Huata was shocked and even a little scared, so he asked Lee Jun if it was really him. The guy looked at him and understood perfectly well that Kavata was also the one he was looking for. Therefore, Huata decided to ask if Lee Jun had also studied qi cultivation, and he only responded by asking if Huata had studied mana flow, and how the first one was completely bewildered when he heard about the flow of mana. The second one had exactly the same condition. That is why their conversation moved back into the building since talking on the street was not at all advisable. After this, Lee Jun decided to find out how the guy was able to come up with the flow of mana, but Kwata explained to him that they call it key cultivation. But what do we mean? Are there really several of them? Therefore, Jun decided to find out who else besides his interlocutor knew about the flow of mana, no, or rather about the cultivation of key. Kavada said that people on the Nar side also know about this, Lee Jun immediately remembered the stories from John, who also met a person on her way during the battle and understood that the situation was indeed very strange. Therefore, the guy decided to ask if Kavada noticed something on him when he checked his pulse. He was surprised because Lee's blood was extremely thick and the flow of internal energy was unnatural, but still he noticed that he had not fully studied the guy and decided to ask if something was bothering him. Li Jun understood perfectly well that in front of him was the one who was able to heal the Demon King, so he could definitely be trusted. He said that he had problems while cultivating his internal energy. A huge amount of demonic energy released by the monsters flowed through his body, and it mixed with other energies of other origins inside his body, and transformed into black marble spheres. And when these balls begin to release strong energy his body begins to experience enormous pain. He looked at Havat and said that he had no idea what these balls were, but cultivating internal energy was absolutely useless. Kavata thought about it and realized that then he needed to take the next step. He looked at his interlocutor and asked his permission to re-examine the body, but this time in full, so he decided to warn him that it could be dangerous. Li Jun smiled and said that everything is fine and he is not worried. Therefore, Kavada asked him to lie down on the bed and take off his outer clothing. He understood that Lee must have felt like his organs were being torn apart, but he was able to bear it well. The guy just looked at him and wanted to know how it all went. Huada said that the black spheres inside the body are very unique. Usually, they absorb all the life energy of a person until he dies. But the spheres inside Lee Jun are completely different, because on the contrary, they stimulate the flow of mana inside him. Lee Jun was surprised because he didn't understand what this could really mean. Avada said that they really do not cause him much harm. But the reason why he experiences pain is because of the forced changes in the flows within the mana. However, he noticed that this is quite dangerous because the spheres become stronger along with him, which surprised Lee. Therefore, Huada warned him that if the spheres became stronger than Lee Jun at any point, they would simply suppress him as an entity. After this... He will become a true psychopath who will be consumed by the desire to kill. But surprisingly, with his unusual mental toughness, he is able to suppress it easily. Lee Jun decided to find out if the psychopathy that Kavada spoke about is connected with the one that haunts the Nars abandoned in the ice. Vada looked at him and sadly lowered his head. People on the Nars side are psychopaths, obsessed with the desire to destroy everything in their path and the cultivation of internal energy. Still, Lee Jun was indeed able to collect a lot of new information, which he has not yet understood, but still it will definitely be useful to him. He understood that the black spheres were safe and also helped him improve. It's really a natural process where you start to improve while facing danger, so he concluded that everything was fine. He wondered if the Demon King could learn about the flow of mana by studying qi cultivation. Lee Jun began to get dressed, but he knew that if this was really the case, then through qi cultivation in the future, he would also be able to improve his mana flow, so he needed to talk to the doctor even more. Vata didn't mind doing this, because he also has a few more questions regarding Li Jun. But first, it was necessary to completely close all the doors to the room so that there were no prying eyes and ears. Jun sat opposite him and asked about patients who did not even participate in battles, but then why are they all sick? Vata took a mug of coffee and said that there is too much energy here, 
where hunters under the supervision of patrons can benefit from such a place if they are used to energy. But ordinary people are not able to cope with such amounts of energy, which is why they begin to get sick. Is that why there are so many sick people here? The thing is that with the advent of the gates, lands unsuitable for human life began to appear all over the world. Before China experienced the gateification, Quada studied medicine in Europe and returned to his homeland after news of everything reached him, in the hope that he would be useful. Outside of these lands, everyone called them unrecoverable hellish lands and the realm of monsters. So he looked at Li Jun with fear in his eyes and decided to ask why he actually came all the way here and also wanted to know if the rescue group would come for him. Jun thought about it, because in history there was not a single mention of a rescue group. So he decided to tell the guy that there would definitely be no rescue group. His appearance changed dramatically after these words, and he became very upset. But Li Jun decided to cheer him up, because she actually already exists and is right here. Avata couldn't believe it, but Li Jun smiled and understood that for now it would be difficult for his interlocutor to even imagine this. Vata was depressed, so he asked Li Jun not to talk nonsense, because he perfectly understood that there were only two of them, but he said that Vata was clearly mistaken, since in addition to Fenrir, there are two more who have already shown the giants their strength, as well as one of they are not human at all, so it would be more correct to say that they are skeletons. Kavata understood that it makes no difference whether it is a group or one person, since nothing changes this, and the main problem is that they must save everyone. But will they cope? Li Jun replied that no. So Vada began to say why he even started telling him about this. But Li interrupted him and continued to say that he definitely couldn't handle it alone. Kavata understood that the guy was right now inviting him to join his team. Li Jun asked Vat to tell him more about the people on Narsov Island, since he would definitely need their help. Kavata began to get nervous, because this was really a rather ridiculous act. Because how can you talk about it if he doesn't know anything about them? Li Jun just smiled and said that this is precisely the reason he is asking, because the number of surviving hunters living in Utgard is too small, which means that most of them are on the side of the Nars, right? Havada thought about it and said that he did not know this, because he went out to collect medicinal herbs, and when he returned, he found out that most of the hunters had left Utgard. Li Jun tried to figure out who could be the person who could lead all these hunters, but absolutely no one came to mind. Havata's gaze reminds him of his past, because in it he feels despair from his powerlessness in the desire to save people, since Havata really wanted to help. In order to take all the people with them and escape, they need the help of these hunters, because they must prepare for the upcoming cataclysm and become even stronger. So he turned to Havata and asked him to teach him how to use qi cultivation. He was shocked by this because no one had ever asked him for anything like this before. Li Jun knew that if he could study it, he would be one step closer to the Demon King's power. Therefore, to implement this idea, it was first necessary to leave the castle grounds and go outside. And so the first training session went quickly enough, and having scattered the stones, they immediately finished. Vata said that he had erected a barrier around this area so that no flow of mana would definitely leak out. So even if they trained inside, no one would suspect anything. Li Jun looked around and asked if something like this was really necessary for his training. Vata said that this is another necessary safety measure, because internal changes require the absorption of energy around, and also during this process, due to huge changes in energy, one of the giants may notice this. And since collecting energy in one place is not an easy task, first they will need to put a barrier to the natural flow of mana around. But he began to worry a little because is there really something wrong? Li Jun said that everything was fine, he was just also thinking. Because all this time he was also feeling and collecting the energy that naturally flowed around. Huata was very surprised by this, so he asked the guy not to tell him that he collected energy without a special technique and also asked him to tell about his teacher and the special technique of internal energy that he was taught. Because this is impossible, but Li Jun was only surprised and asked what is so incredible about this. Huata said that Li Jun seemed to have an incredible ability to control internal energy, because although he felt that it was entertaining, it still exceeded his expectations. He smiled because this really made him happy. Li Jun was still at a loss because he didn't understand what made him so happy. 
Vata explained that although his technique was impressive, after listening to Lee, he began to realize that it really seemed possible, and they could actually solve this problem. Meanwhile, in the Nars camp, a dialogue took place between the hunters. One of them began to ask, Do they really think that there are no strong hunters among Utgard? That's right. The mustache convinced him of this. After that, the guy thought a little, because maybe they had already sent a rescue group. It seems that this is not the case at all, because if this was a rescue group, then there would be no chance that the Nars would not notice them, so most likely this is a small team that consists of a maximum of ten people. He couldn't understand what was going on here now and what he needed to prepare for. The guy understood perfectly well that for some reason he was very careless about everything, but now he cannot even imagine in which direction events will develop. He looked around and did not understand how quickly the hunters could become stronger. They reported to him that they were making sufficient progress, because having gone over to the side of the Nars, they had already been able to collect good supplies for themselves. The guy turned to his interlocutors and asked what concerns them directly. Therefore, they replied that this concerns them in the same way. The guy got a little indignant and started screaming because they should become stronger. After that, he pulled out his sword and swung it upward, shouting that they would definitely succeed. Therefore, his interlocutors also began to encourage the guy and say that they would also succeed. Each of them wanted to be part of something great. Therefore, each of them took out his weapon and they crossed it among themselves. Meanwhile, Havada called Lee Jun to another training session, where he performed exactly the same ritual that the guy had previously done for John. He closed his eyes and couldn't even imagine that a stream of mana could emit such a pleasant warmth, because when it creates a stream of mana, it feels as if a storm of mana is being created inside of him, tearing apart from within. Huata started to get nervous because things weren't going according to plan, so he immediately ordered Li Jun to focus on his rhythm because they were almost there and it was going to hurt. After this, a green ball began to form and a bright flash, which should have completely passed into Li Jun's body. He sat with his eyes closed and really began to feel it. Havada continued to hold him and asked him to try not to make any sounds, no matter how difficult it was. A second later, his gaze changed greatly and he was clearly shocked. He could not even imagine that everything would happen so horribly. The harmful energy is much stronger than he could have thought, because it not only absorbs the mana inside him, but also literally devours his body from the inside. Li Jun endured it like a real man and didn't make a single sound, even though it was really hard for him. Kavata understood that he should under no circumstances stop now, no matter how difficult it was for him. He understood that if he took on this and started, he must take full responsibility and finish everything he started. So he tried his best, working under the huge blue energy shield. Fenrir noticed all this and was quite surprised. Since there was real madness going on, where a light stripe began to appear from the blue energy shield, which was heading towards the sky. Shachi also took notice of this, as he began to sense a very dense source of energy in the icy lands, which surprised him greatly. He understood perfectly well that it couldn't be the leader or Havada, because both of them definitely didn't have enough strength, so the only one who could make such a volume of mana was Srin. He remembered a moment from that fight where Srin very easily passed through all his defenses and delivered an absolutely accurate blow to the head, which served as a warning. Shachi understood that he was experiencing quite unpleasant emotions then, but there was nowhere to go, so he began to shout and order all the Utgard warriors to prepare for battle. They looked at it, as well as at the huge energy ball, after which they were very surprised. One of them approached the captain and said that the leader clearly would not approve of this. Shachi understood that they were not going to tolerate this anymore. Therefore, he began to shout and ask how much more time do they need to hide and shake from the enemy's attack while waiting for the leader's orders. Where has the pride and honor of the Frost Giants gone? He was very confident in himself and his abilities, so he ordered to prepare for the fight, and also stated that all responsibility for further actions would rest only with him, because today they would definitely return the honor of the Ice Warriors. Everyone else knew that Shachi was saying really important things, so they bowed their heads and said that they were now completely under his command. After this, a very loud ringing occurred, which notified all residents that they were ready. The warriors began to gather and were ready to finally fight back and die for a good cause. Srin watched this flow of mana, 
and felt the energy even here, despite the huge purple flash in the sky, but still could not understand who was doing this. Was it really Shachi? He understood perfectly well that even Shachi was not capable of this, but then he did not want to believe that all this was the work of his sworn enemy. Is it really the head of Utgard who is doing something like this right now? Srin understood perfectly well that now the leader should be busy with other things, so he did not understand what was happening, so he began to suspect that it was a trap. However, his eyes lit up, because he understood that there would definitely not be a better chance, and he must definitely take advantage of it. So he began to raise his hands and order his entire army to gather immediately, because today they would finally capture Utgard. The flash only intensified with every minute and had already completely pierced the sky. It was a terrible sight which undoubtedly frightened and fascinated at the same time. Near this energy ball sat Fenrir, who was undoubtedly bored and waiting for his master. A huge army of people began to form near this ball, standing one opposite the other. The giants were tired of enduring and being afraid, so they were ready to fight for life and death. The warriors from Nars were also ready to show them their strength and become the new kings. Shachi came closer and decided to find out whose hands this matter was and what was happening. Srin understood that this was the work of Shachi, so he decided to ask him whether the leader was in this energy ball. Shachi was shocked by such a question, because he could not even think about the leader now. Srin understood that Shachi did not understand what was happening at all. However, Fenrir understood that he needed to somehow save the situation now, so he stood near this energy field and also prepared for battle. Seeing the enemy, he began to get angry because he understood that now his owner was really in danger. John understood perfectly well that Fenrir's reaction could only mean one thing, what was inside. This ball is located by Li Jun. Srin came closer to Shachi because now he did not understand what he was talking about. But after that, he got angry and prepared for a fight because now he definitely doesn't trust him and is definitely not ready to agree to a truce. He was very sorry that the leader was not here, but nevertheless, he was ready to put an end to the existence of the Utgard army today. Shachi took his axe and prepared to fight because he understood perfectly well that now he had no other choice. He began to shout and order the giants to prepare to attack. Sarin did exactly the same thing, after which the Narses ran to attack their former allies. The giants understood that today was the day that would decide absolutely the entire fate of this region. Shachi rushed into battle and was ready to destroy Srin, even though he understood that his strength was not enough. Li Jun, meanwhile, was completing his transformation process, after which his eyes opened and his gaze was quite cold and self-confident. He stood up and immediately looked to the side. Havata looked at him and was glad that the guy had woken up. He was very tired. It seemed that the guy seemed to have grown old, but he continued to tell the guy that this was not all, because he had such powerful technique and energy. But he didn't have the strength, so before he could even finish his sentence, he fell to the ground unconscious, so Lee quickly ran to his aid. He placed his hand on the doctor's neck to check his condition. Everything is fine. He is still alive and there are good hopes that he will come to his senses. He just spent a lot of strength and energy, so we need to help him. Li Jun understood that Havata had just sacrificed his youth in order to save him, so he swore that he would not let him die. He understood that the Demon King used the elixir to save Grasp, but since he doesn't have it, the only way to do it is to use the Apple of Eden, called Edward's Elixir, which Li Jun took from Odin just in case. Li Jun understood that Havata ordered to absorb all the energy inside the technique, so he would definitely do it. So he looked at him and said that Havata should also absorb this Apple of Eden. Li Jun stood and began to activate his mana flow and destroy the energy barrier. He straightened his arms and was ready to absorb all this energy to save the doctor. And although it was really very difficult, it was necessary to endure, since there were simply no other options. Meanwhile, the giants fought with the Nars who wanted to capture them. This was fundamentally important to defend one's honor. John understood that standing on the sidelines was not an option now, so she rushed into battle to help the army. She approached the huge giant from behind, who clearly was not expecting her, and then struck. John understood perfectly well that even though he was big, he still lacked strength. Suddenly her gaze abruptly switched in the other direction. She managed to notice the impending attack in time and put a block. From such a collision, she was thrown back a little, and it was clearly visible that she was shocked. 
After this, the stick flew in the opposite direction towards its owner, and he took her tightly in his hands. The guy began to laugh and be happy that they met again, and he also praised her for still being strong. John looked at him and understood perfectly well that he was much stronger than the giants. So she started screaming and calling the princess for help. The princess immediately rushed into battle and was ready to give her life for the girl. She also looked towards where her opponent was. Then she turned around and stopped near the hostess who stood opposite the enemy. He was shocked because he could not even imagine that there would be a monster near her. She ordered the princess to guard the area because now she would be fighting this man, so her main task would be to make sure that no one interfered with them. The princess just smiled and said that she would do it without any problems. After that, she left the area and left the battle area clear. John smiled and said that in that case she was ready to begin. Her eyes lit up and she was completely ready to show everything that Lee Jun had taught her. Mustache just laughed and said that now everything is starting to become much more interesting than it might seem at first glance. Srin continued his battle with Shachi, who clearly had no intention of giving up. Now in this confrontation, one will clearly die and the other will live. Srin was simply furious, so he used all his hatred also on ordinary opponents who came in his way. He smiled and praised Shachi for becoming much stronger. He decided not to exchange compliments, so he said that Srin remained at his previous level, after which another very strong explosion occurred. And then another one, which clearly could not pass without a trace. Shachi was injured and received enormous damage to his body, which greatly shocked and frightened him, because he understood perfectly well that if he died now, then most likely his army would lose. Since their last battle, Shachi has trained a lot, but the difference in strength is still very large, as expected from the strongest warrior of the giants. He started yelling at Srin and asking why he was still such a revered warrior when he betrayed his own people. Then Shachi jumped up and rushed into battle. He couldn't understand why Srin had betrayed them. Srin was ready to continue the battle and wanted to destroy Shachi so that he would not ask such unpleasant questions. The blast wave made Srin feel the full power and threw Shachi back. Srin began to scream and explain that he no longer had the strength and desire to listen and watch him play the king. Maybe Shachi doesn't know it yet, but he destroyed everything that was dear to them. From such words, Shachi was quite shocked and surprised because he clearly did not know this, but still continued to fight without losing his vigilance. He made a sharp blow that hit his opponent's head. Srin was surprised and looked away. After all, his weapon fell to the ground and he wanted to quickly pick it up. Not having time to do this quickly, he hit Shachi with all his strength, who ran to take it away. Srin was very angry and wanted to deal with his former comrade, who refused to come over to his side. Srin did not give up trying to reason with Shachi, telling him that his best friend and Shachi's father, named Ovaldi, was killed by the leader. Shachi stopped and was simply shocked, because he had never known about this before. Srin ran up to him and started screaming, saying that it was the leader who killed Ovaldi. Shachi's face changed. He was completely depressed. Traces of the energy field also appeared near his body. The energy field was about to explode right now. What happened a second later? Srin was scared and surprised. Well, when he was there, absolutely everyone was shocked, including John and his opponent. The energy field was extremely strong and blinded absolutely everyone around. After the explosion, Lee Jun was visible through the smoke, standing in the center of this ball. He was extremely upset because absolutely nothing helped. Li Jun looked at Vat, who was lying unconscious and had no more strength. Huada grew old and actually sacrificed himself to help Li Jun. The guy watched him and realized that his condition had now improved a little. It seemed that everything had gone exactly as he had planned, because the Apple of Eden is a treasure, many times more powerful than the elixir, but it looks like it barely saved his life since Li Jun doesn't feel the flow of mana at all. But he didn't understand why this was happening. Maybe the whole point was that he absorbed the effect of the Apple of Eden while collecting mana. He squeezed his hand tightly and began to suspect that perhaps this is why he now feels such a huge flow of mana. Lee Jun collected his thoughts and realized that it looked like right now he could easily defeat Hercules. But suddenly he was surprised and frightened because he did not understand what these streams of mana were around him. He was shocked because there were tens of thousands of them and he did not understand what was happening. At that moment, John ran up to him, wanting to help and make sure everything was fine. John smiled and asked if everything was okay with him. 
But suddenly, the fallen angel began to express his contempt for Li Jun, which surprised him very much because he did not understand why this could happen, but also all his indicators improved, including Hyun Mu's level. The warriors were shocked that there was an ordinary person in the energy field, so they decided to immediately rush to the attack, because now this is a great chance and opportunity for them. But a second later they were completely destroyed. Li Jun lit up like before every fight and understood that he needed Hyun Mu now. Now it was a completely different skull than a simple keychain on his hand, so he began to wait for further instructions from the guy with a smile. He approached Li Jun and asked him to trust him, asking if he wanted him to destroy these giants. But the guy just smiled and said that since Hyun Mu had changed quite a lot, he should take Vat to a safe place. Hyun Mu looked at him and said that he would fulfill his wish without any problem. Li Jun understood that Vata would now be safe, so now was the time to deal with his opponents. Therefore, without wasting a second, he also jumped into battle, since he himself understood that he had become happier. Li Jun looked like a real demon, which he partly was, and also wanted to destroy all opponents in his path. Srin had already come closer to Shachi, who was in a state of shock, after which he swung his fist and wanted to destroy him. But Li Jun managed to come to his aid in time and strike back, which definitely shocked Sri. This caused his opponent to fly several meters to the side, but it is still worth recognizing that striking after you have told your opponent the story of who destroyed his father is a rather wrong decision because you could have negotiated and lured him away to your side. Shachi watched Lee Jun help and was shocked that the guy was able to throw him so far. Lee Jun had become much stronger compared to their last meeting. His eyes were burning. He was ready to destroy his opponent right here and now. The princess, meanwhile, also destroyed opponents on her way. Li Jun looked towards Fenrir and said that he could do as he wished. After this, Fenrir caught fire and was ready to rush into battle because he was truly overwhelmed with hatred. So he quickly turned into a wolf and was ready to fight a little. Then he quickly jumped and left Li Jun who was still standing still for a while and thinking about what to do. He looked towards the hunters and invited them to start talking. There were three of them and they were all ready to fight. Their commander asked Li Jun who he really was and what he needed. The guy understood perfectly well that they definitely should not be underestimated, because they are all heroes, and the two behind are not inferior in strength to John. Li Jun decided to act cautiously, so he said that he would like to ask them something and find out who they are. The commander's name is Yubi. Li Jun was surprised, because he didn't know anyone with that name, but he also understood that someone with similar abilities must have been in the Demon King's records, so Li Jun took out his weapon and said that he would ask him one more thing. He looked at him with hatred in his eyes and asked why he decided to betray people. Was it really because they were not hunters? Yubi began to get angry and panicked because he did not betray them and tried to convince his interlocutor of this. Then he jumped, and he immediately rushed into battle because this was their fate and all this is done primarily for the highest good. Li Jun immediately entered into battle with him, because he did not believe a single word he said. Yubi was amazed by the guy's strength, so he retreated a little after missing the blow. Jun started shouting at him and asking how great is it to betray people. Yubi shouted back that he and Srin had an agreement, and if the king of Utgard was defeated, he would help them restore China. Li Jun continued to attack him and shout, because he could have made the exact same agreement with the king of Utgard. Yubi stood with a weapon and waited in horror for the approach of his opponent. When Li Jun approached him, Yubi was able to dodge and stand behind him, so Jun immediately called Hyun Mu and ordered him to give him the equipment. They continued their battle because Jun wanted to destroy his opponent, and Yubi would be nice to try to survive. Li Jun then made a very strong strike with his fire sword, which caused Yubi to fall to the ground. When the equipment arrived, all Li Jun had to do was pick it up. But at that moment a second hunter appeared, rushed into battle and said that Li Jun was now trapped. The guy really didn't expect this, so he was shocked, but he had to make a decision immediately. Yet he gripped his spear very tightly, after which Li Jun began to float in the air and tried to choose the most effective angle of attack for himself. He turned in the air and hit his opponent with enormous force, which he clearly did not expect. Li Jun understood that it was better for them not to get in his way, so he threw them very far away with a shockwave. 
Yubi decided to continue the dialogue with the guy, saying that he would never side with the king of Utgard. After all, he has killed countless people simply because of some kind of infection, so it is completely pointless to work together with such a person. Li Jun thought about it. Is he really talking about the incident that only hunters know about, the one that happened after the death of Vat? Now this does explain why there were so few survivors in Utgard and why the hunters betrayed him, but he was still angry. Li Jun said that he needed it to restore China, but he betrayed them. Yubi started screaming and saying that he had absolutely not betrayed anyone. Now they, with their entire team, prepared to attack the guy in order to close his mouth and destroy him. Li Jun understood that now he did not know the whole situation, so first he would need to defeat them, and only then he could talk to them, so he suggested with a smile that they should attack. Shachi also continued to dialogue with his opponent, who told him that Ovaldi noticed that the leader was planning something. The leader wanted to turn this land into Jotunheim. Shachi was surprised, because he didn't understand what he meant now. Loki wanted to completely cleanse these lands and make them the lands of giants, so he planned to destroy all creatures except giants, and Ovaldi tried to stop him. Shachi was filled with hatred, but he could not understand why this had to be done, and he also did not understand why Srin was telling him about this only now. He swung his hand and rushed to fight him again. Srin understood that the enemy was serious, so he was a little shocked, because it seemed like he didn't really want to fight right now. Shachi hit him with great force, but Srin managed to block his blow, but Shachi still could not leave the thought of only one thing. He couldn't understand why Srin was telling him about this only now. Why didn't he say this before? Srin understood perfectly well that now he could not afford to lose another friend, because he was too loyal a warrior of the giants, so he was not sure whether Shachi could betray the leader, knowing that he killed his father. He quickly released the hold and threw Shachi away and also explained to him that even with all this information received, his body still spoke for itself. After this, Srin rushed to the attack, and he hit Shachi with all his might, who was still in a state of shock. But is this what real friends do? Shachi received a huge amount of damage and began screaming in mental and physical pain. Srin made a knockout blow and placed Shachi on his hand. He decided it would be best if he slept until this was all over. Then he heard a loud scream that made him stop. Srin looked behind him but could not see anyone yet. All that caught his eye were the bodies of already dead warriors, which continued to lie on the ground. It was Li Jun who was smiling and looking at Sri. His opponent immediately caught fire because he understood that now it would be really very interesting. Srin just looked at him and also understood perfectly well that now he was a special person. He knew that Li Jun would be much more dangerous than Shachi, so he should not be underestimated. Although, after thinking a little, he understood that the guy was just as dangerous as Loki. After these thoughts, he became very angry. But there was no other choice, so he tuned in and was ready to fight, since he needed to end this once and for all. He activated his superpowers of confidence, which he saved at the time of the battle with the king, but now nothing can be done. Li Jun showed him his hand, and then he calmed down and waved his hands again, saying that he did not intend to fight and now he was ready to give up. Srin was shocked by this answer. John also didn't know how to react to such a situation and was very worried. All the other warriors who fought for Shachi were at a loss. Yubi sat on the ground and received a dose of medicine. Li Jun gave them to him to heal his wounds. But Yubi didn't understand why he should do this. Li Jun just looked away and said that he had no more reason to fight. The Utgard commander is currently unconscious, and also he now understood the main reason why people chose the side of the Nars. So now he is also a simple mercenary who is leaving this battle. Srin was at a loss as he expected that this would be a very difficult fight. But still he smiled and said that it was just wonderful. The Nars began to rejoice because they had just won. And the warriors who fought for the giants were at a loss. Srin ordered not to kill them because in this war there is already enough bloodshed of frost giants. Li Jun looked at them and said that he would be happy to watch their exploits, so don't let them down. Yubi was also surprised by such actions on the part of the guy. Therefore, the rest of the team wanted to meet him and chat. Srin said that from now on they will advance towards Untgard and destroy the king, Loki. All the other warriors continued to rejoice and rejoice because this is what they have been achieving for so long. But Li Jun continued to feel a little sad because the fallen angel was unhappy so he began to suspect that maybe it was because he heard the name of King Utgard. 
Sri approached him and decided to talk to the guy, because he was really interested in why he retreated, so Lee Jun explained to him that first of all, he was still just a mercenary. He then looked at Srin and smiled and said that if he paid him well, then perhaps he would take their side. Srin smiled and said that they could agree without any problems. The Nars army then continued its march to Utgard, while Lee Jun remained with his family for now. John started asking if he was okay, but the guy just smiled and asked if there were any problems. He started putting on his t-shirt and asked if he hadn't told her from the very beginning that for the most part, they weren't on anyone's side. They have already achieved the goals they set before entering China, and hunters like Yubi and his team will be able to help the remaining people in Utgard without any problems. This is the best outcome of events. John smiled because she really began to understand what he was talking about. The Nars offensive was truly successful, and they were able to enter the castle very quickly. Since most of the people lost the battle with the giant warriors, and also because the Nars retained most of their forces, they were able to easily penetrate into the city. Li Jun looked at Vat, who was already able to open his eyes and asked if everything was okay with him. He was very happy that he woke up, but Kavata seemed scared. He turned his head to the side and did not want to talk. Vata saw the ruins that occurred in Utgard, and also that the castle is now ruled by the Nars. This made him extremely angry. He started yelling at Li Jun and asking if he was really a traitor from the very beginning. Li Jun was shocked by this question because he didn't understand why Huata was saying that. He smiled and said that although it was a little late, the rescue team had indeed arrived. Vata quickly calmed down and decided to ask what he meant. Li Jun showed him the hunters with whom they had already become friends. He ordered Yubi to gather all the people from Utgard, and if they saw the passage, then let them immediately leave this fortress. Li Jun smiled and looked at Vat, because now he decided to ask him to help them a little, because if he is with them, he will be able to gather people without any problems, since they trust him. Kavata understood perfectly well that he was in vain to get excited, since Li Jun really wants to save people, and although he did not fully understand what was happening, he was still ready to help. Li Jun thanked him and said that for now he will return to his mercenary duties. Vada stopped him and wanted to ask him something before the guy left. Namely, he was interested in knowing Li Jun's well-being. The guy clenched his hand into a fist with all his might. And then he smiled because he was starting to feel really amazing. But now he had a new mission in which he had to get rid of the imposter in 15 minutes. The part of the castle where the fighting took place was on fire, so people left its territory through special paths. Yubi led them out and showed them the way. Wada was very worried about Li Jun and wanted him to be very careful because the king is extremely strong. Loki, meanwhile, continued to sit on his throne and prepare. Srin and his team of warriors came into his room, who were absolutely not ready to talk peacefully. Loki looked at them and asked how they dared to come to the castle, and also wanted to find out from them the name of the traitor. Srin was ready to fight and said that now it was his turn to become the new king. Loki looked at him and understood perfectly well that it would have been better to destroy Srin when he had this opportunity, but he ignored it. Li Jun and the girl came here to also watch what was happening and were very surprised that Loki was really very calm, even despite the fact that there were hundreds of giants standing next to him, so they began to suspect that he had some kind of trump card in his sleeve, which he will be ready to use very soon. Srin smiled and asked if Loki really regretted that he could not kill him, just like Ovaldi. Loki also laughed at this joke. He knew full well that Ovaldi was the reason for his defection. Srin started shouting and insulting him because he was really his good friend. So he immediately caught fire and was ready to fight. Loki even praised his interlocutor for his good physical shape. And I gave him a like, which you can also put under this video now and also subscribe to the channel. Besides, if you write a positive comment, I will be very pleased. Everyone constantly wondered why Loki had a coffin in the room because no one could ever understand it. How suddenly a hand began to come out of it, and a huge monster appeared, which was clearly not ready to talk now. He broke the window and immediately jumped out of it. He then landed on the ground and was furious, after which a huge number of giants without self-awareness appeared, who now guarded Loki. Li Jun realized that they were very similar to those he met for the first time in the forest. Loki continued to laugh because now the numerical advantage was on his side. Srin started yelling at him because he couldn't understand what Loki had just done. 
Li Jun heard that most of the giants died due to an infectious disease, but isn't that true? After all, these giants really are simply on a different level than those he saw in the world of ice. They are extremely strong, and also they have no consciousness, and when they go on a rampage with the desire to destroy, they will become very obedient to the king. So now everything has become obvious. The king sacrificed his people in order to create an army. Loki laughed, because he needed an army that would obey only him, which he managed to do. Surin could not listen to this, so he immediately rushed into battle. He was furious, so he wanted to destroy his opponent right now. Loki continued to laugh, because he understood that he was much stronger and wanted to prolong the pleasure a little. Then he swung and was ready to meet his opponent. Srin was shocked as he received a blow of enormous force, which had the same effect as an electric shock. Loki's power was indeed very strong. It was something similar to Li Jun's energy field, only much stronger, which threw Srin far beyond the palace grounds. Loki did not hesitate to break everything around him, and also called on his loyal soldiers to help. He ordered them to completely destroy their enemy. The giants prepared for battle without any problems and wanted to destroy the enemy as soon as possible. There were just a lot of them, so we had to somehow deal with them. The Nars warriors were shocked by this development of events, because Loki was able to disable his opponent with just one precise blow, so they did not even know what to do now. Suddenly a hand appeared and began to make its way into the room. It was Srin, who was extremely angry and was preparing to destroy his archenemy. He started shouting and ordered the Nars to immediately deal with the leader who had lost his pride. They were very happy to see him, so they prepared to attack and help him without any problems. Li Jun was getting ready to fight, but John wanted to at least get an explanation from him about what was happening right now. So he told her that Loki needed a personal army. And it looks like he reassembled the giants for this purpose, but the girl couldn't believe it, because did he really destroy his own people and conduct experiments on them? Li Jun said that this is a maddened king who only sees his people as tools, so he is a real monster. The giants were truly terrible because they had absolutely no consciousness, as well as empathy. Their gaze was empty. All they wanted was to destroy their opponents. Therefore, one of them ran up to the giant from the Nars army and bit him severely and he tore off a piece of his clothing. The thing is that the reassembled giants have no consciousness, which is why they attack like crazy berserkers. If this continues, the Nars will not be able to win, so there is only one option left. Li Jun looked in their direction and understood that he really had no other choice. Loki continued to laugh at his opponents, who had no idea who they were going to fight with. Li Jun, meanwhile, fully charged his muscle high spear with mana and prepared to fight. Now his main task was to defeat the king after which he jumped and prepared to implement this idea. Compared to other giants, he seemed very small, but he would indeed cause a lot of problems. Li Jun swung his hand and prepared to hit Loki with all his might. He just looked in the direction of this little man and became extremely serious, although at first glance Li Jun could bring him about as many threats as one ant could for a person. Still, the force of his blow was quite crushing, which Loki immediately felt on himself. The smile on his face practically disappeared, he only told Li Jun that he had been watching him for a long time. Therefore, he prepared to strike back at him, saying that he felt that his mana was much stronger than that of everyone present. He swung his fist and hit it with all his might, since he didn't need unnecessary problems from people. Li Jun saw the shockwave coming at him, so he prepared to block it and strike back. But still after that, he began to panic because he simply did not have time to dodge her. Li Jun turned his gaze to the side and became even more wary, but it seemed like this was a necessary opportunity. Fortunately, he managed to avoid such a blow, and the blast wave simply headed towards the wall of the room. Loki was shocked by what was happening because for the first time he met a creature on his way that was capable of reflecting his releasing blow. Shachi came into the room who helped Lee Jun escape from the blow and clearly wanted revenge. He was full of hatred, and tears appeared in his eyes. Shachi understood that now he needed to take an important step, Li Jun noticed him and started shouting in his direction. But his comrade smiled and said that now he leaves the showdown with the giants to Li Jun. He is ready to take the baton and take revenge. But a second later he fell exhausted to the ground, something that had never happened to him before. Srin was shocked, so he turned and started shouting towards Shachi, trying to bring him to his senses. 
Loki laughed because he understood that he was a real weakling who could not even be asked for a favor, so he promised Shachi that as soon as the fight was over, he would turn the first one into his soldier. Li Jun started screaming and ordered Fenrir to act carefully. Fenrir hated Loki with all his heart, so he did not miss the opportunity to fight him and take revenge. He began to rush around in a circle, causing Loki a lot of damage which he clearly did not expect. But still he laughed, because he understood that Fenrir had become much weaker than before. He then fell into a state of insanity and prepared to release a massive burst of mana to harm everyone in the room. Fenrir was the first to take the blow and was defeated, but there were only five minutes left before the end of the mission. Fallen Angel ordered Li Jun to immediately erase Loki from the face of the earth, so he asked John to try to delay him for at least one minute. John began to get very nervous because she didn't understand how this could be done with someone who defeated Fenrir with just one blow. Sirin rushed into battle and wanted to destroy his opponent. Loki just looked in his direction and was ready to accept this fight. Therefore, right now there is a clash between two forces that were previously ready to give their lives for each other. Lee Jun said that Srin alone is not enough, so he really needs her now. From such words, she realized that she was truly valuable to the guy and was ready to detain her opponent for at least an hour. John jumped and immediately rushed into battle. Lee Jun didn't waste any time, so he activated his spear and started charging it with mana again. It had already reached the limit of mana release, but Lee Jun understood that this was still not enough and more was needed. Loki continued to destroy everyone in his path and swung his fist to finish off Srin. John quickly ran to his aid so as not to fight these monsters alone. But Loki didn't even take her seriously, but only put up a simple defense against this blow. John realized that a retaliatory blow was now flying in her direction, so she immediately put her sword down to block it. There was a violent clash between them, which was quite likely to be expected. Lee Jun was happy because his spear had now increased its level due to the high temperature, but it was still not enough. He understood that he needed a little more mana for everything to be successful because it was extremely important for him to finish off the enemy with just one blow. Now the spear has become so hot that it can no longer withstand the temperature and begins to collapse. Lee Jun was furious and immediately rushed into battle, as he was well aware that right now he only had one chance. He ran up and threw this spear at his opponent with great force, after which there was an explosion of enormous force, which would be difficult to even compare with anything. The spear did its job and hit the target. Loki was shocked, and the smile completely disappeared from his face. The mission was accomplished as his body was pierced through. Kavata watched this spectacle with other people and could not even believe that all this was really happening. And for the first time, the sun appeared, which had not existed since the time of problems in China, where under the incredible light of the sun, Utgard Loki died. The king himself and his castle were completely burned to the ground. The giants who were under the influence of the king were also destroyed by the Nars. One might even call it liberation, rather than death. After all this, four leaders gathered at the ashes of the castle, the first of whom was Shachi. Srith, who finally defeated his enemy. Yubi, who trusted his captain and also Li Jun, who was one of the main reasons for the victory, but this fight is still not over. Srit looked at Yubi and said that he would definitely keep his promise. Yubi was happy because he really trusted the right person. After this, Srit wanted to talk to Shachi. He ordered Shachi to kill him immediately. After all, whatever the reason, Srit considered himself a traitor and the blood of his own people was on him. And although his revenge has been accomplished, he still hopes that he will spare the Nazars who followed him. Shachi looked at his former partner and thought about the right thing to do. He took the axe in his hands, and he said that he would fulfill his wish without any problems, and Srit stood on his knees and waited for his punishment. When it was all over, Shachi looked into the distance along with Li Jun and thought about the future. Li Jun decided to ask Shachi, doesn't he hate him? Shachi turned his head towards the guy, and with a smile he said that he didn't even have such thoughts, because he was very grateful to him for being able to make the right decision. He looked at the guy and said that he was like one of their warriors, and he was not against it. Now there is finally peace in the castle. Everyone helped restore it as best they could. The hunters commanded the people and told them what to do. Yubi stood with Lee and thanked him that everything was fine now. Lee Jun looked at Yubi and asked what exactly did he need help with. He looked at the guy and said that they had already done everything in their power, 
but ordinary people would not be able to last long on these unsuitable lands. He also said that they were thinking about going beyond the wall, so they asked him for help to do it. Lee Joan immediately agreed, although he understood that this was not a very good decision, since indeed a lot would change soon. Yubi was simply shocked by this, because he didn't understand what he was talking about now. Li Jun decided to repeat to him that he really didn't think that going beyond the wall would be a good decision, so he needed to stay here since the whole world would soon become a gate. Yubi understood everything but did not know what to do with food and cold. Therefore, Li Jun gave him a monster called Puramora, which can be used as a food source and also grows very quickly in any environment. He also said that Yubi can fertilize him with monster bones, so he doesn't have to worry about hunger at all. Yubi asked how he knew all this, but Lee Jun just smiled and said that he could also help with the cold. He thanked him for his help and said that next time they would definitely not be in debt. Meanwhile, Lee Jun went to the tent for another meeting. Sirin was happy when he saw the guy and asked how the new leader of the giants was coping. Lee Jun said that it would be much better if he asked him about this directly, without intermediaries. But Srin was still worried about the fact that the guy clearly did not want to see the enemy on his territory. The guy smiled because maybe they are enemies, but at the same time they are not. What is the problem? Strin understood that one who shed the blood of his people cannot become a leader, so he rejected this proposal from Shachi and decided to lead the Nars, and also for the Ice Giants, who are very aggressive in battle, they can only grow when they have an enemy. Strin also said that when monsters are just like prey for them, then the only ones who can be enemies. It's just them, real people. Li Jun was shocked by what he just heard. Therefore, he immediately warned Srin that if they give people too much attention, there may be quite serious losses in the future if they become enemies. But Srin agreed with this and said that he respects people very much. Li Jun said that the only reason he is here is to learn from Srin. He smiled and said that if Loft Loki wanted it, he would have no problem giving it to him because Li Jun was the one who saved the giants. The guy was at a loss because he didn't know who Loft Loki was, but Srin calmed him down and said that in the ancient language of the giants, this means the one who destroyed Loki. The fallen angel, meanwhile, pursed his lips, which surprised Li Jun, because every time this name is mentioned, there is always a reaction. But nevertheless, he said that he would like to learn the release technique from Srin. Srin said that he was ready to satisfy this request without any problems, but he was not entirely sure whether this was possible. The thing is that release is a technique that allows you to maximize the dormant abilities and the power of mana that is in the body, but this requires a colossal amount of mana. Therefore, without the physiology of giants who have enough mana to sustain the body, others are unable to learn this technique. A second later, a huge, fiery flame formed. Srin was very surprised by this. Shachi didn't understand what this huge amount of mana was. Could it really be Lee Jun again? John was daydreaming and really understood that she was meeting a real genius. Lee Jun was fired up and was completely ready to learn this technique. He smiled and absolutely believed that he had much more mana than Srin. His interlocutor smiled and said that this was exactly the attitude he needed. When it was all over, Lee Jun walked out to the top of the mountain and looked towards the castle. He was very angry with Utgard Loki, who did all this. It really was a real monster who used his own people in experiments to create an army. It's also the famous trash that used the knowledge of Chinese hunters to turn release-wielding giants into mindless killing machines. But how did he force the giants to listen to his orders and also gained complete control over them? Come to think of it, Loki was an amazing warrior, but he wasn't the type to do something like that on his own, so someone helped him. Could these be intruders who came to the giant's fortress? After all, people say that they didn't do anything and just left. So Lee Jun thought that any outsider could be the Demon King. But if it's not him, then then. Could this be the Black Hood? After these thoughts, someone called Lee Jun, and he looked up from his thoughts. John said that people are holding a festival to which they were also invited. Lee Jun thought about it and seemed a little scared. He took the girl by the hand and wanted to tell her not to go there under any circumstances. Just kidding, it was John who took his hand and led him along, because everyone was already waiting for them there. People enjoyed life and prepared a place for a celebration. This is how people should live, and even if things may not go well, isn't life itself difficult? We just need to be grateful that we just survived and got another regular day. 
John and his boyfriend rejoiced at this wonderful sight because the festival is really taking place next to the gate, which gives hope for a bright future. After these words, Lee Jun asked the girl to complete this festival as soon as possible, which surprised her very much. The guy turned around and walked in the other direction. He walked onto the podium, where hundreds of people watched him, who began to call him Loft Loki and glorify him. They were happy and understood that Loft Loki now wanted to say something. Lee Jun only increased the flow of mana in his body, and he increased the amount of magical power, after which he was completely ready. He was like a real monster who decided to ruin everyone's holiday because he looked pretty terrible right now. Yubi, along with the other hunters, were shocked and scared. On the contrary, John continued to admire him because he really was very handsome and chose her. In the tent, Sreen also watched what was happening. And I was really glad that Lof Loki was truly a unique person. People couldn't believe it because the sun began to appear for the first time. Lee Jun made the sun appear in the sky. He was happy because he understood that all this was really his great merit, and he was happy to give happiness to people. However, after the celebration, he still went to the top of the castle to talk with Yubi. He started asking him if Lee Jun was really going to leave. He has nothing else to do here, so he introduced heat into all the supports outside the settlement and also using the magical power of implantation that he learned from watching Park Ji Hyun, he will also use the protective magic from Merlin's necklace, thereby stopping the flames from growing, so as long as the supports do not break, the flames will be stable. Yubi was very happy about this, but still decided to ask the guy if he really needed to leave now. After all, he was counting on being able to repay his debt. But Lee Jun just smiled and said that they would definitely see each other again, after that, he ran to his team who had been waiting for him for so long. John was happy about his arrival and wanted to spend time alone with him as quickly as possible. Lee Jun was a little surprised by this, so he asked if the girl was really not joking now. But she spoke absolutely seriously and just smiled, saying that she would be pleased if he showed her a few of his techniques. Lee Jun was even a little embarrassed by this. But still, he said that they now need to leave, and also said that he had already made sure that the people could maintain the heat themselves, even after they left. Fenrir stood opposite his master and also waited for further instructions, after which blue magic with flashes happened again. And the little guy turned into a huge blue wolf. Lee Jun turned to Yubi and said that now it was time for them to move on, but he hoped that when they returned, Yubi would be much stronger. He just smiled and really hoped that they would definitely meet again. The road was again quite long and difficult, so at night the guys began to sit by the fire and warm up. John recalled this whole journey with a smile because it was indeed very stressful, but it was fun. Lee Jun looked at the sky and understood that having gone through such a difficult path as this, he would not want to repeat it again. The princess also got out and started joking, so the girl decided to find out if she liked this trip, although the answer is already quite obvious. Lee Jun looked at her and asked how her internal cultivation training was going. He had told her before that internal cultivation was definitely not the easiest to learn. Even if it is not much, John believes that she was able to find a clue for internal cultivation and mana flow, but Lee Jun said that then she needs to hurry up. After all, there wasn't much time left and it scared him. Even now, the dragon's heart, which is located not far from his own, continues to charge and even though he does not want it, it continues to saturate his magical power, increasing his development and the strength of everyone around him. Therefore, this is a sign that things will change soon, because everyone is becoming stronger, even the monsters. The whole world is changing, which means that saturating China with mana was just the beginning. John was scared, so she wanted to urgently talk to the guy. He saw the fear in her eyes, so he quickly decided to find out what was the reason for it. She just pointed her finger and said that the whole problem was this. John looked in that direction and was also very shocked. Because right now, Mount Pectison suddenly began to burn, 